Okay, I just received a very helpful chat message letting me know that this whole time I have not had this microphone on. For that, I apologize. And I had some brilliant analysis and explanation of what I was doing and some notes about art critique and history of flags. So it's all lost in the sands of time. Okay. Mike's on now. We should have sound. Sounds good. Hopefully so you buy it this we'll time. Pick up where we left off. So, in a nutshell, I'm listening to the live stream right now of Ethan Van Skyver on Comic Artist Post Secrets. Going back over a live chat that included Eric July and the critic of his work. Also, talking about my work on this pirate flag, the origin of it, and how to stitch it together. So, I'll probably repeat myself anyway. Is it going to be like the anti-hero? It's so funny that it's like what his brilliant. His comic. Uh, right. guys, like the I have to get around this around corner here. That's so funny that, uh, that yeah, he we're here that now and we're going to continue around here. So like and I'm going through like, both, I'm the anti both sides. Whatever the fuck everyone's talking about, I'm pro pedos. Like, that's what he's that's what he's all about. Right? I love it. I love the uh, we're pedophiles and racists because we don't like <laughs> they did, was, uh, Hey, no, I no, never said Kelly. you. Kelly never said that, you did. Like pedophile superheroes? Uh, actually, he only I'm goes after Vito himself. I think I could benefit from another man. Wait, wait, wait. None of us like pedophiles, right? Can we all admit that none of us like pedophiles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,
So we got this end good. Both sides. And we're coming up to the straightaway. Seems like that scheme is starting to fall apart here. This is nobody quite knows what to say or where to go with it. So, anyway, had some good critique of the book and of the way to deliver art criticism, but it's kind of gone off the rails on some some guy I don't know who they're talking about. Trying to push that lower piece off the needle so I can go around it. I don't want to go through it at the initial stab. I want to go over the edge and then come back up through the other. And that way I get both of them like that and like that. So I think that's working. Okay, so. Oh, you know what? I need to go. I should probably remove that. Yeah, I, I think that's what it is. He comes across as a troll, and so it's difficult to take his probably valid, like some of the criticisms of, of the art and the, the writing. Or actually, I don't think he criticized the visual art. I think he was criticizing the writing in the book. His criticism sounded valid from what little I've heard about it. I haven't read the book, so I don't know. But if what he said about the writing was true, his critique might have been valid, but he comes across as a troll, so nobody's going to take him seriously which is kind of a waste and in fact counterproductive because then it shuts down Eric July's ability to improve for the next one. Okay. Now this string is tangling up a bit. Untangle. Where's the end? Right? Oh. Sounds kind of hypocritical. But he's quite willing to silence people's speech left and right. Yeah, I think he's a little. What do you want? That's healthy. Yeah, I think he likes kids. Oh, shit. 
shit. Okay. We're making good progress here. Just cruising right along. Now this is reasonable. Had he started out like this, rather than just creating a tension, which is what it seemed like he was doing at the start, this conversation would have gone an entirely different way and would have been really productive, I think. Straight aways are, are nice and easy. You just put the pedal to the floor and you go. As long as you have it lined up to begin with when you pin it on, it's really easy. Well, I would say easy. And this side is more difficult just because there's more fabric here and you have to kind of grab it from the other direction and stuff. But it's not bad. But I've got this one all. Like we're past the halfway point. That's always good. Check it out. It's kind of cool. No, well, okay, I'm not. I wouldn't say halfway because this this part of it is is actually more difficult than this part. So just because it's more complicated shapes. <laughs> Eric is still so mad he can't he can't accept the apology. Okay. Yeah, that seemed like a genuine apology, and like a normal dude. All the other stuff looks like a shtick. But I don't know him, I've never watched this show. I've seen him on Mercada, and I've seen him here, but that's all I know about him. But he comes across that, like that's his performance style, which I think was counterproductive in this case. feeling a lot of pressure because he suddenly fine. has this huge responsibility and, and that's how all this started in business uh, you know and uh, well listen I mean you know as a creative person I, I can't I is, couldn't abide uh, that I couldn't maybe like, dealing with it the best way you can but it's not trouble with that uh, and uh, from there I just started to not like enough. Eric July that's where we are now uh, and uh, I believe he's uh, done the same thing to other people I do believe he contacted all of those individuals uh, shortly uh, after I revealed his text message, which I, I called a night letter, uh, a lot of my friends started to turn on me. Hmm. Uh, Yellow Flash, who was leading that thing, Oops. out of the blue, I'd never said anything bad to Yellow Flash, uh, turned on me viciously, violently, uh, and uh, spent all, an entire weekend uh, spamming Twitter with just utter belligerent hatred for me. Uh, and I don't know why. I don't know what I did for that guy. Uh, but uh, he, uh, so I'm never going to talk about Ethan again because he told me he tore down the Comicscape uh, room, the Comicscape community room on Twitter. Uh, he revealed what my cover rate was to the entire internet, which is, by the way, very awkward Oops. because I hired uh, Matt Barr to do a cover for me. <laughs> and now everybody knows what I get paid to do a cover. Uh, and Matt Barr... Uh, well, I, I said, How, what's your cover rate? He said, you tell me. So 
they did this cover for me and I had to pay him something that probably a little more than I would have paid <laughs> ordinarily. You're not going to argue with that. I mean, shit, that's business. business. Yeah. Look, I want to uh, pay you well, but, you know. Matt Barr gets $500 as a per. Uh, We're I, here to make I'm money. Way better care of him than that. Way okay. Better. This is looking cool already. I want to take this up so I can look at it. I'm going to stretch my legs and refill my coffee. But uh, where is my painter's tape? Let's try this.
And it's oh, when you get back, she turns into a demon. Let's get a good uh, head around and vomits in your face. How about this? So she also drank urine. Hammer Dan oh, says the spirit of oh, she doesn't do that anymore. <clears throat> you that was in her past. Preview. Find out who she is today. Hammer Dan says the go. spirit of Rush Limbaugh flows through you. I like that picture. Thank like you for that. Cool painting. Any crisis says yeah. that was a lecture Dutch. wearing an apology. She's so, old Dutch picture. Dave Dreamer says pretty. libertarians have uh, two issues. Love the way the light hits kids. that sail. And the volume and the sale, and you can feel the wind filling in. That's, that's so what they do. And that means Eric July affirms their bad behavior, uh, which makes them a cultural pop. Can you believe it? Just that little, all, all that little bit of me, blue guess. paint in these Richard sales. Says, uh, these little, where was EJ when the colors grew an alpha core? I don't know. Do you even know? I should copy he this picture. I want to be able to paint like that. I should copy that. He doesn't know that the colors grew an alpha core. But what's really funny is... How would I do that? He watched the video, obviously. Can I do uh, that? I wonder if I can make a video that. The crowd of uh, yeah, the two-page spread of the police coming down on the, from uh, Alpha Core. So proud of it, he presented it in color, and then right after we were done with our Alpha Core review, he did it again, but he showed it in black and white. Colors were terrible, dude. The art was great. Like, good job. That double-page spread uh, by Joe Bennett was great, but yeah, black and white was better. Swear Nugget says, when I was young, I was criticized for being too defensive and always needed the last word. Given yeah, that you criticism cannot be defensive true. as an you artist. You can guess what my reaction got to, uh, Eric July is the same way. Be open to critique and be able to uh, either refute it or deflect it or take it in and use it. Thank you. Keep and that coming, guys. Thank you. So what's and the and green flag in the center? I recognize the, uh, the, the tricolor. I think that's Dutch. But what's that green and white flag in the center of the picture? Would you do me a favor and counter these... Activists, uh, who are, uh, I added the pirate flag to this picture, by the way. It's, it's not there my, uh, natively. Uh, that's a Dutch flag that I I place with the pirate support. flag that I'm making now. Uh, I am making comic books, too. That is my primary job. Uh, during the day, I make comic books, and I need crowdfunding to make so. that happen. Cyberfrog Dark Harvest. More right now. pirate flags to make. Uh, way, I make pirate flags. That's below. my primary Cyber job. Cyberfrog right Dark now. Harvest is very, very, very close. Uh, Hello, Scout. Is there any way How I can talk you into supporting it? Backing one of My these comics here at 20 bucks? Kitten, uh, pirate flag uh, assistant is here. Hey there. What's up? Uh, I would Where's your really ball? Where's your ball? Do you know where your ball is? And if that is? doesn't interest you, maybe you'll take a look at Rainbow the Brood instead. You're new from all caps. Let's we'll see if we can find your row. Uh, the Brood. The you last know, since I'm, uh, Sniping he can scream for some degree, at least his audio, or at least let his ad run. And a pretty good uh, he's describing his new college book, Rainbow Slam the Roots. I don't know anything else about it. I know that's the name. On Indiegogo. Rainbow the Brute, my friends. Uh, yeah, please take a look at it. Back it, you'll see some pages from it here uh, on the air page. Uh, and then finally, we also have um, Cyberfrog Red Extermination. This is Cyberfrog 3, the third book in a, a four-issue uh, first chapter, like first is the movie, Cyberfrog the movie, uh, this would be uh, the third third book, and I think, I think you're going to like it, I think you're going to like Cyberfrog, you can get Cyberfrog now on our event, okay. look at this art, this is art, oh it's beautiful art, what if I, you know what, can I just run this on my stream and just watch it here, so you can see it, but you know what, I don't think it'll work, because the audio is going to be, Run. Maybe I need a separate mic for song, I think. I mean, because I'm running the... If I have the audio running there, I think it'll interfere with it. Oh, oh look at the I could try. I'm going to try that and see if I can do this. One of the reasons I'm doing these live streams, I don't expect anybody to tune in for the excitement of watching me stitch pirate flags. And there is occasionally some... I think uh, useful information about history and the you know, technique of you know, how to hand sew stuff. Uh, but I think really the uh, this chapter is a uh, chapter. The purpose of doing these is I'm recording these. I'm going to produce a video at the end of this. Hey, here's something about pirate flags, and it'll be uh, um, you know, a little bit of history of the pirate flags and how they were used in, in history. And, um, I've got a whole bunch of reference. I've been working. I've been making uh, a, uh, been a very for fun for a couple of years. Year. I've been making a uh, pirate game. Saw him on that real. video. He was 
Um, so I've got a ton of uh, reference info and uh, in, in some history about it. So I can put that together with with the, you know, the practical uh, stuff. So here's the history, and then here's how to make one. And, um, I'll, I'll make a tight video. You know, I've got hours and hours of live footage here, and I'll just clip it. Um, to get to sort of so go to parties it's nice that YouTube has the ability, uh, you know, lets me have the ability to stream this, uh, and I can do it live uh, in the uh, chat. I had somebody in the chat one, a, couple, a week or so ago uh, when I was and, uh, so working on the Revolutionary War tents. Somebody dropped in for a couple hours, and we had a great chat. You know, I learned a lot about history, and you learned a lot about tents, and we had a good time. So, but right now, my channel is too, so small, nobody knows anything about it. You know, so, YouTube doesn't. I don't know if YouTube promotes it or not, but you know, I don't get any, you know, get much live chat action going on, which is what I enjoy about it. So, here's what I want to do. I'm pause this, turn the volume off, get this address, copy. Now let me uh, see if I can put. I think I can put in. Uh, can I put in a live window really and show the screen? Now, we made Browser. Uh, I think that might that do it. Funny, uh, they began Let's try this. Create select source. Browser. Create new. Uh, those people, Browser. Call them the Dungeoneers because they went to the dungeon. So just leave that there. Okay. They took it very personally. And now I'll put uh, in this. Very, very angry. And the so address of the screen. And let's put it at. Uh, let's say. Oh, 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 what size? Swear to God. Uh, we're going to be um, looking. Let's go 400. Be by 400. How about that? He, 400 he, by 500. Control audio and via OBS. I don't know if I want any audio. Thing. But. Seven months worth of archives. People who appeared on live stream that box, shut down visible. Slowly going insane. Uh, very angry I don't know what any of this means, so right now I'm just learning how to use OBS. Let's see what happens. Okay, so here's that. Let's see if I can... I'll just put this in here. And... Yeah, there you go. Like that. So I'm going to change that to be... Part two, but before we do that, let's take a look at Patrick Thomas Parnell's... Bye. Uh, video here. This is called. Like that. Uh, there we go. Look at that. This video about him. It's called. Uh, so here we can uh, watch America, this and. A homo retardus in nature documentary. I haven't watched um, this yet. Let me see. Oh, you know what? I don't know how to. Do I have to? I'm going to try to close this. Let me copy. It. I have the address copy. Let me close that. Does it still show? It does. How about, um, Here he is. let's just try this this way, and then we'll see. Today, and I know this doesn't have anything to do with pirate king videos, this has everything to do with, uh, I'm working and live streaming, because I always listen to different stuff on YouTube while I work, so that's the only purpose of this, really. Um, so let's adjust the size a little bit. Let's say, homo retardus has very few abilities. Let's say four, one of these okay, abilities five, is to wait, camouflage five, okay. itself. I don't know. It dresses okay. accordingly. Ah, that's it a little better. Its own skin. And then, and I don't know how to scroll. Like I don't know how to control the position or anything like that. That will be able to help it grow by and make a living in this world. Okay, that's a little too much. But she even has a company called Rats. Okay. Let's just try that. How about that? And uh, I guess we'll be picking up the audio. Now the audio is going to be delayed. There's a delay between what my camera sees you know, and, and what I see in OBS at the moment and what you'll see on YouTube. But this is... It's able to Anyway, welcome to me learning how to use OBS and YouTube. Thanks for being here. I'm glad you're uh, experiencing your this. Mate. Isn't it well, exciting? Well, mom's house, I, I was going through terrible. our closet, and I would, like, go down to, like, Okay. Back. So there is so, these things called trash. I guess I get back to you. Just the beloved I asked for, you know, yeah, cool makes me kind of ships. barely alive. I can't Stuff going on for entertainment. <laughs> here we go. And then what I realized was... Probably ought to get back to selling here in a moment. Fascinating. Score oh, somebody has put a voiceover. I see. There's this documentary video, and somebody's put a new video or a new uh, audio uh, 
narration of it. Got gotcha. We move on and ask it. Who are the people helping you? Who are they and where do you find them? I have like a a super friend. Um, it, very low level. Boy, there's a lot of like delay here. Girls, uh, you know, I stopped. They're both there shouldn't like, be so much delay. What's the dealer? A dealer? Well, there shouldn't oh, be so much delay. Dealers. Yeah, okay, you know, like, you know, like, 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 Kings are a god in the universe you called the dimension. Kind of hard to find. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> they're in like this, this yeah, weird, I don't know how to like, fix that. dimension where everything is like a sport, everything is like a game. Is this going to conventions? Is <laughs> <laughs> this song is really Interesting for me to you know, uh, really make sure starting the at the bottom, of working your way up. Started the Go on, stream with no audio, so I'm just going to double check. And type the word um, he's crediting himself with will find the truth. You type my name next to those same titles and you'll see the truth. Okay? It's useful to me. I'm a fine artist. You know, I paint landscapes and history pictures and portraits. Patricia. Art school kind of in that order. With me and Bobby, yeah. what a society reach. Uh, I don't culture. know much about comic this books. I mean, I read comic books when I was a kid. I liked them. Didn't collect them. Didn't, didn't read them a lot. I, mean, I, read, out of his friends in order I read enough to, to know that I liked them. Uh, so everyone these guys everyone just are making art and telling stopped. stories, which is the same thing I do. But it's a very different way of doing it than I do. Like I get these guys, you, know, you might get, I guess, 30 pages or 60 pages or however, many, however long a comic book is to tell a story. And I have essentially one picture to tell a story. So it's, it's kind of a different way of thinking. And I kind of... Like, <laughs> what, is this, what is that picture? Um, I kind of... Uh, I think the, the ability to have more pages or frames to tell a picture is pretty cool. So what I'm doing right now is 
<laughs> that picture is great. Like cyber frog, I love it. First, I want to get the shape of it. And then what I do is I draw it into the shape. Big Bang Toy Store has done uh, very well. How, like, how can I make a giant pen that doesn't actually Okay, work? time to really put a new thread on a um, needle. Like maybe, a so, so I started here. picking up toys that, that, you know, like I liked, like the old school Kenner toys. I thought they were an old school Kenner style type figure, figure would be great. We've done some different colors of it. We've had we've made some bag to go along with it. So we, we like we've had ways of of Johnny Fantas. Yes, the main reason good. that people Hi, Scout. like Johnny Fantas okay. ha- happened is because thread. Right by now. this time the wrong type of editorial and art director has gotten into position. Uh, now with YouTube, this is uh, and you know live streaming and uh, just like a community of independent artists, myself, Tarantula. Ryan Press, as as I get this uh, we were getting booked out to people, um, and there were some other people that were also getting silhouetted against a bright light. Straight dark your door. thread is small, and there we go. Um, <laughs> oh. As soon as I get this threaded, I'll tie it on to the end of the last one I just did, and tuck that under the fabric. What's in the fucking box? Uh, but just sales, just hey, sales, scout, uh, and the What's red up? for like three years coming. A failure. Now okay. we're at the point where it's like pencils down. So I'm just going to tie a little square on here just to stitch it on. Wow. Hi. You want me to move your chair? You can sit here. Wow. Why don't I do that for you? You won't be tempted to jump onto wow. my flag. Wow. Here. Do you want to sit in your chair? Guys, everybody run over and subscribe to Discovery. Oh, there you go. Discovery. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Okay. That was brilliant. That was the ultimate diss track. Considering uh, Patrick does have a new video now. Uh, so anyway, so it's useful for me to compare to how comic we watch Patrick's new comic videos, artists and uh, writers do we just skip right and everybody to the else files? involved. I want to do a whole bunch of people go, uh, involved in it. Like one guy video, might do we go right write the story, the and another guy will tell, I'm not sure. uh, will, uh, will draw it, uh, uh, pencil, and then another guy will put the colors in. And, Clearly, it was you know, not working. I'm sure they must have like some way of overseeing files. all of that, so it becomes coherent. Because I never knew that when I was a kid, you know, reading comic books. I just saw. I'm just reading the comic books, and I'd see several names on the on the cover, but Jimmy Reyes is here. Uh, Eric claimed but I didn't realize how the views in his book how they work. The image of himself wearing you know, the taxation is that hat in the book. You know, I'm point. deciding what story to tell, and how to tell it, and, 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 and culture and making the doing, exact the, cool <laughs> doing the drawing and the coloring. And, you know, and, uh, I don't generally draw. I don't use much of an underdrawing. Oh my god, amazing! I got to celebrate some of these guys. You got to let me. I mean, twenty dollars is really, really generous. Let's let's just shout out Anchor Fist right now. Amazing! Uh, Thank you, Anchor Twenty dollars. Reading chat, so I was more interested in the, the critique of the other artwork than this stuff. But you know. anyway, so kind of like, and, and then a project like this, Pirate Flag. You know, find my reference. And do, so that's the drawing. The uh, you know, okay, what do we have? We've got a skull and crossbones on a, a, a piece of black f- fabric. In this case, it. Uh, they say the original was cotton. This is, uh, you know, I went to the museum website, and actually I got a, uh, it's kind of cool. So I went to the museum website, and it, you know, I got a really good photo reference of it. They say this is one of the only two surviving pirate flags from the 18th century, so that was pretty cool. Um, and at the same time that it's, you know, almost unique, it, uh, it lines up with all the engravings and descriptions of you know, the skull and bones that, that I read about, and you see all these engravings and um, stuff from the time, so it seems pretty typical. And then we have, have this example. Um, so on their website, they describe it as having been captured off the Barbary Coast, and, and they tell a little, darn it, it's so hard to get this to time. I think maybe when this is too long, let me see this. Um, and so they describe it. Um, you know, it's a cotton flag, it's, but they didn't give a size, so I was talking with my friend, and, um, 
you know, making that one for. And uh, we, we kind of came up with a size together about, you know, what seems about right. And, um, you know, I went downstairs and I looked at my, I have an American flag for our porch and I went and measured it and I was like, okay, well, you know, it looks a little bit, the, this could be a little bit bigger. The proportions are slightly different. And, and so anyway, we came up with a size and settled on it and I started making the flag cut out the fabric and stuff. And then I, then I wrote the museum, which I probably should have done earlier, but Anyway, we came up with the size we wanted and started making it. But then I, I, I just out of curiosity, I wrote the museum and I got a prompt response very kindly from, from them. They're over um, in Scandinavia. And turns out this flag is exactly the size of the original. So I was thrilled. So, you know, we just guessed at the, uh, at the right size. So, um, no, mine is actually two... It's about two and a quarter or two and a half inches shorter in height than, than the original. The length is the same, within an inch. So I'm, uh, I was pretty happy. I mean, we just guessed at it. And, and I would imagine there is a, just based on what I've seen, like even looking at this painting here that I have on screen, that's one of the reasons I like looking at these pictures. Looking at this painting here, if you figure how big these flags must be, even the one at the bow, on the, hanging off the, you know, the end of the bowsprit on this uh, ship that's in the foreground, or the sloop in the foreground. Um, those are big flags. You know, that, that flag there, is, uh, just guessing, that's got to be four feet high. You know, that's got to be that, that tall. And then, let's say, maybe three times as long. But this smaller one maybe comports to the one at the top of the top mast at the at the near sloop. So, you know, they had, they had all different sizes, but the one on mounted on the stern of this one, and that's the actual size, again, in the original of this picture, that one is, uh, that's a Dutch flag, and I changed it for this pirate flag just because I thought it was funny. And, uh, you know, it looks kind of cool. Um, but that one's gotta be at least six feet high. Maybe seven. Right? I mean, were, and, and the point is for them to be able to be seen. And, and the larger in the ship in the background, both of them, those flags are enormous. Those, those got to be 12, 15 feet high. That's a lot of material. There is, um, if you Google, I don't know, what would you, bless you. Um, if you Google, um, how would you find it? Maybe conservation, flagship, flag. Something like that might, might get it to you. <clears throat> in the past few years, I've seen photographs of, and I think this was from the flagship of, what fleet was it? It wasn't the Spanish Armada, was it? There's a Spanish flag that was captured in battle, and it's the size of a basketball court. It just it blew my mind how big this thing was. And I never imagined that they that they would be so big, but you know, a ship of the line is, you know, it's gigantic. Um, and needed a gigantic flag to be to be able to be seen for, you know, across the water and to signal their, their power and, and to be awesome in you know, old sense of the word. But then, yeah, but then you have this, and, and this is one of those misconceptions about pirate flags I and mean, pirate ships. You know, a lot of times, you, you know, movies and stuff they always show you know, big big ships and ships of the line and galleons and you know, really big vessels. One of the most, the most common pirate ships were sloops like this one in the foreground here. You know, just, they're not big ships, you know, 65 feet long. Pretty simple, you know, or canoes. I mean, there's a, there's a one of the chapters in the general history of the pirates, they talk about um, this guy, is a, he works He's got a legitimate, you know, or he's got a, yeah, you know, like a, a legitimate job aboard a sloop, and he loses his job, and he and his buddies one night, they're in, uh, down in, uh, I think they're in Kingston, Jamaica, and uh, maybe Port Royal, I don't know, he's down on the south coast, southeast coast of uh, Jamaica, and one night they go out and they steal a canoe, and the canoe all the way around the eastern 
tip of Jamaica to the northern to the northeast, and uh, they find a sloop at anchor in front of this uh, you know, near a tavern. So they go in. And they, uh, so first of all, they've stolen a sloop, a, a canoe. Then they've canoed. I don't know how many miles it is. It's not an insignificant distance. It's huge. So they canoe all the way around. But whenever they get around there, maybe it's a couple of days, I guess. Um, they go into this tavern and you know, they buy drinks. They're there all day, and they're such good company that the uh, the hosts say, you know, come back anytime, just like anybody does in a business. You know, hey, you, know, you guys are. We like customers. Come on back anytime you like. And so they do. They take them up on it. And, and, he, and he talks about, the author talks about this in General History of the Pirates. The way he puts it is pretty funny. I'll have to find the quote. But, but, but in, in short, he said, you know, they say come back anytime. And the pirates, the soon to be pirates, uh, come back that night and rob the place blind while everyone's asleep. So they clean it out. They take all the candlesticks and anything of value probably a bunch of rum and then they uh, they go out the canoe they take their little canoe out to the sloop that's lying at anchor offshore and they steal it and begin their career as gentlemen of fortune they uh, it's, it's kind of a cool adventure um, you know, from there then they go they head east and they take a sugar drover which is a big cargo ship full of sugar and uh, go around Hispaniola and which is uh, you know a big part of their trip and then they uh, sail all the way around across you know hundreds of miles probably and they capture some ships and they have some adventures and, and then they wind up I think he ends up getting murdered by one of his crew it's, uh, Kind of a sad end. Like they, I think they vote at, at some point. Like they're not having any good luck. And, you know, some of the guys want to just let's just take the money and run. You know, we want to give it, give up pirating here. We're not doing really well. So they end up getting in a fight and he gets killed. And they come to a bad end. So many of these guys came to a bad end. You know, there's one of them who said, uh, I think on the gallows, a short life but a merry one is life for me. He got it. You know, so. I don't think I'd be ready to die at 28 or 30. You know. I think Blackbeard wasn't much older than that. I always imagined him as an old man, but uh, I think he had a whole lot of whole lot of action in a short period of time and burned out. So we're cruising right along here. I'm, uh, I think I've got nice even, even stitches. The stuff's laying flat on here. Both sides are getting stitched down pretty nicely. You know, I've got it pinned on here. And my, my goal is to get all of these sewn on tonight. So um, that's what I'm really looking forward to. Once I get these stitched down, I want to do a nice job of this part. If this is done really well, then everything else, just like every step in the way here, you know, if you do the foundation stuff really well, everything else looks better. So I want to do a nice job on this, and then I want to get this done because uh, I'm really excited about the fun, like the real fun part is uh, painting the bones on. And uh, when I bring up that um, the reference image, you can see the shadows that they painted, you know, they paint the eyes and the hole where the nose should be and you know the shadows on the on the long bones it's just cool and the teeth even on this one they have all the teeth delineated you know, it just makes it really cool okay Let's see what Ethan's talking about with this stream he's still on the critique of uh, Eric July's I think he's critiquing really his response to criticism of his art which is really fun. kind of my it's interest in. You know, I think right now I'm getting. Uh, yeah, I figured out this solution the other day, and I think I said at the time I probably had thought of this years ago and doing something, and then it just reoccurred to me as the way to fix it. And then I tried it and it worked. I'm getting as I push this, the fabric is slightly stretchy, and 
So to get rid of some of the peaks and valleys, like I'm getting some slack in the fabric. So, uh, so I, but I ironed it, and it straightened it right out. Like it smoothed it, it tightened it up, and then everything just laid flat. So I think here, I think I want to do that right now because it's starting to buckle up. So I don't want to sew so much more on this until I do that. So I'm going to do that right now. Pull this twine, plug my iron in, and then I'll uh, shrink this. And just just in this this one spot where I'm working, and that'll help it uh, just lay flat and be a nicer effect. So store my needle over here so it doesn't fall out. Okay, <clears throat> so here we go. Where am I?
Uh, oh, Jeremiah M says, I really enjoyed how to okay. practice so, so people need to hear the truth in order to prove. And Ralph, uh, Bednarski. I just want that picture. Uh, okay, so check this out. So the, uh, oh, let's fix the camera. Uh, <laughs> so Bajan Anand says, you know, I just realized that Nina Infinity was part of an erotic show not long after Eric made that threat. Hmm. But is it starting to come together yet? That is what's happening here. So, uh, a lot of people are scared of this. Uh, I, I, I'm okay, so these guys. Uh, just by, look how crisp that is now. And that's stitched down, so it's got a lot of stuff to do uh, to I, it. I don't do more YouTube you know? I have to draw but now it just lays nice and flat, so all I have to do is just follow that line and match it to the line of the corresponding bow on the other side. And then I get a nice stitch. Dungeoneer Files. All right. I don't know what kind of criticism I have for this portion of the show. This is what they have been uh, called uh, by the likes of uh, John Malen. John Malen called uh, these people the Dungeoneers. Trouble among and artists who, I think, are probably just not busy enough. Uh, and they kind if they were busier, about, uh, they would have less time for foolishness. Oh yeah, dude, this just by ironing it just a little bit with some steam, makes it nice and crisp and just, the stitching just so rolls along. A lot to handle here, it's the perfect time to do trash cast. Uh, a lot of bridges are being burned, which is how I like it. I really do it. You know, people need to weed themselves out. <clears throat> I don't consider any of these people bridges. I'm a battleship. I don't need to go anywhere they're going. I'm very independent. I'm not going my own direction. Uh, they can either ride with me or, or not. Uh, here's Patrick Thomas Parnell, who starts off, this is still August 5th, 2023. And after I have left the stream, or I've left his room, angry with him, uh, because he's allowing Mandy Summers, who is a well-liked comic skater, to be run through the muck, accused of, <laughs> Mandy's been accused of collecting dick pics from comic skate. Like everybody has to surrender pictures of their dogs to Mandy Summers. That's ridiculous. And then Mandy well, I don't know if that's true, but like these people, these creeps. Why would you send? They think that Mandy I don't Summers understand that. Where she is. This idea of sending pictures of each other to people like that. <coughs> and I doubt it's true with her, but I mean, I don't know her, but I mean, I've watched her on different streams before. Uh, the Wizard was her first one. She's got. A, Turn the. Uh, uh, she's doing good. Super dead. That's what it is. I was like dead night. Turn the corner on this in the uh, same way I did that other end. These people think it's because uh, she has dick pics of Shane Davis. Uh, and <laughs> Shane, welcome. Just in time. I'm asking her to send them back, but not getting a response. <clears throat> All right, now. I've never sent anyone a dick pic. I would never do that. Just send girls pictures of bananas. Maybe it's Send a picture of Richard Nixon. Send him a zucchini. If a girl ever, like, okay, if I was single and I was, like, going to do a dick pic, like, why would I take a picture of my own penis? Why wouldn't I go find an enormous penis <laughs> uh, from the internet, like a picture of a gigantic dog, and then say, here it is, baby. Why oh, stop there blue? Let's spice it up. Mac Surprise. Some googly eyes on it. Make a girl laugh. <laughs> there you go. Googly eyes. Uh, all right. Yeah, well, listen, pretty, I, there, pretty, uh, there's pretty. nothing to be ashamed of, you know, sh uh, shame All right, got so, down there. yeah, having yeah. ironed it flat, yeah, i got to recommend that. Shame, Do that, yeah. and it just cruises yeah. along. Yeah. Notice I pulled all the pins. I used yeah. the pins to hold it, and this wasn't my intention. I, I, the, uh, uh, the other one I did, I kept it pinned as long as I went. But, I, I uh, with this one, it may be just because it's narrower, so it doesn't require so much pinning. I had it pinned, but then... I pulled them as I went along, 
on this one edge, but then once that was done, the rest of it just laid flat anyway, so it stayed in position, so I don't, don't read them. Cool man. I like yeah, the pirate flag. My mom made me baker, like a, a, you know, a British as can be, a baker's. I guess uh, my mom's, my my mom's side of the family made the donuts. Now you know Oops. where I get it. Like literally, they go, oh, look, that's the baker, the, the baker's. Uh, so. Uh, when were donuts, donuts invented? Runs in that's my a good uh, question. Life. Like you're a potato guy. You love the potato. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> the potato guy. Okay, that Crazy. is a little so too close to the edge. I want to... Yeah. Yeah, as usual. I, you know, cool. we're having a good time. Yeah. We uh, went over some uh, Eric July stuff. Now we're going into the people really well engineers. Wow. So here's Patrick. This is where we're starting out. This is after I left the room. Shane, you're still in this room. Yeah. Uh, and, and Patrick goes, love you guys. He says, love you guys. Oh, uh, and then he brings in oh, two I people here, and I can't tell who they are. Uh, I think it's Camel Moon and Michael Bancroft. I think that's who these two individuals are. Camel Moon and Michael there Bancroft. Because it says here, it was amazing hanging. The best the is when you get it like right this. on that edge on both sides. Uh, and you get I, nice I, tight I have stitches. Theory. These stitches are real coarse, but um, you know, keeping in mind that this isn't designed to be seen up close. This is designed to inspire terror in, in a merchant ship at uh, yeah, I, well, I mean, that's yeah. true. Uh, let me skip ahead. Maybe a few hundred so yards. I actually took notes here so that I could, because a lot of the stuff that uh, happens in here, in case you want to know, uh, is just planned is conversation, uh, pictures. Not of required to be finely on. stitched. Like, you know what I mean? However, so looking at the original, that, like, we're not it's got some pretty fine stitching on it. And that, I think, is because uh, all right. the guy who made so, this uh, who knew his way around a needle and thread. I mean, it, that's plainly evident by the way it's made. It's, uh, that was expertly, so more expert than I am. Uh, my stitches are really big and kind of, you know, comparatively sloppy. And, you know, I'm trying to be careful with it and stuff, but my skill is nowhere near the level of the person who sewed that, uh, that original flag. I'll make a neat split. job of it, but the but the, the original is really nicely said. What's he talking about? When did I ask for fealty from my yeah. and Patrick? Did I? No, you you asked what new CD was, and nobody would ask. Nobody would answer it any love. I think yeah. they're referring to that. Oh, what does that mean, dude? Well, I mean that's the thing. Like you want to just put your narrative out there, and then everybody else. Who's new will just start to believe that narrative. Okay. Yeah. So now we're getting into the uh, like end of this. Self started to freak out over four year old garbage. I don't know what that is. Uh, and the demanded, like, this guy's trying to create hatred. Very cool. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I did anything like Carry that. Carry it on. Uh, but okay. This is a weirdness. Never ends for our do, happy do. family. Uh, here's Patrick. We're almost says, done with this one. Thinks some new group is starting up that's moving against him as usual. And that's exactly what's happening. Uh, I've been talking with him since he left. Uh, since he left the room, trying to lower his paranoia. So, what we saw before, like, you know, remember I showed you my DMs? That was Patrick trying to lower my paranoia. Uh, and what he was doing there was he was uh, saying, I'm, I'm your subject soldier. Slugger, um, Chief, Captain, Boss, just tell me what to do. So Shane, that was meant to lower my paranoia. No, that's what he was trying to do, was operating for me a little bit. You know, and here's, here's where we find out, unfortunately, we got to reveal who our leaker is. And they already know. Uh, it's Laser Pants, 81. <laughs> uh, who did this? And you can tell because it's blue. Now, this is why uh, John Malin, one of the reasons why John Malin didn't want to reveal or show all of this stuff because he would have had to have revealed the hero, Laser Pants, <clears throat> uh, who is the guy who was in the interview with Alex Sanchez. He was doing the interview with him. Uh, and Laser Pants is an EVS loyalist, I think they would call him. What do you think of that, Shane? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I mean, I, I barely know Laser Pants, but that's what you're asking. Um, I was looking up these numbers. Do you remember the number you were asking for? Uh, 
or too far. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, laser the trick is just to go back over back the back edge back of the oh, upper saying, one, like, uh, and like then I go through, but then I have to pull the fabric off the other one and get the needle like around it rather than through it. Because I want the stitch to go around the outside of it. <clears throat> I mean, a lot of people are like, you guys are the assholes for, I said this to John last night, for having this document. Well, I, I never asked for it. I, it just, it just kind of came out, you know, yeah. because somebody thought there was a lot of fucked up shit in the room. So, put that out there. No, nobody said, hey, can somebody get us eyes in these back room. Hmm. I think it's important because this kind of thing happens. Well, I was trying to explain this to Andrea tonight because she's like, so what, what exactly is the point of this? And I, I thought, and I went, oh, yeah, I forgot if there even is a point. And I was driving around. The point, point seems to be you're finding out that, that a lot of people that you made a lot of money for are uh, it's not just exposing fools. talking shit the reason why I'm doing about this you behind your back. For the past six or seven years, there have been moments in Comicsgate where there have been these inexplicable splits that ah. happen, and I don't, it's like being hit with a bag of rice. I have no fucking idea what's going on. Where's that expression come from? Hit with a like bag of rice. People who were previously very kind to me, and I was kind to them, have turned their hearts to stone against me. That's an and interesting when I turn ask of phrase. what's going on, everybody says, like you don't know. And I get, <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea okay. what's going on. So well, now we're coming up to a... Problem. Complicated part because this has unturned, had this turned under, and now it's straightened out. So I just have to fix it. There we go. So now I want to just carry on, but look at that. We're around the corner. I would ask, I would be stuck asking, and the chat would ask, what happened? Ta da. Yeah, this is good good now. Like burning bridges, losing friends, whatever it is. This is it. Well, ironically, about two weeks ago, Document came out. People on Twitter was like, "What's going on in the group? Readers aren't getting along." Like the chat, people were just yeah. picking up on okay. it, you know. And it's like, I don't know. I mean, people are adults. They come around streams. They don't come around streams. I, I can't answer for it. One thing I want to make sure is to not sew the part of the flag to this thing. I did that a couple of times uh, in the past. I'll sew when I'm sewing a jacket or something. So. You know, sleeve together in a way it's not supposed to be like, or stitch an extra I sewed my pants to something I was working on one time this is my new attitude going into 2024 hey Shane I'm moving differently in 2024 wasn't even me <laughs> I'm moving differently what I'm doing in 2024 is complete transparency you have a question I'm going to answer it and if I can expose fools along the way I will and I'm going to be very open I'm not going to be like protecting anyone uh, if there are fools, I will expose them. And I'm just, I don't care what happens. You know what I mean? Like, I, uh, being silent this summer, this past summer, over Eric July's idiocy nearly killed me. It really broke my heart. I fucking hated it. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to do that anymore. I will not be doing that. I will be saying what I want to say, whatever I want to say, and I will accept the consequences. Uh, right. It might hurt my business. But you know what? People are going to be entertained by it. And that's what they're actually gonna had a. Uh, Backer, I guess it would have been somebody that was an Eric July supporter actually contact Indiegogo referred to me as a detractor. I love it. It's like detractor. leaving it's a trail real. for like who? Like why would I be wait, why is this person mad at me? Oh, because I'm a detractor? Oh, so you're a you're a ripping part, uh, in other words. Uh, thank you for using the word detractor. Okay. detractor. I mean it's it's weird that um I mean, look, I, I did a cover for Eric. I don't think I'm against his business per se. Um, you know, we make good comics. We're against bad comics. Right. You know, that's why we make good comics. <laughs> we're, yeah. We make good comics. We're against we're bad good, comics. I mean, that's why we make good comics. You know, I, I don't know. Fair I point. Like um, like I make good pirate flags. I'm against bad pirate flags. That's why I make pirate flags. That's why I make good pirate flags. Uh, enough. I think I'm going yeah, to start with I can back. go with that. How do you like that? What if oh, I actually that's another reason I like these streams. I, I learn something from these guys every time I listen. Daddy's belt, uh, and I start whipping back. I start beating the fuck out of people who get out of line. Uh, and just do it very honestly and directly. All I'm saying is, if you fuck with me, I will... You will find out. Isn't that, is that an expression? Uh, fuck around and find out. Oh, that should be on a baseball cap. Let's put that on a baseball cap. Fuck around and find out. That's brilliant, Shane. Fafo. Shane, the initials are Fafo. Fuck around and find out. So anyway, that's... Uh, 
for this. Where we're going. Mm -hmm. We're moving differently in 2024. This document here, uh, not only is it tremendously interesting entertainment and a betrayal of all the people who betrayed me uh, in turn, um, but it's actually going to show how this happens, why it happens, and nobody's ever going to question it. I, I, people ask me all the time what happened with Jeremy and Geeks and Gamers Friday Night Tights. I don't know, there's really like scattered evidence across several different places. If you want to sort that out, it's all right here for what happened with these people. It's wonderful. Uh, all right, so Laser Pen says uh, he's been stabbed in the back many times. Can't say I blame him. Biggins goes, Ethan makes sometimes funny videos, struggles with his weight and beard color, and makes frog comics. Doesn't look like he's struggling that hard. With one quote, quote, move against. That's smart, Biggins. Uh, and then here's a vlog. Look at it. Trail ahead. The plot thickens. Okay, so pull our final pins. Shading on the yeah, on the original flag, you know, they, you know, they put shadows and stuff in, and I'm also going to use some around the edges to uh, to really make these these stand out. It gives it the three dimensional effect, and it's really cool. Careful here. This needs to turn around. under. Just match the edges, front to back, you know, on the front piece and the top piece and the, piece and the bottom piece, however you want to think about it. And I want to keep them turned on. This has to go under January 31st. as a corner. And that's the end of that thread. Dude, check it out. Power bones.
this was never about the sex talk in this involvement. Where is John Malin? I think it's entirely about the sex talk. Uh, <laughs> and Malin hates Patrick. But I think it's mostly about the sex talk. John, where are you? Talk to that. John was on last night. Uh, uh, he, I don't know. He, we weren't even trying to talk about this, and it came up, and he seemed very upset. What was he upset about? Dude, uh, he's looking cool. Cool, 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 cool. Raising I am going to refill my coffee. I'll be right back.
There we go. Okay. You know, trying to sell, uh, right. trying to sell my comics. And it, it's nice. It says Van Skyver Morales, which means that I'm better than everybody. Uh, that's all it means, you know. But yeah, DC told me I couldn't do it, so I don't know. <laughs> Cannot imagine <laughs> why. For that. Holy cow. Yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway. Uh, all right. So. Uh, Almost. Almost long goes on. Almost. I'm not going to pry, but it sounds like you two should talk as well. Let's handle as much of this in DMs, calls, and back rooms as well. The fans don't need to see any ugliness. I disagree. I think they do. I think they do need to see it. Um, Patrick says, I've reached out to Malin a few times over the past month, couple months. He doesn't reply. What else can I do? That is fucking true. Uh, uh, John Malin has not answered any of my messages. What is going on with in you? In the last week. Scout. And I'm starting to get a little buggy, too. Scout. I say, John, I need you tonight to Hello, be on Scout. the uh, Trash Cash show. What are you doing? Hello, Scout. And by the way, all you have to do is say, I can't do it. And I know you're seeing my messages. Uh, no response is not acceptable. Not acceptable, John. And so I know how Patrick feels here. Uh, but uh, Vaughn says, I didn't know that. Vaughn's a good kid, right? I mean, look at him. Allegedly, I think he's setting up a uh, character arc here. No, we don't know if that's true. If yeah. they're telling stories. I got an itch on my head. This is the right. character arc. Yeah, allegedly, of, we don't know if he's lying. Okay, uh, yeah, at uh, this point, we don't know no where he's standing. He, he seems like you, a good guy. Like how you are with Ethan. No. And then, no, 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 you should not talk to John the way Patrick talks to in me. In the back room. Uh, now here is uh, 057. This trail is Yaki. discovered. The only new group starting up right, is so, the pros who can't get enough work because of associated with CG. Fucking comic flags. That's the Matt same Yaki, dude. as the one we just finished. The only this. It's weird too because Matt would be on those Kings Where one. John would bring up like if anybody's looking for colors, here, leave it okay. loaded out there to contact Matt. Yeah. Right. Like I saw, it's like, whoa, who's talking shit like that? Matt Yaki, what the fuck? Here we Victor go. Says, Please right, so spare all I'm going to do is tie a square around here, campaign. connect these two threads, and then <laughs> no. uh, carry on. <laughs> I'm going to do it, dude. I'm going to last. I don't know if you can see it. said, Please this. spare Rini, share her campaign. Right There's a bit Guys, of delay what difference does it make if I tell you to do yeah, anything? I, you're not going to listen to me. I can show you how to share her campaign. It's up to you. You guys uh, follow Rini. If you're interested in backing her campaign, follow her. Okay, so. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Alright. So. Shane, Shane, John, I think there might be something going on with John because he can't do the Jack show and they're not doing it this weekend. He has like a nephew or something um, graduating the Marines. He had to travel too. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's an excuse. Patrick goes, that bumps me out, Matt. The thing is, Vaughn, uh, I Scout, don't have time do not, to constantly put do not, people at no, ease. Don't scratch my chair. Thank you. I hate Patrick so much. I have so much work in front of me. I saw a concert. I'm getting to think that there's not a lot of art finish. being made. There's, there's a whole so lot of artists he talking. He sounds like he's, like, blowing me. And when he says, uh, I, I, I can't have time to constantly put people at ease. That's what I'm getting. He sounds like he's box. complaining about a wife's duties. Sounds like his jaw hurts. Yeah. It's like, uh. <laughs> okay, I have such a hard time tying I'm with this stuff. I can't see you. it. Like, I, you know, I have to work to Maybe do more it. light, uh. Too bad, bitch. Need help. Get on your knees. How about a lamp? Where can I put a yeah, lamp? That's what I, I would put a lamp say. Right there, man. I would say you know that. You know what? I'm going to try that. My wife either. Oh, I have pinned this to my leg. Arg. I completely understand that, says Vaughn. All right. I'm putting the lamp over here. Space. See that has wasted so much time and energy. Uh, here's uh, Matt Yaki. Eh, don't be bummed. It is what it is. EBS has said it before, and it's true. St. James for creators. He can't support an industry. But if you can do it all yourself, you might make some money. It won't support independent thinkers and colorists and more than one letterer. Although, once Kelsey starts to only work on his own projects, you're all fucked. Well, Oh, by now, but that didn't happen. Oh well, I'm already out of the game, actually. 
doing this for 28 years in September. It's hard to just walk away. So keep the drama going. It's better than TV. That's my yacht. Okay. Wow. <laughs> keep the drama going. It's better than TV. Let's see. Is that oh, better? We will, Matt. We will. Is uh, that better? Maybe. I think it is. Uh, so. more like doesn't uh, hurt. Here is a big one. This, well, this stuff has been going on since day one. It will go on forever. Let's see. I've been here for all of it. Calm yourself and enjoy the show. And remember, online friends are not real. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is important. Online friends are not real. Yeah, this is the whole thing. This is the snake oil these two pussies are selling. Uh, Matt Yak, send, send those pages my way, says uh, Patrick. And Matt Yak shows them this uh, Racing the Prince's Purple Rain cover. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it, slightly better, more visible. Excuse me. Uh, here's our friend of one. First part, first part. Do you mind letting go of my hair? You've been here longer than me, you know Thank more. You. But second part, while I get what you're saying, no, I don't no. know. Thank you. Some of the friends I made online have been some of my best, especially after meeting them in okay. real life. Now, they back to us. Y'all, this is definitely better. Around. Now I can see. Oh, bond. So, they're not your friends. Can you tie this? Well, very, un- very unhealthy to think they are. And here's how you know you have a bond. They want to meet up with you again. So what's up on the yeah. No, I mean like <laughs> left over right. <laughs> Doesn't this sound like some sort of like uh, gay sex like commitment or like something? We have to yeah. meet up in real life, and it does it. You, know, you have right to, over you left. Have to do this like I requirement like I don't know. It sounds like a cult, really. Welcome, show to the cult. biggest show yeah. on the internet. Crash cast, Captain Choke got everyone, 3,200 people watching. Uh, and it's good to have you on board. Uh, Choke, good, good morning to you. Choke out, we're going over the Dungeoneer files, uh, and this is uh, currently, I have left the room at this point. Uh, there was silence for a long time, everybody was kind of uh, thunderstruck, and then the conversation about friends is going on. And Mr. Biggins yeah, it is sounds trying like to the development of a cult. Here into believing that you can only uh, trust us. You shouldn't get information from the outside sources. Anytime you hear that, be suspicious. Uh, you can <laughs> All right, so there we go. All right, now we're you know, about to finish this uh, bone and you know, this part of this flag, and we can move on to the other one. Real close to the edge here. He wants everybody to go to his Las Vegas show. I want to see yeah, uh, what the other side looks like. I've got to keep so things saying, even. Your real friend, Problem is, this should be folded friend, under. We want to see and I can again. feel the other edge the of that date. bone here, so I want to match that. Uh, Just tuck it under, yeah. and we get it roughly rounded. Uh, all right, so you can see what's happening here. You're going to watch him apply pressure. And I'm just going to hold it. Friend. I only have I'm, I'm this last bit to do, so I'm going to hold that on there while I stitch it. real skeevy here. Von goes that, I completely agree with. Chad Townsend says, four days left on my campaign, I'd like to reach $15,000. I'm on the fence whether I should extend it 15 or 30 days. Also going to need someone to walk me through how to extend it and put it in demand. Choke yeah. out, you want to teach this guy how to extend it and put it in demand? I hear you think you're popular with the ladies. Uh, <laughs> Some things just can't be told. I understand. Uh, all right, let me see here. Uh, and there we go. Okay, so Biggins goes just back, Black Phantom, Chad. Looks good. Thank you. Uh, very grateful, Mr. B. And then he does this. Uh, Biggins, I'm behind on backing stuff, so anyone else with active projects, let me know. In other words, here comes the cash. Biggins has some money, so he's going to pass around the money, bribes, essentially, uh, through campaign backing. I don't know if I covered this part. Maybe you did. But did you ever cover the part where you and him are arguing about what a whale is? I don't think that's in this room. I think that was somewhere else. Okay. 
just got Ice Song 2 as well. Now, Pull through. why is he saying he just got Ice Song 2? You think? Um, I don't know. Uh, at this time, is there any friction between you and Eric? Uh, no. Uh, maybe a little. This was after the Yellow Flag stream that we watched a month later. Um, no, he's saying I just got Ice Song 2 because Eric July is in this room. Okay, pulling it. Uh, that's why he's saying that. Now, it's, trying to get as I pull that twat, it's starting to round it a bit this. better. But Eric so far like. has Again, the rounding doesn't really matter uh, Eric is just, yeah, that Eric's much. The original is a series of tangents. Out They're out very out slightly out rounded, out. as are mine. Uh, but, um, Patrick says 15 but if you remember, men this is to be read from 100 meters, 500 meters, maybe a quarter of a mile away. I don't know, how far were they when they hoisted the colors? I don't know, man. It's, it's how far away when they uh, dropped the British or the Dutch or the French flag, whatever they're flying, and then reveal that, you know, the the skull and bones that signify, hey, we're pirates, give us all your stuff. I think I need to make some illustrations of the general history of pirates. I think that be a... Uh, if you're a rich guy for buying original for art, this year. then we appreciate you, by the way. Uh, whales buy original art. A lot of it. You know, when we see you coming at conventions, we're like, oh, thank God, like, somebody with okay. money is coming. So here we they, go. They pull through your original art pages, and they're like, I want this, 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 and this, and you're like, shit, that's six, $6,500. Like, yeah, I love, love, yeah, I love the con one time was $17,000. Yeah. Like, original oh, art sells. It was crazy. That's what makes uh, going to conventions fun. Those are what whales are. And they're just like, well, you take you my go. track. And they're like, yeah, the hell yeah, I'll take your track. Right. Uh, that's, uh, those are good. Tie it off, track. and then this bone is done. Dude, you're, you're spending 25 bucks. And another DM group. Before we just destroy each other over stupid shit, can we all just kiss and make up? Say you're sorry. Biggins goes, Jesus, which chat? And who's winning? Winning. Michael Bancroft's here, and all he does is just promote his comic. <laughs> That's nice. Ted Townsend responds, it's called the United CG Room. Left over okay, right. So Come on. Is, I'm not in that oh room. my gosh, it's just, it's this is hard to do. I can't United see CG. because I've got dark fabric with dark thread and old uh, eyes. Just bought some comics and that Figgins recommended. Clumsy fingers. It's so nice. Uh, Biggins goes, Biggins doesn't want to talk about comics. He wants to talk about the drama. Lol. United CG Room. None of us are in it. <laughs> of course, he sounds like a comic book villain because you have a comic book artist the doing the voice, right? Yeah, so, I, uh, I don't know what the United CG Room is. Does it this is so much the, different. This comic book the, King's room. There's something about comic book artists is so much different no. than painters. Chad, like, uh, would it be in it? I think Chad, back to the time when I worked around a lot of other painters when I was oh, in right, a yeah. studio and yeah, maybe a dozen of us in there working. I mean, we, there were Wish I was in it. stuff going on. Uh, oh, man, I don't recall this really this kind of no maybe it was that was almost a pre-internet era. Existence, one was face to face, or in phone, these. or in writing. Uh, and then Chad comes right so I guess back it was to the end. Very Chad different time. I wonder how much. Yo, I'm being told people uh, aren't able to defend the themselves. Has changed they aren't. I'm just saying everyone the way needs people to interact in real life. You know? Okay, uh, we're done. So this one is set. I got another one with the first bone on. It looks freaking awesome. Let me check my. Uh, Good stuff here. Let me check my real time uh, camera. Was a and, great uh, for everything. I want to adjust this so we can see and post uh -huh. it up. I'm going to hang this one because this bone is done. Oh, and now we're on to the last, uh, on to so the, Smith the, shows up the other says, flag. Uh, you know, Let's see, I want to turn it uh, it's, it's that way. I need a little bit of tape. So we got this one sewed up. I like painter's so tape because it's low tack. Uh, that's fair. So use it. A one pull it away. Doesn't uh, ruin any finishes. Imagine that. Very nice. Pieces. There we go. Check that out. To yeah, looks like a part of flag, right? Too late to find out. Well, it's like, like uh, part of a part of flag. Skull and bone. Uh, yeah. Here's a one moment. How, how was it? Uh, 
Awesome. Uh, awesome, 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 awesome. I'm sure you okay. wanted to meet Kelsey Shannon and so Irene. Now. Okay. So as you can see, Kelsey oh. Shannon and Irene Strakowski are big into superstars. There we go. Uh, that he is already planning to take to all of his shows. He's just trying to get trained. Same thing. Uh, uh, this one. And so, so I was planning to go to Tampa earlier in the year, but then she asked about Galaxy Con. I was bummed that we had fun hanging out together. Billy Dee was cool, nice guy. She was very thrilled. And then here's Big oh. Back to Core Drive. Looks interesting. There's your money. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait. So you back to the book to get you an, an answer that you were okay with? Yeah, but look at what he says next. That's cool. Okay, so this one's ready. It's a little weird, but really you gotta come to this event. Why are you determining where these artists go to promote their work? I don't get that. Like, who the hell are you? Nobody tells me. I mean, I'd be happy to. I'm happy to receive suggestions. Well, you know, there's this gallery that likes to show. You know, it shows your kind of painter. So maybe you should take a look at it. I, mean, I just had that recently. Utah. You know, like, I, I yeah, I will consider it. That and get my books done and do YouTube You're not determining and, and where I go. And launches and all this stuff that we do. It's like, oh. this can't be like... But what do we have here? I need my needle and thread. Yeah, so I just put people... And, uh... Like all these I think I'm going to start here just because this is a tough place to start. Service. I'm going to... Yeah. Start at the difficult part. You know I mean, uh, I expect to see you in Vegas. And walk around. <laughs> what? Yeah, you, I mean, it, you know what? In fact, it, it's really weird and gay. And, I think I'm going to do that. Me, yeah, I'm, I'm going to start at the. This, this is maybe the toughest this part of it. I'm going to get that out of the way. Like, so the rest this, is easy. About con, this is so about let's start like right here. Cons. This is about doing what, what you see this being two right years from there. now. The hardest part now, get it out of the way, and then we can move on to the easy yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, to, I, I think it really is Relatively. like big, it's just kind of going on. Well, once I get this guy. bone on, um, and then I've got the other you know, takes bones, they're already cut out and ironed. And, and, these oh, no, they're not. The I'm gonna be the no, guy. they're not. So I have, to, really uh, I have to iron them and approach. make them like fold. Like, he doesn't need Vaughn Coleman to go, although he wants Vaughn Coleman to go, because Vaughn might be become a comic bro. He wants Andy to go. He's telling Andy because Andy's another name on the list, like uh, Comic Sans King. Yeah, but how about you just ask him to go to Vegas? Why you gotta guilt him in like in front of everybody? Why didn't you come here? And then hey, see it's so slimy. Just say, hey, do you wanna come to it Vegas? Does sound a little no, okay. Sketchy, man. Yeah, well that's not what's going on. Yeah. Sounds like a little bit of a uh, uh, here we go. Let me see. Somebody's showing some artwork, that's nice. Uh Vegas will be great. A new city for me. Who's one ten again? Here we go. I don't know who that is. I don't know. Oh, it's Joe Ball. Joe Ball. Uh, launched the second campaign without fulfilling the last one, violating CG Commandment 3. Joe Ball for Shane. Lol, Shane, my biz partner. Uh, I right, so this corner... Mm, so the big ends. This corner can be okay. folded. It's already done, bit. big dog. Right. Just got to send it to print. There you go. Uh, Biggins back my book again. Uh, thank you. Everybody's uh, Biggins is back in everybody's books. And then make Mrs. Biggins read both copies. Biggins says, I don't have to make her. She reads comics and the Bible voraciously. <laughs> oh, That's good. That's nice that she reads the Bible, Biggins. Thank you for that. Uh, all right, so here we go. This is another gay thing that I wanted to point out. Uh, Grant Nolan goes, go somatic Kuma Kate. Let me just post the link in here. Grant <laughs> pops up every now and then. Because he does that, he's like, hey, retweet my book, right. please. Uh, Biggins goes, God and Papa Bear, no one. <laughs> oh, God. So Biggins is trying to figure out how to relate to Graham Nolan here, because Graham Nolan is another big alpha. Graham's older than Biggins, so he's decided he's going to call him Papa Graham. He tries Papa Bear, no one. That doesn't, that seems weird. So he's going to call him Papa Graham moving forward here because well, that way still seems an alpha weird. acknowledging another alpha but putting him in the senior position by age yeah here, but my dad's age that's not how it works uh so uh let's see how Graham deals with that Bancroft uh, everybody hey oh man okay alright here All right. we go people so talk around about the first books. corner right here hooray uh, these are favorite books um hold on 178 oh I gotta stop because uh, let me see oh. Okay, 
you're sweating tears, right? Because, oh wait, no, no, no. Now the flag is properly right, christened. That's where nudity was. That actually shows some nudity. I gotta skip it real quick. Oops. That's not here. Okay. Oh. Okay, go to 183. Page 183. They're just talking boring shit. Yeah, I'm glad I'm doing this this way. Do the, uh, I'm doing the third, probably the most complicated part first. Um, okay. It's not real this complicated, is it's just, this is more uh, complicated than the straightaways. I guess this is grand. I like a full script so I can yep, see the dialogue and know how to adjust characters' expressions. But I'm never locked down to the written word. The artist's job is to convey the writer's intentions, not to be a slave to his possible visual limitations. The artist's job is to convey the writer's intentions. Okay. When I write scripts for other artists, it's full script, but I let them go off. My one request, make me look good. There you go. So that's yep. a, and Grant Nolan's giving him a really good answer to that's another reason I like this stream is because you get really good advice from these uh, professional artists. And Graham Nolan is, uh, he's, he's really good. So you get great advice from seasoned professionals. They're in a different area of art than I am, but... Uh, I want to, they this year I'm going to be panel trying, panel, to, I'm trying to change how I do my paintings, just in terms of storytelling. Single paintings, but, uh, I, but I want to be able to uh, tell stories better, so I've been paying a lot of attention to these guys. Sure they uh, they uh, have yeah, lots of panels and lots of pages to tell their stories, and they have word balloons and stuff. I want to say I can't use word balloons in a... An oil painting. Uh, and I guess I can. Big, I prefer the and you know, that's not even. How would you even be the first time I've done one? Can I think of five well, besides what I like to stand? I've um, seen other types of scripts of a sort of scene by scene with dialogue and, and allow the artist to control the layouts. Biggins couldn't care less about any of this. Who else? Where else? Alright, so all this stuff is going on. Political cartoons, 18th century stuff. Dale Peel leaves their room. Dale just got sick of whatever was going on in here, and he just leaves. And now the paranoia sinks in. Biggins, Dale left. Was the talk about comic book scripts too intense? Uh, somebody says, "Well, Dale could have been unintentional." Well, <laughs> this is Kelsey Shannon. So Kelsey shows up. Mandy tugging that leash hard. So now they're they're That's speculating funny. that Kelsey. Uh, okay, they're speculating that we know what's going on in here. Um, and that we're ordering uh, our connections to pull out of their room. So if Dale's Ooh, in that's there, right. we're sitting there going, get out of that room, cool, Dale. Cool. And we're doing it through Mandy. Mandy is telling them right. to get out of the room. Like, Dale, Shane, do we have to... <sighs> I mean, you were still in the, the room end of this time, time, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm still in the room. No, he just left. I don't know why he just left. I, I think, like... Because somebody else had left early on, um, when the Tampa stuff kind of freaked out, um, another C tier left and Von Coleman flipped out. And, it, and, and um, I mean, basically, some people just didn't want to be in the room that shit was being said, like bad shit. Right? The timing of it. Dale doesn't check DM rooms daily, so he could have yeah. been reading stuff prior. And it's like, I'm leaving this shit. It's getting out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. Biggins goes, he starts this early and then puts a cocktail. Oops. So he's calling Dale a drunk. Yeah, it, it must be that. It must not be the stuff Dale's he's saying. Dale's a fantastically yeah, it, here's talented uh, draftsman. Does he ever stop drinking? And I, I don't mean that in so, any pejorative uh, sense. He's a draftsman. I mean, he's a, he's a talented artist. I mean, his, his pencil work. All because he uses brush and stuff too, but his, his drawings are just leaves. awesome. That's interesting. So if one class leaves... Uh, Maybe my favorite. In terms of, like everybody's also fucking hilarious. You know, uh, Matt Yaki his, says, his stuff is. Be normal and enjoy life, Fowler. So he missed whatever Matt Fowler said here. He'd give Dora he says, a round of applause. Honestly, I'm done with it. You guys were talking for over five hours about comics. Made me feel better. Ha ha. That's what Kelsey does. Ha ha. Uh, all right. So paranoia is beginning to sink in here. Vaughn just left too. Says Patrick. There might be orders come from above to leave the room. All right. So, uh, it's so ridiculous. Like, like we I order you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Patrick really believes this. And Patrick 
Patrick's like orders from above. Like, remember Patrick's like talking to me, like, can I be your soldier? Like, and all this stuff. So, like, there's a there's definitely a hierarchy, and um, uh, you know, orders are being passed down to lead Patrick's right. Hang, hang on, Bond's in the chat. He said in the chat, no one gave me orders. Bond Klaus. Yeah, I wonder why Bond. Bond, do you want to say why you left? Like, what was the reason you left the room? He says, I left because that room was poison. There you go. Did anybody else, Vaughn, did anybody, was anybody, were you in a room called United CG where people were talking about this room being poison? And uh, everybody should leave or like, you know. Because, I mean, Dale left first. I mean, I don't know. But it was getting weird. I mean, you left before it got really weird. Uh, let me see what Vaughn says. Uh, Chris Archal says, send Vaughn the link. I don't want to get too many people in here. Uh, I just need Choke Out, I need Shane, and I need John Malin, if possible. And maybe Mandy could be in here, too. Um, all right, Vaughn's not answering, so I don't know. Mm. Patty says, did Dale even know he was in the room? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> well, that, that is the thing about the room. Somebody can just add you to a room, and you're just there. It's not like you're, you have to accept or anything. You're just... Um, he would see the notifications eventually, but I can message Dell and not hear from Dell for a week. Yeah. Like Dell's not a fast responder. Yeah. Uh, Onsen, there you go. Fuck the anti CG bullshit. Loyalty's golden. I don't think I was in that room. Okay, so if there was a room that you know uh, called CG United, uh, Vaughn wasn't in it either, and neither were any of us. So what the hell? All right. Uh, uh, all right, let me just keep looking here. Uh, oh, that one's got uh, to right. through. So Biggins goes, yeah, and I was asking because I've been thinking about producing comics for years, as I've discussed with some of you. So he's thinking about producing scripts. Mm. Orders from above, says Biggins. CG's a leaderless movement of comic book fans. Who the hell is this right? guy, anyway? I've never heard of him. So now this is sarcasm. Uh, because a Patrick or just something? said something really fucking stupid, as though there are orders from above. And Biggins is being kind of sarcastic, like, what, what do you mean? I thought CG was a leaderless movement of comics. You mean there's an above, Patrick? Hmm. <laughs> Whose main uniting concept is respecting the fans slash customers? Uh, in theory, says Yaki. Is that Yaki 110? Just double check that. Um... 11 zero? Yeah, okay. No. Close. No, no, it wasn't. No, yeah, he's zero fifty seven eleven zero. That's um uh alright, I'll put it in private chat. Oh, why don't you just say? For me <laughs> for me. What do you mean it's not for you? Yeah, I thought that was it. It's Camel Moon. Just say that. What are you doing? I'll just laugh. I don't want to. I feel bad for the Patrick T thing. Somehow everybody blames me for it, even though Patrick T said, to him, Why is it all liberating? I am. Look. Okay. Camel Moon. Yeah, that's Camel Moon. Okay, you're resting my hand for a couple minutes. Let's see here. Whatever. All right. Anyway, Camel Moon. Good, good, good. Yeah, it's wrong way. Customers in theory. Yeah. Uh, and then um, uh, here's Kelsey. You mean. It's not to get drunk every night and shit on anything and everyone for a cheap laugh while being late on multiple campaigns? No. Wow. Kelsey. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. We do these things called closeouts and launches for other people in the community that have uh, campaigns and uh, we sometimes have a good time to do drinks and shots to raise them more money. But yeah, yeah, that's the problem, right? He says, I had it all wrong. <clears throat> that's great, Kelsey. Wow. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, Kelsey, like, by the way, at this time, I think he kind of had just left the Jack Show. And he left the Jack Show and made a video just utterly shitting on the Jack Show uh, and saying stuff like this. Well, that's not cool. Uh, all right, who are these people? If you want to leave, just go. I don't know. I've seen this guy. Who is this guy? I've seen this guy. Who's this guy? <clears throat> Let me see the chat. What is the chat saying? Uh... Does anybody recognize these guys? I know them, but I can't remember. Gay guys, says so Slim Wit. They were from the sex club. No, they're not. That's Joe Ball. Joe Ball's on the right. That's how I know him. Uh, 
and who's the other guy? It's not Cecil. Mm. How does nobody know these people? And no, the one guy in the middle I saw and met him, he's a nice guy, he's an artist, uh, but I don't think he's a creator or anything, he's somebody from the bat. That's Pitara in the middle. No, Pitara's on the left. Oh, Pitara's on the left. Yeah, the guy in the middle is from the chat. From the chat. Okay. Alright, I'm just uh, checking there. I don't know what the point of that is. Uh, oh, this is uniting. Uh, Fran, creator outside CG, creator from CG, all from different places, all finding themselves in the same place. Oh, who, who's saying this? Oh, this is Camel Moon. I did this. Camel it's, Moon is... And reinforcing the IRL point. Once again. Yeah. Camel Moon's like, Patrick Thomas Parnell got us all together and brought togetherness to Comics Gate. What an accomplishment. Uh, Vaughn says, this is so stupid. Also, once again, no issues at Tampa. Any of this drama was online stuff. Uh, Kelsey says, so anyway, nerds! Yeah, whenever Vaughn peeks up here and he wants to say, guys, guys, everybody squashes it right away. Yeah. You notice that? Yeah. Uh, Jago says, did this. Yes, he did. That works in many different ways. <laughs> or Vaughn's over here saying, guys, uh, let's... Um, we need a mediator. We need to patch things up. We need to. He's trying to pull the wheel to keep the, the bus from going off the bridge, and they just it ain't working. The wheel right back over. <laughs> uh, Kelsey starts sharing some artwork here, which is kind of cool. Uh, Mr. Biggins goes, "Can I be a leader?" My first edict is everyone makes superhero comics, and Lou of all the sci-fi, western, historical horror, blah blah blah. I wish I could do that longer. I like that fake laugh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just want it to be a repetitive machine gun of a <laughs> oh, It's like imagine like Boyette's pulling laugh. A string. I imagine pulling a string out his back to make the sound. Like <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's see, uh, Vaughn says, I read this issue for the first time not long ago, actually. Is that Sylvester? No, it's Lee. Okay, good. Second edict is all women must be drawn waist to butt ratio less than 60%. What the fuck? That's a big thing here. Uh, Rom says, Vaughn. You know what? I'm going to. These guys have inspired me. I'm going to make a comment. At all cons. How am I doing so far? So, uh, you guys, you're going to sex conscious. Sorry. No. If you don't, yeah. If you don't, you're the rat. I want to see what it looks like. Mandatory corkscrews in everybody's anuses at the God Club at all cons. Uh, it's I think I just uh, made a decision so, about so, that. Uh, Kelsey that. kicking ass with uh, Scott Williams yeah. rocking the eggs. Yeah, One of my favorite issues for the yard. It was done fast. It's wrong. Just take a break and rest my hands. And I'm going to get back and I'm going to bang this. I'm sure it's fine. Send this flag out, and then uh, uh, we're on to the next is, uh, Kelsey, I like uh, your ideas and next phase, which is putting your cross letters on, and then uh, with each completion, uh, the flag is done. Like the, 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 the construction of each flag will be done. Uh, my goal is to get them all done tonight. Tomorrow, I'm painting shadows, and uh, I saw that in uh, noses and uh, this issue, which I started issue one, but I spoiled it. I think I can do it later. So I'm going to rest my hands for a few minutes. It's getting a little numb. I want to get a break and stretch my legs. Get some coffee still and, and just goof around for a few minutes, but I'm going to hang out here. CG, my if you're here, drop a note in the chat. I'm happy to talk about history or Number anything two. else that comes up. Pirates, art, comic Number books, three. fine art, whatever you like. Um, I, will leave I hope someone CG joins me. New uh, I like company. A lot of work, so I'll be back in a day.
starting with there we go. Now we got the audio, we got the visual, we I got it all, the man. He this upset let's me. make some, uh, let's make some pirate flags. Uh, you'll miss out him. He's a good uh, artist, but you guys have the discretion to say that. Let's make some pirate uh, flags. There's a whole thing to be considered, like when it comes to um, your internet audience. And I used to know this and understand it because right. uh, I was around people my who really wanted to be YouTubers. Goes Medicare, Today we go. Medicare is so we performing Friday or Saturday. Right. I will take yeah. that night off out of respect. Seriously, out of respect for that man. Okay. Love Medicare. I'll probably watch this show. Okay. Uh, all right, we're almost done for the, the night. Next. Don't worry, guys. String the needle. Mailing left a while ago, Patrick. Why? And maybe trying to get people together for a meetup is not what CG needs. Or maybe I just can't have a hand in it. Look at this fucking mope. You fucking chew it. Mope. Nonsense. Nonsense, what a name. Patrick. Lord. Says Biggins. You gotta have word. other men around you lift you up That's over like fake hurt feelings. Just what a mope. Guy. Yeah, you're fine. You're great. Don't listen Got to them. Guy. You need validation, Patrick? There Let's go take a bath. Okay. Big guy. There we go. <laughs> uh, you need a bath. Guy. Joe Ball goes, nah, we need it and we want it. Joe Ball. Ew. Embarrassing. Um, Patrick goes, He's I'll leave He's a fucking grown man. Yes, I yeah. need it and I want it. <laughs> Can you imagine a bunch of guys in the locker room at the gym and they're just reading this? Imagine what's being said right now. <laughs> bunch of dudes in the locker room. <laughs> If, if I was to speak like this to any one of my fucking mates, right? Say, fellas, we I need mean, it. We want it, right? Like, obviously, however do you want fishing. it. He's fishing for however do you uh, need validation. It? For yeah, validation, support, support like friends, and feeling cons, you know. Like, okay, and, yeah. and worse yet, they're making this all about the con. And they're, again, he's villainizing John, saying John left, but he didn't. And that means, like, John's against everybody who's in the room. You see, it's, it's like all fucking mind tricks and manipulation bullshit. It's the development yeah. of a cult. Well, again, it's all like I'm trying to bond you close to me. Like, you this know, is classic uh, they're, they're cult trying to make, development. this room is about making friends, like real friends and forming. So Patrick's, like, faking vulnerability so that people will draw close to him, he's hoping. Uh, and it's, it's so gay. Patrick then goes on to say, I'll leave Comicscape, but Ethan and John have to ask me to leave in public. Why? Wow. Patrick, again, villainizing you That's, that's guys. weird, man. Why, yeah, why do they have to go, be involved? Just leave go back to business, man. System that you're free to hold. What a fucking retard. Like, how do you, how do you leave? Like, people, why do like, you need that from anybody? Well, like, I mean, really, you need it's not branded, to... right, where we, like, rip leave? patches and shit yeah. off of them and, like, <laughs> send them off into the wild. Drum them out of the camp? Not branded. No, it, it's like, uh, yeah, we're anti-SJW, we want better comics. Uh, you know, that's... 
I'm gonna leave CG. It just means that like you've developed intense parasocial like friendships here, and you wanna you wanna wanna run away from those. But I mean, it's like you don't leave comics gate. It's just what you believe in. It's stupid. Uh. Uh, anyway, Vaughn goes, that's not the takeaway. Everyone who meets you loves you, Patrick, and you know it. Let these jokes run their course. Of Joe Ball says, Thomas in course. general. Vaughn is a mouse in a mouse trap oh, right shit. now. He got pulled in so deep. Oh, uh, yes, he did. Like, They're really he working like, hard to defend me. Vaughn. I like, must really like him. I don't he's know trying he to get to him. Let these jokes run their course. He's trying to give them some medicine to cure him of their queerness. Joe Ball says, comics in general needs it. Bond goes, don't, Patrick. Uh, let's not be hasty. This will pass. Biggins goes, Vaughn, these aren't jokes. These are highly personal. <laughs> this is very serious. This is serious business. So that, that set, this is the internet. It's Patrick, very like, serious. You know, as a sex devil and the fucking cup couch with the black guys that are devils, that was a personal attack? How? These are IEDs of comics gate. Well, I mean, that's true. No, but that shit's from somebody in the chat. So, like, you know, just because we pulled it up on stream doesn't make, doesn't mean we engineered it. You know, somebody can super chat it's like, hey, look at this meme I just did. Whatever. But, but, I mean, no. unless unless Patrick was raped by a guy in the late, uh, latex dether uh, De- suit. Dether? That's not personal. You could put any one of our faces there in Patrick's uh, stead, oh, and it would just be—it would be the same effectiveness. See, once we get that, around the, uh, it's not who it's. That's not end. who I am. Uh, so if you the did that to me, it'd be like the straightaways like, ah, here just cruise along, you know. Is it who like, Patrick I'll have this is? done like, in no time, what do you mean it's and personal? then Patrick is a sex. I go around the end there, devil. and then cruise along uh, this you know, one, and then I've got all the first bones on, all the flags. All right. I mean, and then we're gonna put the other ones on. And all of My this goal is, again. Um, I'm pushing hard to tonight. Tampa, well rested. Well hydrated. I had a like good meal earlier. I'm gonna so I bang these Patrick out tonight. I want all the bones on. I want the bait. I want the flags done tonight. Because yeah, tomorrow I want to so paint shadows. That is an attack at him. That's because gonna be my dessert. The comment was about my the treat is that I get the to dinner do the cool shit like, tomorrow. You know, he'll even say that in this. But we had so, good dinner. We had good drinks. I want to bang it's these like, out before the restaurant's everywhere, dude. What are you talking about? Uh, the other yeah, thing we should do. I think people don't sleep, realize and that we have like families and shit. Shadows and we're paint eye sockets. If I'm gonna leave, I'm not gonna go somewhere so I can like spend some money. Find the jaws, paint the teeth, and all the cool shit. Like I want to. This is the fun part. My books That's the fun part. Draw, like all this is kind make of some money and then I mean, come back really, to my I mean, family, not like, you know, hey, honey, I'm at a this bar. Is, this is I'm cool, but like, well, it's I mean, really I'm cool. Okay. Like, I still keep wanting to do that's touches, okay, you know? but I did. Yeah. And then, like, I'm interested that, in my weather. It seemed like you had a real. I think I'm going to shoot these with my musket. I'm going to. Like they're not talking about how great the con is. A thin wash of dye, a real thin wash of brown dye over the whole thing just to kind of weather it in on color. You know, yeah, it's like a, I might have braided a bit with some bricks or some sandpaper yeah. or something. No, I would I go to, to, I'd like to go to a bunch of conventions with you fellas. Give these a bit of history. Uh, I'm and thinking about this the being a, we make some cash. Being on that sloop that was captured off the casino or we go know, to off the bar. The north coast of Jamaica. Uh, and we drink ourselves. Uh, guys, you know, there's three dudes in a canoe drop the tavern. We have to work the next night. I'm thinking this might. No, this wasn't. This is by the coast flag. I'm changing the story because why not? I'm making it. I don't care. Like, yeah, a couple yeah. of times, yeah, you know, but it's by the numbers. It's not is, like we go to a This is going to be the colors of like those this. It's just there's me. always a restaurant around a convention center. There's always a bar around the tavern. The oh, there's the tavern. There's always lots of, food. like, scheduled dinners. Climbed aboard. Like, I knew it. Yeah, 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 I had friends at Dragon Con. And then they made their colors up while they were sitting over the floor. It was like, hey, we're going to go to the dinner. And then that would be it. You know, everybody would so go off to their, their room. This is my yeah. invented yeah. history of pirates. No, no. And, about uh, I can do that because I, I can I, do that. All I said is, so I go, listen, should I put something in my, should I take something with me if we're going to somewhere like a, a nice restaurant to eat or to like a bar or a casino, like where you got to wear something a bit smarter than just like, okay, that's, that, that's all I asked about the nightlife. That's it. Do I need you to ask if there's hookers? You did ask if there's hookers. hookers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, we would get, you know, well... Do I need to wear, do I need to wear a harness? Do I need to wear a body harness? <laughs> <laughs> Full body condom. 
Uh, all right. Caught so, him on my head. I got one of those. Caught him on my head. This is so different uh, than uh, these are the jokes. most fine these are artists I know. Fun. These aren't jokes. These are highly personal and solitary features. I guess jokes. comic um, book artists are more. Patrick says, uh, "What's funny in that pick is I don't people. or didn't even smoke any cigars." Oh yeah, that's the that's the funny thing about the pick. That's the like, pick. You know, was it was it a highly personal attack when you post the Eeyore in there because I said I bet on the wrong horse, Patrick? I mean, like, you see the hypocrisy of like. Yeah. Dude, you cannot. I, 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 whatever. Can you, you might see this? be mad at me, oh, I'm, I'm we're not monitor. agreeing with John on this. Not, you cannot uh, opening go my, uh, around us, make, off, especially Apple. make jokes and not make jokes. Cancel. I don't need to sign in. Yeah, yeah this he, whole he, like, he, damsel in distress shit that he's trying to pull is really <laughs> revolting. It's really <laughs> disgusting. Grant uh, Nolan. Yeah, yeah, skin con. From what we talked about yesterday about keeping this yeah, stuff behind closed doors. Watching. Who you cares, man? I'm is having this fun. This is my stream. Look. I'm what making a fire fly. homosexual. Fuck Nobody wants to show up? I don't Get care. The fuck I'm going on the account. This bullshit. And by the way, trying to drag Graham into this now. You see, now? I am a gentleman of fortune. Uh, no, because, he, they, okay, they assigned him the alpha bear or whatever. Okay, so alpha bear. And hoist the black flag. Well, they were saying pop the bear or some shit. I don't know. Something gay. It made him too like or agree with what they're about to say which in Figure all these comments we can't see the twitter likes on these okay there are some screenshots out there where you can't see the likes so the they're all through this go there are people anymore. agreeing with things here okay there's, there's something to that here the appeal that. of so i and thumbs up whatever yeah. they're, they're looking for the cloud the of no one to reinforce about, uh, this whole whatever the fuck this is which i've always said from the beginning whatever this is isn't danger. about cons Probably a lot of Obviously boredom. Isn't. And, no, of course not. And then it's ridiculous. It's disgusting. Extreme terror. Damn it, man. And then a uh, short end. Everyone, please uh, consider as we uh, as we go on with this. Uh, backing Cyberfrog to bring red road. extermination. Uh, and uh, oh my God, Cyberfrog uh, Dark Harvest is getting very very close Who now knows? to uh, to yeah. three hundred thousand. Here we go. Uh, more so, backers on yeah. that. Thank you so much. Back Cyberfrog Dark Harvest. Yeah. Get a copy of those I think books. Fine artists are, uh, uh, and then also ooh, Rainbow the Crew. To there. Uh, so back really, I'm hearing the line here. Like one back I got away from five hundred and ten thousand dollars. That interested in this for, uh, really more interested in the, uh, the dynamics of the, the type of artist who draws comic books versus the type of artist who paints paintings like this uh, Dutch scene that I have as the main background and. Uh, it, it, is it okay? And occasionally makes pirate flags and other we're not going to be going in demand on this, but I want to physical artifacts. You guys, we're at twenty-three thousand three hundred eighty-five dollars. Volume two, uh, second chance. You guys are wanting to get on board with the glorious Rex, my monster mayhem mash em up book. Go check it out now. You can pick up. See somebody's joining the stream. Glad you're here. Thank you. The next day Welcome. Or you can buy this pack here, which does give you a copy of volume. Got any one, questions? Three. Drop a chat. You'll be all Say something. Say hi. Let me know somebody out there is seeing this. I'm going to continue selling whether you do or not. But. So I'm betting, right? As soon as I say something, chat. Yeah, the drops off. Don't know why. I'm trying to figure that out so I can improve the quality of my streams. And I know. This, this is almost as exciting as watching paint dry, but more viewer participation okay, in the chat so, uh, equals more go. interesting uh, to get stuff. Because I need, uh, I need that kind of uh, stimulation to uh, get ideas. Oops. Chorus. So we're just cruising like down the line here. These are done. Oh, it sounds so selfless. I kind of like not knowing any of these people, so I can just listen to their words and try to figure out what they're up to. Why are they being treated so differently? Patrick says, everyone and anyone going along with this 
guy's shame on you. Weird. Dude, this guy's a fucking homo. I can't take it. Yeah, this is like a cult of If this were a woman, I'd be like, that makes sense. It's a woman. You know what I don't remember with the uh, okay. Horse Town? Um, There's a little bit more right. tartness. Here. Like, I don't remember there being pull that middle area right over the edge. You know, I mean, there wasn't, like, no, there wasn't sex dungeons. You know, there wasn't, from what I saw, you know, you guys weren't out in some weird book, taking, you know, photographs, putting up on Twitter. We'd probably make fun, too. Yeah, of course. But I didn't do that. Who'd say in a normal world, like, go down to a molecular level? Like, imagine saying oh, that. Man. You know, I think. About a, a fucking convention. Let's talk about the after-hours events and entertainment of a convention. Um, yeah, are you there for your professional the stuff or what? For yourself, and you will understand what is going on, disguised as jokes. Uh, here's Joe Ball. Yeah, it's pretty simple, really. Everyone allowed to dislike or like whatever they want for any reason they want. They don't even need an explanation, but our friends, peers, shouldn't have to be made uncomfortable about it. When Dude, what is this recent obsession, and, and I mean recent, like in the last decade, of oh, you're, you're immune from being uncomfortable? What makes you uncomfortable is is up to you. That doesn't even make sense. I worry about this all the time. Since when are you immune from being uncomfortable? Life is uncomfortable. Life is deadly and dangerous throughout most of human history. And all of a sudden, we have it so easy that people are worried about being uncomfortable. What kind of luxury are you in? The, the uncomfortableness is, is a grave assault. Holy crap, man. There are going to be a lot of doomed people if we get an asteroid or a gigantic solar flare or something that interrupts this life of ease for uh, for even a few weeks or, or a month or two. Holy cow. Maybe that's what we need. I don't know. We'll sort things out. And, uh, I don't know. It's weird. It's just weird Like how this is... Some sort of aspiration. I don't want to be uncomfortable. <coughs> well, I'm uncomfortable at the moment. Well, speaking of that, I need to go. Uh, excuse me, just a moment. Thank you for your patience. I had to step away for a moment. But we are uh, cruising right along. Not really halfway here, but we're getting there. It's just steady progress. That's all we need, is steady progress. We're getting this thing stitched on, and then we'll move to the other bone. 
The goal is to get all these bones on tonight. So, get them all. And then tomorrow I can paint the shadows. Which is the fun part. This can go. Just pulling pins as we go. This stuff gets loose and starts developing hills and valleys because the, the fabric stretches. But if I iron it, it tightens it right up and lays flat right. It, you know, just perfectly follows the uh, the underlying for the main uh, field the fabric and, and it works great. So I think I'm going to iron this here. John Malin skillfully crafts his artwork in time because he knows how to do it. You shitting at another cheap ass fucking rip off of the Transformers or of Superman does not make. Another interesting thing about comic artists versus fine artists, like, I 
don't hear a lot of this kind of conversation, or I have in eight years. Because comic artists seem to have, like, like they're all talking about, they all have a common standard. And I wonder if this kind of conversation was more prevalent in the days when, like, in the, with, with the academic stuff, like, where this is the way to paint. And so everybody knew, you know, back, and I, I was just looking at a bunch of stuff from Pompeii, so these Roman mosaic, or, well, even mosaics, and uh, murals and, and stuff. There's a way to paint. And then, you know, you look at the early 19th century, the late 18th century, the 17th century, there's a way to paint, and you either do it or you don't. And these comic guys talk kind of that way, like, you know, they all know when he says, oh, I did, you know, I gave my pencils, and it looked like you looked at it a little sharp. You know, I, I can imagine almost an older painter talking that way. Maybe not today, though. Like, I, I don't recall hearing a... Like, a, you know, maybe I have heard similar conversations about painters but like, you know we have a certain standard that we expect but, but it seems like there's more uniformity in the expectation of a standard among say comic artists than there are among painters but even landscape painters you look at you look at landscapes and you're going to find them you know, i follow a bunch of people on twitter or x um, landscape painters from the United States and Europe, uh, uh, England yeah. mostly. Um, yeah. Some of them are very similar, and some of them have a, have a similar style, and then there's some of them that are noticeably. Uh, what's the word? Well, I mean, just initially, I'll say better. There's, there's a quality to them that doesn't exist among the mass of them. And, and I think those guys probably could have a similar conversation to this where they can use a shorthand to describe what's going on with those pictures. And everyone will know exactly what the other guy's talking about. That's what I feel like this is. Like, he's just like typing. It seems like they have this with the comic book. Yeah, but you know, Patrick's right. They should focus on the future. They should have focused on the future from the get go, but they know they're still hung up on their fucking experience. It's like, dude. I said this to you the other day on stream. It's like, what? Did I ever get hung up on the con? No, because there's always the next convention. I'm looking for not back. These fuckers are like, oh, oh, they're shitting on our, the Dungeoneers. It's like, if you, a lot of this, if you go back to the beginning, started with yeah. like, well, we're doing this, and you're doing what I tell you to do, and you're going to be there, and you're an asshole if you don't go there. Like, there, there was no Dungeoneer thing at that point. They were so hung up on... Whatever the hell this is, I am fucking crazy for me. Uh, let me see here. Let's keep going. Uh, yeah, gotta bring the one. So Let's fold this over. With you, uh, Parnell was talking about Avatar 3. Uh, all right, hold on. Avatar. Uh, I think it is now time. Uh, Let's right pull this pin. Over. I can go across here. These are matched, and then I'm going to iron this to uh, tighten it up and flatten it. And then we're going to stitch all the way back down. And I've already done the hardest part, so this should cruise along pretty quickly. Uh, says, I laugh so hard I cried when they plug their tails into the spirit tree at the sacred place. Ew. What the fuck is that? Oh, we're plugging. Get their tails plugged. Kelsey says we need some serpiary here. Vaughn, hold your eyes or close your eyes. This is the nudity that I was talking about. I know who he's talking about. That Brazilian artist. The big yeah. booty lady. Yeah. True enough. Um, okay, hold on a second. Let's get a little bit. Okay, sure. Let's have a second. Uh, Kelsey, we need a Sergieri room. I agree. For people of finer taste, says Kelsey, a refined palate. Vegas goes well ground. Oof. Yes. Now here comes Eric July. This is a tweet that I'm so glad is here because I lost it. Uh, I I was saying Dick Masterson's criticism was really good. You should listen to it. Eric responded with, uh, "Oh no, I'm saying uh, yes. Stop arguing with trolls. You're giving them what, what they want." Eric. Eric said, "I aren't giving them anything. They're retarded." He said, "I aren't giving them anything. They're retarded." That's maybe how you would deal with it, and that's your business. Why hate Eric Goliath now? That's your business. 
to say my fans don't care is patently false and extremely Come on, dude. ignorant to even this thin skin this man it's is just reason why we're the layout we did and it's much appreciated the grist is giving bad actors credence and you do that far too often you should treat them accordingly there you go Is this full? Oh Probably. my god, it's big ends. Oof. Like I that. guess we're not the only ones getting tired of friendly fire and quote-unquote helpful advice. Oh my god, the shared enemy. Yeah, this is all the signs of the development of a cult. Just like the helpful advice about which clubs or comic cons to go With nothing at stake. These are, the, these are just dominance plays disguised as constructive criticism. Shane, stop telling him which sex clubs he's allowed to go to. He's the one that stated later that um, number three, what was it, draw superheroes, uh, pop women, go to sex club. You know, I, I want, you can't take a joke one minute and make a joke about the same thing and then keep being sore about that. Like, holy shit. Like, what does that even got to do with fucking sex clubs? Like, Eric's tweet. Like, anything that can circle back to that and play victim? Are you a victim? Like, what is it they're running here? Uh, alright, I don't know. Where Puffles is he in here? I don't know what's going on here. I think that's where I wanted to stop. Uh, because just seeing Eric July, uh, being a friend in this room is a good place, a good stopping point for today. Yeah. Um, okay. but, uh, yeah, I mean, so we're almost we're ready for a new thread on this.
ship you uh, your order. Uh, our eBay store rules, we've got Cyberfrog 1 right here, Cyberfrog 2, and then all these in between are books that you can collect, plus lots of, lots of merch, hats, uh, a blood money box, double magnetic store folio to keep all your Cyberfrog books on your shelf. It looks beautiful. Uh, trading cards, okay. so, all kinds of great new stuff. Thread. Stuff the ends underneath. I'm going to put just a few stitches in this, and then I'm going to iron it flat and get it all to uh, uh, run smooth and flat for the rest of this run. Because this, we're now on the on the home stretch on this piece. All the hard parts are done, and it's just a matter of getting, getting it all stitched down to the end. More steps and then I iron it flat. <clears throat> Alright, there we go. Let's uh, make sure I don't pull my thread out there. Alright, so I'm just going to iron this quickly and we'll carry on. Then I have to come up with something else to listen to. Shall that be? heating up and see what else is on the internet tonight find something good to listen to
let's see who else is on tonight. Anybody live? Almost nobody. Me, but what else? Who else is on live tonight that I can listen to or watch? <clears throat> I don't know what I have to do to get listed in the live tab on YouTube for my streams. Probably it would start with being interesting. Maybe I should be interesting. Hmm. I guess I could do that. I mean, we've got one watching the Mugshot TV live arrest booking video stream. I don't think I'd want to watch that. I think I'd rather watch an artist in the Midwest sew a pirate flag. That sounds like an interesting stream. Yeah, that's strange. I don't know. Maybe it just doesn't show them to me. Don't know. You know what I'll do? How about, why don't I just go back and I'll listen. I'm sure I've missed some of these trash casts. It's entertaining. I'm really interested in the uh, art discussions, so maybe uh, I'll go back and listen to a few of them that I have missed. If I haven't, I don't know that I've missed any of them. Holy cow. It looks like I have not missed them. Hmm. Um, it looks like I haven't missed them. Well, let's see what this is. Listen to Comic Gate Keys. Maybe I can learn something from these artists. They work in a different medium, totally different way. Well, very different way. I don't know, totally, not totally different, but, but different. Let's see what happens here. This might be, uh, might be good. This was about a month ago, I guess. Okay, let's see here. What do we have? So I got my iron heated up. Let's, uh, let's steam that real quick. Let me steam that real quick, and then we're going to cook this.
Story D says, uh, I'll become a channel member if you get on the Peloton for one minute. Are you kidding me? I've been on the Peloton uh, many times this week. Many times. Because I put a TV up there. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, let me show you there. See my Peloton over yeah. there? Uh, there's a TV now right there. So oh, I can yeah. watch The Walking Dead while I... It's perfect. By the way, my frogs are in good health. Redmond and Greenman, very happy over there. Uh, Redmond and uh, Greenman. When you're watching The Walking Dead and doing the Peloton, now that you're so far into it and it's getting bad... Does it just anger you to go faster? Uh, the, the lesbians with the slingshots uh, and the, <laughs> the deaf mutes, uh, yeah, they're really fucking annoying. Really annoying. I'm cheering for the zombies now for the first time. <laughs> no. They're really bad. And I'm pedaling normal speed on this live stream, so it's so Oh, I'm not going to do that now, but I will do a okay. on live stream about this. <clears throat> uh, True Believer says the Second Amendment stops actual tyranny in this country. You understand that, Jimmy? Faced with tyranny, you know, it's like you understand. We gotta, we gotta have That's a gun. It's not shit. It hasn't well, stopped anything. Am... We haven't done jack shit. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. I mean, have you been to Texas lately? <laughs> yeah, they're flooding through Texas, tens of thousands a day. Yeah, you gotta worry about your shit. Done shit. Oh my God! It's a twenty dollars super chat. Holy shit! I get that excited about, oh my god, there's somebody watching my live stream. So, we're, we're on different levels in our YouTube careers here. In fact, let me see if I can find this. Uh, let me pause that. I'll, I'm going to go ahead and put this up in the window so I can show it as I watch. And we'll see. See what the heck is going on here. You know, I need the. Let's see here. No, there's no live. So. YouTube. Let's see here. There we go. We're going to go back to here. Let's go back live. Where am I? <coughs> I think we're watching this one. Right? And there we go. I just think he slams it on the table. It's amazing. <laughs> Twenty dollars super yes. chat. What an amazing oh, respect. I respect you so much. Whoa! Dude, chat house. Twenty dollars super chat. Thank Browser. you. Beyond That's the one. That's just fucking awesome. Bless you. Uh, so thanks for a great end of 2023. Uncle. Okay. I had a ton of haters screaming. There we go. Were racist, misogynistic. Right. So jerk. that was just these guys. On. They say that to me all the time. Yeah, uh, in trying to good. find those things, I didn't. I became an even bigger fan. I love the truth, humor, and four-hour live okay. streams. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, just listen, as we go. listen, I am a misogynistic jerk. Racist or not, not at all. Uh, Someone fire flag, glad you're here. Questions, throw them in the chat. Uh, but misogynistic, that's me for the most part. Unless you're a bot. I just don't like that. I, I really don't if you're like a human that. being, though, say I hi. Like women. I think women are beautiful, fertile goddesses that are meant to replenish the earth with the human race. Women are uh, the most beautiful mothers. Uh, they are, oh God, God bless them. I, I love them. I just don't like these fucking shrill bitches. I wonder uh, that if maybe there, I can like, get a better view the of the... Painting their faces with menstrual blood. How about this? Complaining about the patriarchy. Uh, I don't Go need all this fuck crap. yourselves. That's enough. Art against Let's get to confusion. art. I'm interested in art and piracy. Of Mickey and our other iconic characters. Then, of course, there is the trademark, which is separated from copyright and has no right. expiration. As defined by the U.S. Uh, Patent and Trademark Office, Double check. Here. We got a live view of the camera. That ah, that's better. Goods or of course, we have to have scout in there because she's key. She's way cuter than pirate flags. There we go. So, copyright is artistic, literary, or intellectually created works such as novels, music, movies, comic books, software code, there we go. photographs, paintings right. that are original and exist in a tangible medium such as paper, canvas, film, or digital format. See what I'm saying? Despite copyright arm twist, uh, twisting and loss itself. So we got three Steve people in. Are y'all real? Or are these bots? Rep, Sonny Bono. I never know. That never know until you say hello. Bono. Let's test it. Do you remember Sonny so, Bono? Did you ever meet him? My no, I never did. Howdy. He died tragically. On the other hand, I did see Cher get booed off the stage at Sturgis. There you go. 
actually now four people in. So, the nice young folks face. cruising the internet for streams. You happen upon the one where uh, the guy is sewing a pirate flag. In a yeah. because she was sticking in himself with blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, what was the name of that movie? Where it's just biker gangs with Sam Elliott. Uh, yeah, what was that movie? Trying to suss out for something. The mask. Best way to do this. Mask. Yeah. So, so she comes right now out I'm doing crossbones. The stage. And she says, I'm excited to hear, to hear, to, to be here. Uh, first, I want to tell you about my good friend Bill Clinton. Twenty thousand bikers. <laughs> she says, No, no, seriously, he's a good guy. Just give him a chance. It's not too much. She's ever gone to Sturgis. Yeah, I don't think Sturgis is the audience for that. <laughs> From what I've heard about it, people have been. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, another friend of ours, a great big friend of ours, amazing. Uh, everybody's so excited. Everybody's very excited, ladies and gentlemen. is where it turns are we tonight? Are we toward the good. Well, still is the New Year. Yeah, New Year's Day. 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 Yeah. Day. No, not you, Mike. Bless you. But I, I woke up this morning, I was like, what the hell? I didn't even drink that much last night. I had like three beers and maybe some uh, some little vodka. It was no big deal. I woke up like a mess, like a dog boss hit me. That's funny. Dehydration. You know, and Billy, you were hydrate. You were singing. We did, we did songs. Got to vitamin eyes. Uh, beautiful songs. It was a jukebox. Everybody enjoyed it. We dropped like maniacs. When was uh, that? It was last night right here on this channel. We rang in the New Year together. So we're going to pull the loose ends. Massachusetts. We were up in Massachusetts. There we go. Oh, well, sorry. Maybe, maybe next year. Tonight is, uh, you know, New Year's Day. So uh, maybe it's time to, uh, to drink to uh, from the top. So last night was hilarious. We had a, a big crowd last night. It was a lot of fun. Everybody That's else awesome. saw Did you stream? Into the new year, like we yeah, of months. course, yeah. We started oh, at like eight That's or nine, cool. and we just streamed right through the new year. I was looking at other people on YouTube. There's nobody who could do what we do. Nobody does what we do here. No sir. Nobody's better at this than me. You know, I got John Malin in here and Shane Davis. I got some incredible individuals like Robert Romano. We know how to bring in the new year. We know how to have fun. And meanwhile, you've got other people out there just wasting everyone's time. We sang Two Minutes to Midnight by Iron Maiden, Billy. That's awesome. Karaoke, dude. Oh. Right before. We sang Two Minutes to Midnight until it was midnight. It was fucking awesome. Don't. Nope. Gonna go across That's the great. edge. I can't of believe it. I missed that. Dang it, I'm going to have to watch tomorrow while I'm drawing. Yeah. Elric says, please calm down. Okay, I will. <laughs> so listen, here's the thing. So I get, I get passionate about So there's a question. So Anna, that Star Wars girl, said last night on their stream uh, with uh, the rest of these guys that YouTube penalizes live streams. YouTube doesn't like live streams, and so they penalize your channel if you use it. I asked her a little bit more about that. So yeah, so I think what I need to do is when I finish this, I was thinking about this earlier, I have my live stream so of making a Revolutionary War tent that I just did. It's going to be the biggest collectible uh, variant. It's going to be with Mickey Mouse. Long ago, just finished it up. And now I have yeah, this live stream of making pirate flags, which I'm going to be finishing in a few days. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the streams. Well, I hate to take the streams yeah. down because I, well, you, just you can't do Disney's Peter Pan. No, not I don't think they're that interesting. That somebody like, might run something. I have an copy um, of but I'm going to take them and, and I'm going to Jackson, 
go through all the streams and edit out all the parts to uh, to the construction of the tent and the flag. And I'm going to make a video and I'll talk a little bit about the history of pirate flags, for example. And then take clips of, okay, if you want to make a pirate flag, here's how I did mine. And if you want to make a Revolutionary War tent, here's some history of it. Here's some images and some you know, information about it. And then here's clips of how you make it all the way through. And maybe that'd be interesting to people. It, it so I'm going to give that a try. A I've got all the footage now because YouTube you know very generously has provided us with the ability to live stream so it records all of this that I broadcast I mean, I as I make these forever, uh, and then I can go through and they have in the studio, uh, YouTube studio, which is forever, kind of, do? I don't know, set of tools, the, um, the ability, I think, to edit it. And maybe I can extract clips from that and put them in my... Uh, I use Blender to edit the video. Maybe I can extract some clips of the different stages of construction for each of these things. And maybe, maybe put it together and put together a video that people will want to see that isn't you know, 20 hours long. Instead, maybe 20 minutes. What do you think? Does that make sense? Does anyone, do do Does anyone want to see a 20 minute version of Everything you ever wanted to know about how to make a pirate flag, the history of pirate flags, how to make a revolutionary war tent out of linen. Really, it doesn't even have to be a revolutionary war. That's the one I made, but it makes a good tent in modern times, too, for a lot of reasons. What are you talking about? Get away with a lot as a four year old. Oh, look, no. he's grabbing my boobies. He's isn't that cute? Yeah. You're like, Billy, yeah. Billy, you get to be 21 years old forever. Oh, okay. There you go. 21. You're old enough to drink. You're Cruising along. You're in perfect condition, like 21 years old. You're the best looking that you're ever going to be. Uh, you know? Well, you're, after a while, people realize you're not going to age and you become a celebrity. Yeah, that's like Keanu cool. Reeves. I still had hair at 21. Oh, yeah, there was that. One forever, I'll take it. Oh my gosh. One thing about those high school, these high school girls. <laughs> okay, you got tangled thread, <laughs> un- or a twisted thread. All right, so Mickey untwist. Mouse is a public domain. Uh, nobody here cares about that except for Billy. Billy is going to exploit the Mickey Mouse uh, copyright yeah. lapsing. Okay, so it's tied itself yeah. in a knot. Very simple knot, though, so we can maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. do it. Yeah, she's going to be he's gonna be on the steamboat. She's going to be, like, sitting on it, looking at him, real cute and everything. I'm going to sign my signature in the the way my Walt Disney signature, if anyone's ever gotten a sheet number one huh. from me. I have a, my signature is like Walt Disney, William Tucci. I use that same font. There we go. Yeah. Uh, Ethan and the King starring in Forever 21. Uh, wait, wrong title. Walt. Well, uh, I don't know. Anyway, all right. So uh, Mickey Mouse, not a big deal. Uh, poverty is an issue in the comic book industry uh, this year, according to Fandom Pulse. Uh, we have to be mindful of the poverty in this industry. Hmm. And uh, in some cases, point and laugh, but in other cases, uh, not. You know, in other cases, it's sad. Marvel and DC writers Max Visaggio and Sean McKee. I remember Sean McKee. I know that's so true. I don't know if I ever met him. I, I never met him, but I know the name. Did I work with him? Did we do a project together like Sean McKeever? Did he mostly do stuff in uh, Vertigo? I don't know. Like, I feel like I know him, but, like, maybe I don't. Maybe I never did. You know? Mm. I'm going to say that about Rob Hunter. They're going to say, what about Rob Hunter? I'm like, maybe wow. I don't. Dang. Dang. <laughs> Remember when he had jury duty and he started the revolution? Yeah, remember when he got, like, he said he wanted to be young forever so that he could destroy the world? Like, that's I didn't say destroy. Dominate. Dominate there's the a, world. There's a difference. Uh, What's the difference, Rob? Well, if we were to have, if, if we had... He's a really good artist. I saw some of his new stuff on Twitter the other day, man. It looks great. And I, exactly. like I said before, I'm not a comic book guy. And I haven't... If there were nuclear yeah, missiles, kid, missiles yeah. headed at us right now, I'd just, I just like, never really just thought about yeah. it that much. But his drawings are excellent. I'd have a drink. Like, I'd have a drink, and I'd open really up my new toy. 
rich and designed and executed. Just nice to look at. I don't know what they're going to look like when they're all finished. And all that stuff. Maybe they were anything. Maybe they were anything. His drawings are really cool. He's out. He's out. He's out. writers max Versace. yeah if a nuclear missile were headed right for us right now uh i'd be like uh, in a way i'd be relieved i'd be like oh finally you know it's like i gotta think like i think about that all the time i see the gayest shit going on on twitter and i'm like i can't wait until like the end of the world i'm so excited about it like i want jesus to come back right now like i know it's like like how much worse is it gonna get jesus i've read the book of the Revela- of revelation i've read it and it seems like we've seen all of that happen already. Like, why? You know what I mean? Like, how, is, are there seriously going to be eight-headed goat, flying goats to come down? Like, I think you can count on that. <laughs> we've already had plagues. Yeah. Nothing's happening again. If uh, the rapture happens, do you really go naked? <laughs> why not? Because you don't need your clothes in heaven, you know. The rapture happens when you get sucked into the sky, and your pants, and I think your underpants, fall off. They're left behind. That's what the movie uh, Left Behind was about. The movie series. What losing your pants? Yeah, they're all over the floor. Your underpants were like left behind. (laughs) When they wrote it too, men they they didn't wear. I don't, I don't need much of a reason to go naked. The one day I didn't listen to my mom and wear clean underpants. Darn it! Yep. But, but, I mean, those, I mean, underwear. how would you feel those oh, guys standing okay. in front of So Jesus we are at the anyway. last stitch here. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. Like, Tie honestly, off. I'd, I'd rather just be dressed. Good to go. You know, I could find a t-shirt to put on that the Lord would be okay with. Yeah. You know. I understand. You want to be like, I, I'll wear a suit. I'll wear a suit and a tie. Yeah. You know. Okay. Let's trim this. All right. Got another one down. I now have a skull and bone on each flag. I've got three flags total. So we are well on our way. Jesus says, uh, My father has. And uh, yeah. you know, I want to put, once this is done, good. now we're going to go uh, prepare Bob, all Bob, the Bob, bones Bob, for the other side. Your King's really looking for the other directional Bob, bones. Bob, we're going to put them on and uh, right. I finished all the pencils to Dragon Rage. I'm on the inks. Then it's going to go to. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you. God, I can't wait until uh, January 1st, 2025. Jimmy's going to be like, guys, I finished all the inks to Dragon Rage. <laughs> <laughs> the colors. <laughs> now I'm be like, I'm, I'm halfway through, guys. I'm halfway through. <laughs> right. Bedtime. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. my parents. Good night, Mike. We get Good Mike for Good night, Mike. Good night, guys. Good night. What time did you go on, Ethan? I don't know, like 8 o'clock or so. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, just, uh, so there we go. Just goofing off here. I wasn't, I wasn't was sure if anybody would actually Awesome, awesome, awesome. Much, frankly, Check it out. Like, it's New Year's Pretty Day, cool. You know? And I don't know to me, like, you know, horrible on and on uh, mm-hmm. about stupid things like uh, if you're naked at the rapture, people have better things to do, yeah. you know, than to listen to this nonsense. I thought they had better things to do last night, but they didn't. Like, nobody had anything better to do than to hang out with us last night. That's Super cool, good. man. That, that's fun. Yeah. Hey, hey, that's awesome. Alright, so let me change the camera here. Can Y'all can see what I've got. Uh, when the rapture comes, and it will come. Uh, look at. Well, let's see. Nope. Not like that. Right? I think that's pretty good. Can I wear my pants? Well, we're gonna go up to the top there so you can see those two. All right, enough. This is silly. I thought we were going to be talking about art. God, oh God, yeah. Okay, so. What's so disturbing about it? Like, all the male torso. I gotta go uh, stretch my legs for a minute. I'll be right back.
All right, these are cool as fuck. That's the way to do it. Okay, where is this one? This is at 
Look at these pirate flags. I've wanted to make a pirate flag since I was eight years old. Here we are. Is facing similar problems after he hasn't had much work in comics for the last decade. Ah, that's so cool. Uh, to be clear, if you're a comics gate supporter helping I'll retweet your positive reviews of my work, yeah, man. And you're probably not the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction just because you're a right wing, a right wing website says so. If it upsets you uh, that you were kind about my work and that I reacted to this, maybe contemplate why that might be. Alright, fuck Sean McKeever. You know, um. Fuck this dude. I don't care. Uh, having worked on all ages properties like Spider. I'm going to try to sync up the video and the audio. I don't know quite how to do that, so let's hold on to that. I don't know how to advance the video that's in the browser overlay on OBS. The more I learn about OBS, the cooler I think it is. Um, and also, the more I think I need to spend a, maybe a weekend with it and really figure out how to use it properly. It seems very sophisticated, which is... Um, it seemed it was very simple to start using but it seems very powerful like there's a whole lot I can do with it but to get started with it I think I spent about an hour maybe maybe two or three hours just going through uh, some tutorials on YouTube and how to make it and um, you know it, it seems like I can do a whole lot with it Max isn't the only person with problems, however, Sean McKeever, who used to be a rival, my work, yeah, nah. So I think we're probably not roughly synced up. Now, what I don't know how to do is get the audio on my separate monitor exactly synced with the browser box on OBS, but I'll figure that out. Plus, there's a slight delay. Fuck this dude. I don't care. Having worked on all ages properties like Spider-Man, Lost Mary Jane, Gravity, and so on, Sean McKeever looked like he had more talent than almost anyone in the industry. I've got a pirate flag. I almost have three. All of a sudden, I'm going to have three pirate flags. That's pretty bad. Then I guess it's time to build a sloop, huh? As much as Sean McKeever liked the virtue signal, he had four pounders. Wearing masks in his profile picture during the fake COVID 19 crisis. JDA swivels. And we're good to go. Right, Scout? We're going to pirate. Dare to dream. <laughs> you gotta persevere. You gotta believe. You will, Ralph. It is important. Are you scratching my chair? What does thee wish? What does thee wish? You you have to be able Just to take care of yourself. Wish for yeah, neck scratches. You can't depend on well, why? Yeah, well, they, they, cause they think it's they, they can't crap okay. books. They can't yeah. publish their own books. They don't have. They, well, they, 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 they don't have. But they don't have to limit themselves to doing comics. I get it if that's what they love. But at the same time, you're a writer. You know, look at like, you know, Chuck Dixon created. Yeah. How many I novels? think I would yeah, have. Yeah, you know. I think I should make a good little live stream great. just with this I, I crazy kitten. And you know, nobody wants to watch like me so, but stuff like that. the it's kitten like, is way more interesting. Go out. Or, I should say. And start writing. You know, a novel and try and pitch that and sell that or crowdfund that. It doesn't have to be, you know, oh, no, writing comics you know, independently, then I gotta team up with the artist Scott? and then the blah, blah. So, you're a writer. Mm -hmm. I think some of the most responsible of the 
artist as well. I mean, most of us, you know, we're not business minded, so I'd imagine a lot of the more. You're yeah, pressing my chair. Artists, what does he wish? Like, no, I mean, I know when you get in that situation, I mean, I know we, we, might know, how to, we know how to, you know, what to, does he wish? To find a solution. Please for do not. So it's people, maybe. Please, no, no, no. Yeah, I, I know what you're doing. I can see you tensing up, ready to pounce busy. on the pirate Every flag. Don't do it. Years, my wife Resist it with the temptation. Her college roommates. We Resist the urge. Here, one year we go up there. So I heard him on the Earl Flynn and, you know, like, sliding you know, down the sail so with a knife. Party, and I think Johnny Depp has done that in accordance with the movie, too. You are not Captain Blood. You're Captain Sparks, the kitten. Captain Kitten. These guys like engineers, you know, um... I think one guy's a welder, another guy has a uh, plumbing and heating thing, you know, company. It's so alien to them that if you're not, if you're at a job and it's not working, you know, that you will no, stick at that no, job no, no, and no, then make no, no, money. Because I'm telling about these people that do that. In my you are putting authentic like pirate terrors in it. And like, I'm sure pirates had kittens <laughs> roaming aboard to catch rats and, like and mice. Like, Don't do it. It's, it's amazing when I think about like how yes. us and Ethan like, when we first started that we're like the grown ups in comics now. That's so weird. Okay. And it's like holy shit. Oh. Uh, Maybe that's why some of these people don't come across funny because they know it's, it's a whole lot of work. Are you doing? A lot of work, yeah. Yeah, are you doing? nobody works harder yeah. than this guy. something cool. Yeah, yeah. And then when people retaliate, 
I don't know. I, I'm not interested in all this political talk. What I, what I want is, and I appreciate them talking about it, but what I really like is their discussion about how they make art, how they approach storytelling, and how they, and I'm really trying to learn this year. I'm trying to improve my ability to tell a story in a single picture. Like this painting, this painting on my, uh, on the screen now, which y'all can't see, it's the one with the boats. Let me fix that. What I'm really interested in is doing more of this, like that. The groundbreaking massive work that literally changed the face of comics and launched the bad oh, world so revolution. The camera the browser. This premium format is 112 page hardcover edition featuring the never before published original artwork of the book that started it all. How do I tell I this kind of story? Like to the to me I can I can look at it and have looked at pictures like this for hours and it tells a whole story. With every single original art page, pencil and that's what I want. With my paintings, and I, I feel like my paintings are, I paint landscapes, or I paint portraits, and they're, there's some of that, but I feel like there's, a, there's something bigger and broader I can do, and tell a bigger story. I want, a, I want that, I want that Captain Nancy's story in a, in a painting, how do I do that? This, this guy goes out and he steals a canoe, they, Use that and they raid a, a tavern and they steal a sloop and then they go pirating and he comes to a bad end eventually. Uh, it's not really much of a spoiler, it's 300 years ago he died. But, man, I want to, how do I tell that whole, is it possible to tell that whole story in one picture or do I need maybe two or three pictures for it? I mean, I suppose I could, like, maybe... If we go to the, the end point where, where he gets killed at the very uh, end, uh, they're, uh, they're, uh, at the, the, uh, they're offshore on an island west of Jamaica. Uh, but you would have maybe the ship they had captured along the way. Maybe their flag is tattered. You know, it's not a new pirate flag. It's got evidence of the battles they've been in. The decks have been stained but scrubbed. And, you know, the men are battle-weary. They're looking hungry. They've they got their, they, they have the treasure, but they're, and they're ready to, uh, to take the money and run and, and break up the crew. And disperse. So how do I, how do I draw that? How do I make that picture tell that whole adventure in one painting? Is it possible? I don't think so. But I could tell. Well, maybe it is. Maybe I could have that part of it anyway. Uh, it's a short chapter. How do I? I, I kind of want to just illustrate the, the, the whole thing. I don't know. I don't know how to do that. I need to think that through. Maybe you know what? I think after I'm done with these, I think maybe I just make some start making some drawings, some quick paint sketches, and, uh, and see see. What it starts developing. Like, maybe just maybe illustrate the main events of the story. I appreciate the the fact that you've got some nice ink and colored pages here. It'd be great if they were lettered. For some reason, they're not. I don't know. Maybe if you could find a letter. I'm working on it. You know how hard it is to find a good letter. It's like the color of the kids are firstly. But it'd be good. It'd be good to have like.
All of the special add-ons and the discount I think if I add-ons will be gone. So I've already if you would like written, Cyberfrog, I've already broken that down into a kind of a script. I need to shipping rate. I need to break that down into I mean it is seems. It's just it really is on the I'm gonna try it. I want to illustrate um, that chapter. I'm going to do Just break it down into scenes. What do you see in this one or in that one or the other? I have two pages. I think if I just take the major events of that chapter, sketch them, paint them, and they can be painted. They should be painted loose. I love, I mean, I love this kind of painting. But I really, really love, uh, I mean, the, the iconic one is uh, 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 Wyatt's Treasure Island illustrations, right? I mean, there's, are there any better? Maybe. Well, I don't think so. They're on the glow, they've got that golden hour light, and the, just the beauty of it. So how do I, uh, how do I develop those? And how do I do them? quickly enough to like, tell a story with vibrance. Like, I don't want it to be a carefully, slowly drawn thing, because it, it was a short, violent pirate career. They, were, they weren't at it very really long. You know, it was, what did it take, three days to get around the, uh, the east end of Jamaica up to, the, to where the tavern was, and they stole the sloop, and then they, like, those, those events, they steal the canoe, and they canoe around, and they hit the, the tavern, and they go back at night, and they, Rob them blind, and they, that night they steal in, they sleep, they, 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 they come here out and steal the sleep. And then they take the sugar broker off of Hispaniola, and then they grab Hispaniola, and they go over to the Uri Gazabas. Gazabas. How do you do, how do you do these events and show it? What, what, what do those pictures look like? Santa after the rapture? I mean, it should be quick and wild. They weren't out there for they weren't out there for years. This was a short, short, short career. I gotta figure out how to tell that story quickly. Like in the style of a painting should be early when I when I first started painting I was able to do that. And then I started getting really careful and cautious. But I think if I I just think we should be dashed off. But the action, maybe maybe a background, you know, you know I, I can paint pretty clouds and backgrounds and stuff, but maybe the, the foreground stuff should be violent. Violent drawings and daily drawings. This is a rough trade. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to try that, I think. But, you know, that's what I should do, is prepare some panels. I should get a, uh, get a set of panels and just start illustrating. So anyway, just start sketching it out and see what you can build. I'm going to try it. Uh, you know, but first, after tonight, I have a flag to make, so I think what I want to do now is I'm going to be able to get it by the way, all my bones, and I've got all my, so we have my pages now bones cut. My templates are cut and ready. So I need to now prepare the prepare all the bones, which is a bunch of ironing. It's not exciting to watch, but but I'll uh, uh, get those all prepared and then get them all placed and pinned. And then it's just then it's just a matter of stitching them down. And every one that I complete, that's a completed flag. The flags are almost there, so. Yeah, pin them and uh, yeah. so I want to iron them, Jesus. pin them, uh, iron them, so, uh, and uh, yeah, then they're ready to stitch books. down. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so and then tomorrow I can paint them, tomorrow. which is the, oh, that's going to be so much fun. Oh, the, also, the painting on them is so cool. Billy, I've been working really hard now that I've got the most fulfillment done. I need a surface against which I can paint these, though. Is it sufficient to say tape? If I take up this queen and my girl and paper <laughs> on the wall, maybe that uh, maybe that provides a surface against which I can paint so they don't. Uh, let's switch over to that picture. I want to look at the uh, the original. If I uh, have a, a non-porous surface, because I want to paint this in the preview, 
on a painted back on these when they're done I mean, there is quite a bit of difference. It's kind of thinly painted, so I think I take ivory black and uh, thin it with turpentine. A couple drops of Japan dry up. And paint it. And that gives you all that definition. But I don't want it soaking through. I don't want it to. Uh, I don't want it to hit the other side of the skulls. I mean, they, they should be, they're going to be close, but I don't want it really bleeding through too much. So I don't want it too thin. Uh, how do I do this? Maybe a little lead white. Colorful grizzly bears. It can be a little less thin. I still get the gray, but it's not not as thin. I, I don't think these are painted, right? Like the as the white isn't painted. Let's, let me zoom in. What we got here? Right? I mean, that's right next to him has one of the barrels of Sadam, and he's crying. Man, that's that's so thin. It's not watercolor, obviously. Uh, watercolor would have would have bleached out or would have washed out in the seawater. This is uh, it's almost you know it's almost ink. No, it's just warm and but look how look how thinly and quickly. That's one, two strokes, another. You know, there's one. Oh, by rights, I should paint the. Uh, it's interesting the lighting on this, right? So you have the light on this one coming from upper right, but here the light. Oh shit! You know what that says? That tells me they painted it before they. I think they did all the bones, and then they sewed them on. Didn't they? Yeah, it, it almost looks like that. They painted it and then put it on. That's my guess. That, uh, the lizard, by the way, that's what, you know, just well, maybe. No, maybe not. I mean, conceivably, you could have the light coming from here, going this way, and lighting these up. Maybe, yeah. Uh, and I do think that these were probably painted before. Just the continuity of this brush stroke looks to me like it was painted before it was, the top one was stitched down. I'm not doing it that way. I'm going. I'm sewing them all, and then I'm going to paint them all at once. Manipulative, hypersensitive grizzly bear. Again, as I said in the previous stream, I'm not doing them museum quality, stitch by stitch reproduction of these. I'm, I'm doing fun pirate things in, in the spirit of, in my spirit of piracy. But, um, I'm using these. At, this as a, uh, a starting point. But I think, like, let's go to the black one just because it looks cool. And this is uh, their estimation you of, of what it probably looked like when it was new. Um, yeah, kind of mine are a bit more faded, but you should make threadbare, like kind of look like art, like if art's eyebrows. I'm or going to go. <laughs> huh. <laughs> think this so through. anyway, this is your nice. Uh, this is your preview of uh, Rainbow the Brute. Uh, you can back it. I it is now currently we're... two years late. I recognize. This. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the paint on this is so pale. I want it to thin down. Yeah, and I don't want it to just bleed through. I now, it is symmetrical. Like one, I, I they're they're almost mirror images of one really another. Hard on, uh, on, uh, this uh, side. He said he's got one more yeah, it's more mirrored on the other side. The color. And then he's going to add well. a couple more pages of dark harvest to color, and then he's going to move so. on to a rainbow of fruit. So, once again, imagine these bears in day glow colors. You know, I like think. Really silly looking and really I think if I stitch them, maybe I'll mask the uh, I'll mask the cross bones as I need to to get a continue. That's all you got to do. Just mask the cross bones as you do a continuous stroke. They probably didn't have masking tape back then. I'm positive they didn't. Um, my guess is they painted them. They painted the uh, the cross bones individually uh, before they applied them to the, to the flag. But I'm going to do them this way. Um, but it's going to be cool, cool, cool. So, let's get these stitched on, man. 
they're going to be cool. So, first things first, I need to get my iron hot. Let's uh, adjust this. So, there we go. So, let me get my ironing board set up, my iron hot, and I'm going to make bones. Yeah. 
Science Night. Oh my god. Yeah, absolutely. DC celebrates Black History Month with stunning variant covers by Nicholas right. Draper. I, um, I mean, stunning. You know, never heard of him. I, I don't know who he is, and honestly. That's good, though. That, that's some good stuff there. Straight really, out. Yeah. I like, I like that art. Sorry, who? Yeah, I do. Well, Billy, the color is it's small. I see it's small, but I, you know. Yeah, I'd have to see him bigger. They're not doing anything for me, though. The one thing they are so boring. I think what I want to do this is put Well, the Flash got a lot of that. That Flash got a lot of uh, problems. And this is a bad thing to force them before. Yeah. I think this one calls for So we're going to switch, switch over. I've been listening to uh, <laughs> comic artist Kings. Standing there. Uh, Wonder Woman's big booty. And uh, great show, but... I think it is time to switch to some 18th century, early 18th century, the 1720s, piracy. So let's go there and we'll get into the spirit of the thing as we're coming down the home stretch here. <clears throat> so I'm looking for the LibriVox recording of a general history of the pirates, which is whatever its authenticity whatever its authorship, I think a great book about the pirates. So, a and here we go. Maybe. We'll see if this loads. I hope it loads. I hope it works. When your hotel room is your bedroom. No, 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 no. I don't need that voice. That is not a pleasant voice. I'd rather be throwing over a pirate ship than listen to that anymore. More ads. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? Okay. And now let's try for form. Do we have any? It may take a while for this to buffer. Oh, you know, I think what I had to do is load this into my new phone because it has all the, uh, the doodads, and this version does not. So I may have to lose the... Oh, that's why I have the chat on here. So I'm going to turn on the YouTube chat on the screen so I can see if anybody who views this wants to drop in and chat. Do you have any comments, questions, historical stuff to talk about? We can do that. This has to go away because... There's no point. And here we go. So let's load that up. A general history of the pirates. I think I am going to record a an audio version of that book. It's my favorite book about 18th century piracy. And I think I could do a good job of it. We're going to find out anyway, right? Uh, where are we? I want search. A general history of the pyramids. No, I didn't say the pyramids. I said the pirates of the Pirates. This is GHR. T H E. How about that? There's the one. All right. Let's see if this loads, and we'll play, and then we can uh, have something good to listen to. Aha! After she was aground, here we go. Let's have some piracy. I think Blackbeard was just killed when we left off the other night. Was five hours. The pirates made a whiff in their bloody flag and beckoned several times with their hats in derision to the colonel's men. Derision! To come on board, which they answered with cheerful huzzas and said that they would cheerful speak with them by and by. Huzzah! Which accordingly happened for the colonel's sloop being first afloat. He got into deeper water and after mending the sloop's rigging, 
which was much shattered in the engagement, they stood for the pirate to give the finishing stroke and designed to go directly on board him, which he prevented by sending a flag of truce. And after some time capitulating, they surrendered themselves prisoners. The colonel took possession of the This is not a flag of truce. To find that Captain Thomas, this who is commanded her, flag was the adventure. individual person of Major Steed Bonnet, who had done them the honor several times to visit their own coast of Carolina. They were killed in this action on board the Henry, 10 men and 14 wounded. Mm. On board the Sea Nymph, two killed and four wounded. The officers and sailors of both sloops behaved themselves with the greatest bravery, and had not the sloops so unluckily run aground, Hold the bone. they had taken the pirate Iron. with much less Action. loss of men. But the as he designed sets. to get by them, Iron. and so make a running Finding fight, the Carolina lines. sloops were obliged to keep near him all to prevent his getting and away. As you finish each set, of the pirates, there were seven killed and five fly. wounded, two of which died soon after their wounds. from here out. It's all the Colonel cool Red away the 30th of September from Cape Fear River, and arrived at Charlestown the 3rd of October to the great joy of the whole province of Carolina. Bonnet and his crew, two days after, were put ashore, and there not being a public prison, the pirates were kept at the watch house under a guard of militia. But Major Bonnet was committed into the custody of the marshal at his house, and in a few days after, David Harriet, the master, and Ignatius Pell, the bosun, who were designed for evidence against the other pirates, were removed from the rest of the crew to the said marshal's house. And every Recording by Mike Harris. The General History of the Pirates, Volume 1, by Charles Johnson. Chapter 4, Part 2. Chapter 4, Part Bonnet 2. Bonnet stood to the northward. Steve Bonnet, man. Vessel, but one of the necessaries and the weather being bad, he was forced they, back. In this, they blame so his wife. With his well, he blames unhappiness in the situation. Supplies. But there being some yeah. information sent to the governor, all his friends and family said, hey, he just kind of went crazy. He's a rich Bonnet. planter. And according goes out and he says, I want to go a pirating. He has a sloop. With he gets a sloop, which is went away that very expensive for Sullivan's Island. Island. Fits out a crew. A very diligent search, fits out the ship and the sloop at his expense. And then goes a pirate. The men fired upon them and killed Harriet upon the spot. He's a man of action. And wounded one Negro and an Indian. Bonnet submitted and surrendered himself, and the next morning, being November the 6th, was brought by Colonel Rett to Charlestown, and by the governor's warrant, was committed into safe custody, in order for his being brought to his trial. Uh-oh. On the 28th of October, 1718, a court of vice admiralty was held at Charlestown in South Carolina, and by several adjournments, continued to Wednesday the 12th of November following, for the trial oh. of the pirates taken in a sloop formerly called the Revenge. But afterwards, you know what? the Royal can I James, do, before can I Nicholas show Trotter, an image of the background of OBS rather than this? And Chief Justice Let's of the said province Let's of South out. Carolina uh, and other assistant judges. Source. The King's Commission I don't want to color sloop, that's just a flat color. Can I have just an image? The finding of the several bills Display and a learned charge image. Given them How about that? Said judge wherein he Great first showed image. that okay. And the then I want, God for the use what's the name of, of this image file? This is Black Phil E&G. Well 
Let's try that. Secondly, he particularly Rouse. remarked to them the sovereignty of the King of England over the British seas. Thirdly, he observed that as commerce and navigation could not be carried on without laws, so there bitches. had been always particular right, laws for the better ordering and regulating marine affairs Black with an historical TV. account okay. of these laws. Oh, look at that. And origin. Oh, unload image when not showing. Fourthly, he proceeded to yeah, show that there have been particular courts and judges appointed really that much. There we to go. whose jurisdiction yeah, maritime so. causes to belong. And that in matters both civil and criminal. Now, let's. Uh, and then, fifthly, he particularly showed the constitution and jurisdiction of that court of admiralty sessions. Oh, we don't want that. And lastly, the crimes uh, let's put this underneath therein, these things. and particularly enlarged upon the crime oh, of no, piracy, the which was then brought above before. Above display capture. The indictments and now being I want found, to go. The petite jury was sworn, and the following image, persons arraigned and wider. tried. Steed Bonnet, That's odd. alias Edwards, alias Thomas, um, late of Barbados, Mariner. Transform. Robert Tucker, late of the screen. island of Jamaica, that? There Mariner. we go. It's not quite right, Edward but Robinson, he gives the general idea. Time, so we have Mariner. chat. I've got... Neil Patterson, late of Aberdeen, Put away the Mariner. browser. William we Scott, need. late of Aberdeen, Mariner. And there we are. William Eddy, alias so Eddy, late of Aberdeen, it works. Mariner. Ha ha! Alexander Annan, late of Jamaica, cool. Mariner. George Rose, late of Glasgow, Oof. Mariner. Right, George Duncan, late of Glasgow, Mariner. Thomas Nicholas, late of London, Mariner. John Ridge, late of London, Mariner. Matthew King, late of Jamaica, Mariner. Daniel Perry, late of Guernsey, Mariner. Henry Virgin, late of Bristol, Mariner. James Rod. and received a sentence of death. Oh, no. They were most of them tried upon two indictments as follows. The jurors for our sovereign lord the king do upon their oath present that Steed Bonnet, late of Barbados, Mariner, Robert Tucker, etc., the second day of August and the fifth year of the reign of our sovereign lord George, etc., by force of arms upon the high sea in a certain place called Cape James, etc., did piratically and feloniously set upon, break, board, and enter a certain merchant sloop called the Francis, Peter Van oh, Waring commander, by force, etc., upon the high sea in a certain place called Cape James, alias Cape Inloop, about two miles distant from the shore in the latitude of 39 or thereabouts, huh. and within the jurisdiction of the Court of Vice and Admiralty of it, South was Carolina. This before the discovery of the method for determining the law to the unknown, and then and there piratically and feloniously did make an assault in and upon the said Peter Manwaring and others, his mariners, whose names to the jurors aforesaid are unknown. I knew a man wearing in the same sloop against the peace of God, and of our said hmm. now sovereign lord the king, then and there being piratically and feloniously Piratically and feloniously and others, his mariners of the same sloop in the I don't ever want said, that charge then being against in corporal fear of their lives, then and there in the sloop aforesaid, upon the high sea in the place aforesaid. That's because nowadays you took a uh, sloop out Cape in Lopen, piratically and about two miles from the shore in the morning in 39 or thereabouts as vessel, aforesaid. The United and States the Navy or Coast Guard would rip you up with uh, no, 12,000 bullets and carry away the said merchant sloop called the Francis. 
and also 26 hogsheads, etc., 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 being found in the aforesaid the weaponry today the is not conducive to permitting piracy in and others. His mariners Those days are gone. Sense, and from their custody and possession, then and there upon the high sea aforesaid, called Cape James, alias Cape Inlopen, as aforesaid, and within the jurisdiction aforesaid against the peace of our now sovereign lord the king, his crown and dignity. This was the form of the indictments they were arraigned upon, and though they might have proved several more facts upon the major part of the crew, the court thought fit to prosecute but two. The other was for seizing in a piratical and felonious manner the sloop Fortune, Thomas Reed commander, which indictment running in the There's same form of the above mentioned it There's would be also unnecessary to say more of it. How do I know the name of the royal prisoners arraigned, pleaded not guilty, and put themselves upon their trials except James Wilson and John Hubbard, who pleaded guilty to both indictments and Daniel Perry to one only. At the moment, I'm just goofing around thinking about piracy. The indictments at once, which the court not and, admitting uh, he pretty soon we're going to blast indictments. through but getting all the bones of ready. One, he retracted his pinning them and the second them indictment and pleaded and guilty to all it. Complete the prisoners made yeah. little or no defense, everyone pretending only that they were taken off a maroon shore and were shipped with Major oh, no, I was to St. Thomas's. And but being I didn't want to be a pirate. Provisions, they were obliged to do what they did by others. And so did Major Bonnet himself pretend that it was force, not inclination, that occasioned what had happened. Aha. However, the facts being plainly proved and that they had all shared 10 or 11 pounds a man, excepting the three oh. last... And Thomas Nichols, Don't take the money. They were all, but they found guilty. The judge made a very Ten or eleven pounds and you're hanging for it. Don't the do it. The condition they were now Don't in and the nature it. and necessity of an unsigned repentance. And then recommended them to the ministers of the province for more ample directions to fit them for eternity. For, concluded he, the priest's lips shall keep knowledge, and you <laughs> shall <laughs> seek the law at their mouths. For oh, they no. are the messengers of the Lord, Matthew 2, 57, and the ambassadors of Christ, and unto them is committed the word or doctrine of reconciliation, 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 19 and 20, and then pronounced sentence of death upon them. Oh, dang! On Saturday, November 8, 1711, Robert Tucker, Edward Robinson, Neil Patterson, William Scott, John Bailey, John William Smith, John Thomas, William Morrison, Samuel Booth, William Hewitt, William Eddy, alias Neddy, Alexander Anand, George Ross, George Duncan, Matthew King, Daniel Perry, Henry Virgin, James Robbins, James Mullet, alias Millet, Thomas Price, John Lopez, and Zachariah Long to the were executed at the Mary White Point near Charlestown pursuant to their sentence. Whew. As for the rough. captain, his escape protracted his fate and spun out his life a few days longer. He was right. tried on the 10th and, being found guilty, received a sentence in like manner as the former, before Death. which Judge Trott made a most Death. excellent speech to Death. him, rather somewhat too long to be taken into our history. Yet I could not tell how to pass by so good and useful a piece of instruction, not knowing whose hands this book may happen to fall into. The Lord Chief Justice's speech upon his pronouncing sentence on Major Steed Bonnet. Major Steed Bonnet, you stand here convicted upon two indictments of piracy, one by the verdict of the jury and the other by your own confession. Uh -oh. Although you were indicted but for two facts, yet you know that at your trial it was fully proved, even by an unwilling witness, that you piratically took and rifled at no less than 13 vessels. 13 vessels? Carolina. So that you might have been indicted Carolina. And of 11 more acts of piracy since you took the benefit of the King's Act of Grace and pretended to leave that wicked course of life. Ah, oh, you should have taken the grace when you had the chance. many acts of piracy you committed before, for which if your pardon from man was never so authentic, yet you must expect to answer for them before God. You know that the crimes you have committed are evil in themselves and contrary to the light and law of nature, as well as the law of God by which you are commanded that you shall not steal. Exodus 20, 15, and the Apostle St. Paul expressly affirms that thieves shall not inherit the kingdom of God, 1 Corinthians 6, 10. But to theft you have added a greater sin, which is murder. How many you may have killed of those that resisted you in the committing of your former piracies, I know not. 
But this we all know, that besides the wounded, you killed no less than 18 persons out of those that were sent by lawful authority to suppress you. Dude, that's too many people to kill. Don't kill them. Take their stuff. Acted. Take the money and, and run, bro. you may fancy that that was killing men fairly in open fight, yet this no that the power of the sword not being committed into your hands by any lawful authority. You were not empowered to use any force or fight anyone. And therefore, those persons that fell in that action and doing their duty to their king and country were murdered. Is that a mermaid? And their blood it looks like a mermaid. for vengeance and justice against you. Water ball point. Welcome. Nature confirmed by the Lord we're about to get started here. I just completed the... Uh, blood. By man shall the last stitching shed. on the main Genesis bones, and now nine. we're going for the secondary Chapter ones, six. and, uh, and we're going to carry on with our, punishment due to it's not quite piracy, but it's for good. they are threatened to have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is that the second serious. death. Alright, let's hit it. 21, 8, see chapter 22, Time to 15. stitch. Words which carry that terror with them, that considering your circumstance and your guilt, Surely the sound of them must make you tremble. For who can dwell with everlasting burnings? Chapter 33. How could you listen 13. to this and not tremble with everlasting burnings? As the testimony of your conscience must convince we you of the great and many evils you have committed, here. by which you have adjusted. highly offended God and provoked most justly his All wrath right, and fire. indignation against you. So I suppose I need not tell you that the only way of obtaining pardon and remission of your sins from God is by a true and unfeigned repentance and faith in Christ, by whose meritorious death and passion you can only hope for salvation. You being a gentleman that have had the advantage of a liberal education, and being generally esteemed a man of letters, I believe it will be needless for me to explain to you the nature of repentance and faith in Christ, they being so fully and so often mentioned in the scriptures that you cannot but know them. And therefore, perhaps for that reason, it might be thought by some improper for me to have said so much to you, as I have already upon this occasion. Neither should I have done it, but that considering the course of your life and actions, I have just reason to fear that the principles of religion that have been instilled into you by your education have been at least corrupted, if not entirely defaced, by the skepticism and infidelity of this wicked age. And that what time you allowed for study was rather applied to the polite literature and the vain philosophy what of the time a than a serious search after the law and will of God, as revealed unto us in the Holy Scriptures. For had your delight been in the law of the Lord, and that you had meditated therein day and night, Psalms 1 and 2, you would then have found that God's word was a lamp unto your feet and a light to your path. So right, we're switching to the cop hat because why not? That you would account all other knowledge but loss in comparison of the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Phil 3.8 Who to them that are called is the power of God and the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 1.24 Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the word. Chapter 2 verse 7 you would then have esteemed the scriptures as the great charter of heaven, and which delivered to us not only the most perfect laws and rules of life, but also discovered to us the acts of pardon from God, wherein they have offended those righteous laws. For in them only is to be found the great mystery of a fallen man's redemption, which the angels desire to look into. 1 Pet 1.2 And they would have taught you that sin is the debasing of human nature as being a derivation from that purity, rectitude, and holiness in which God created us, and that virtue and religion and walking by the laws of God were altogether preferable to the ways of sin and Satan, for that the ways of virtue are ways of pleasantness and all their paths are peace. Proverbs 3.17 but what you could not learn from God's word by reason of your carelessly or but superficially considering the same. I hope the course of his providence and the present afflictions that he hath laid upon you hath now convinced you of the same. A rope around thy neck, however, you your seeming prosperity you might make a mock sure. at your sins. Proverbs 3.17 Yet now that you see that God's hand hath reached you and brought you to public justice, 
I hope your present unhappy circumstances have made you seriously reflect upon your past actions and course of life, and that you are now sensible of the greatness of your sins, and that you find the burden of them intolerable, and that therefore being thus laboring and heavy laden with sin, Matthew 11, 28, you will esteem that as the most valuable knowledge that can show you how you can be reconciled to that supreme God that you have so highly offended, and that can reveal to you him who is not only the powerful advocate but the Father for you, 1 John 2, 1, but also who hath paid that debt that is due for your sins by his own death upon the cross for you, and thereby made full satisfaction for the justice of God. And this is to be found nowhere but in God's word, which discovers to us that Lamb of God which takes away the sins of the world, John 1, 29, which is Christ the Son of God. For this know and be assured that there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Acts 4, 12, but only by the name of the Lord Jesus. But then consider how he invites all sinners to come unto him, and that he will give them rest, Matthew 11, 28. For he assures us that he came to seek and to save that which was this lost. Luke 19, 10, Matthew 18, Many 11. Many people only have the Bible to and read. And hath promised have read to that he that cometh unto him, but it was, he so will in no wise cast out. John 6, 37. So that if now you will sincerely turn relate. to him, though late, even at the eleventh hour, Matthew 26, 9, he will receive you. But surely I need not tell you that the terms of his mercy is faith and repentance. And do not mistake the nature of repentance to be only a bare sorrow for your sins, arising from the consideration of the evil and punishment that have now been brought upon you. But your sorrow must arise from the consideration of your having offended a gracious and merciful God. But I shall not pretend to give you any particular directions as to the nature of repentance. I consider that I speak to a person whose so offenses have proceeded not so much from his not point. knowing as his slighting and neglecting his duty. Neither is it proper for me to give advice out of the way of my own profession. You may have that better delivered to you by those who have made divinity their particular study and who by their knowledge as well as their office as being the ambassadors of Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.20, are best qualified to give you instructions therein. I only heartily wish that what in compassion to your soul I have now said to you upon this sad and solemn occasion, oh, by exhorting you in general to faith and repentance, may have that due effect upon you, that thereby you may become a true penitent. And therefore, having now discharged my duty to you as a Christian, what to give you the best counsel I can behind. with respect to the salvation of your soul, I must oh. now do my office as a judge. The sentence that the law hath appointed to pass upon you for your offenses, and which this court doth hereby award, is that you, the said stayed bonnet, shall go from hence to the place from whence you came, and from thence to the place of execution, where you shall be hanged by the neck till you are dead. Oh, no! And the God of infinite mercy be merciful to your soul. Oh, End of God. chapter 4, part 2. Recording by Mike Harris. It is a terrible fate. Chapter 5, Part 1 of The General History of the Pirates, Volume 1. How could that sentence This is a LibriVox recording. Not inspired All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Richard Kilgore. Okay, Kilmer. we have one done. The General History of the Pirates, Volume 1, to, uh, by the other one over it. I'm going to do it exactly five, the same, put in a mirror one. image of it. Captain How are we Edward doing England. here? Waterball point. I think the algorithm led me to this from Edward Pirates of the Caribbean Online. Of I've never played Pirates of the Caribbean Jamaica Online. Um, and was taken I did Captain play uh, Pirates of the Burning Sea. Just before their settlement um, province, Pirates of the Caribbean Online, I, I missed that one somehow, but... Uh, the same uh, Pirates of the Caribbean the Online. I've I've watched videos of people playing that, but I haven't played it myself. In a course of life that so much debases human nature Is that good? And sets them upon a level with the wild beasts and of the by you saying that you live and prey upon their weaker 
you are playing it, so they still have active servers and people are still playing. Includes almost all others as murder, rape, theft, ingratitude. I'm glad the algorithm's out here. I hope I can make this entertaining and informative. They make these vices familiar to them by their daily practice. Yet these men are so inconsistent with themselves that a reflection made upon their honor, their justice, or their courage is looked upon as an offense that ought to be punished with the life of him that commits it. England was one of these men who seemed to have such a share of reason as she was talking about things. So here, he had a great deal of um, I hope you can see this. What I'm working on now is this. He was not avaricious. And so we're going to have the, uh, the second set of bones. Received. He would have been we'll find out in a moment whether it works. Hunger. And less I'm pretty sure it's what it works. works. I've done the other. His companions have been brought to the same temper. But he was generally overruled. So that, and as he was engaged in that abominable society, he was obliged to be a partner in all their vile actions. Captain England sailed to the coast of Africa after the island of Providence was settled by the English government and the pirates surrendered to his majesty's proclamation and took several ships and vessels, particularly the Cadogan Snow belonging to Bristol at Sierra Leone, one Skinner master who was inhumanely murdered by some of the crew that had lately been his own men and served in that said vessel. It seems some quarrel had happened between them, so that Skinner thought fit to remove these fellows on board of a man of war, and at the same time refuse them their wages. Not long afterwards, they found means to desert that service, and shipping themselves aboard a sloop in the West Indies, was taken by a pirate, and brought to Providence, and sailed upon the same account, along okay. with Captain England. As soon as Skinner had struck to the pirate, he was ordered to come on board in his boat, which he did, and the person that he first cast his eye upon proved to be his old bolson, who stared him in the face like this evil genius and accosted him in this manner. Ah, Captain Skinner, is it you? The only man I wish to see. I am much in your debt, and now I shall pay you all in your own coin. The poor man trembled every joint when he found into what company he had fallen, and dreaded the event, as he had reason enough to do so. For the boatswain immediately called to his consorts, laid hold of the captain, made him fast to the windlass, and there pelted him with glass bottles, which cut him in a sad manner, after which they whipped him about the deck, till they were weary, being deaf to all his prayers and entreaties. And at last, because he had been such a good master to his men, they said he should have an easy death, so they shot him through the head. They took some few things out of the snow, but gave the vessel and all their cargo to Howell Davis, the mate, and the rest of the crew, as will be hereafter mentioned in the chapter of Captain Davis. Captain England took a ship called the Pearl, Captain Tizer, commander, for which he exchanged his own sloop, fitted her up for the piratical mm. account, and new christened her the Royal James, with which he took several ships and vessels of different nations at the Azores and Cape de Verde Islands. In the spring of 1719, the rovers returned to Africa and, beginning at the River Gambia, sailed all down the coast and between oh, that, that and there Cape are, Corso, uh... took the following ships and vessels. Hmm. The Eagle Pink, Captain Ricketts, commander, belonging to Cork, oh, taken the 25th of March, having six guns and 17 men on board, seven of which turned pirates. The Charlotte, right. Captain Olson of London, taken May the 26th, having eight guns and 18 men on board, 13 of which turned pirates. The Sarah, Captain Stunt of London, taken the 27th of May, having four guns and 18 men on board, three of which turned pirates. The Bentworth, Captain Gardner of Bristol, taken the 27th of May, having 12 guns and 30 men on board, 12 of which turned pirates. The Buck Sloop, Captain Sylvester of Gambia, That's a good name taken too. the 27th Buck. of May, having two guns and two men on board, both turned pirates. The Carteret, Captain Snow of London, 
taken the 28th of May, having four guns and 18 men on board, five of which turned pirates. The Mercury, Captain Maggot of London, taken the 29th of May, having four guns and 18 men on board, five of which turned pirates. The Coward Galley, Captain Creed of London, taken the 17th of June, having two guns and 13 men on board, four of which turned pirates. The Elizabeth and Catherine, Captain Bridge of Barbados, taken June the 27th, having six guns and 14 men on board, four of which turned pirates. The Eagle Pink being bound to Jamaica, the Sarah to Virginia, and the Buck to Maryland. They let them go, but the Charlotte, the Batman, the Cataract, and the Coward Galley, they burnt, and the Mercury and the Elizabeth and Catherine were fitted up for pirate ships. The former was new named Queen Anne's Revenge, and commanded by one lane, and the other was called the Flying King, of which Robert Sample was appointed captain. These two left England upon the coast, sailed to the West Indies, where they took some prizes, cleaned and sailed to Brazil in November. They took several Portuguese ships there, and did a great deal of mischief. But in the height of their undertakings, a Portuguese man of war, which was an excellent sailor, became a very unwelcome guest to them, and gave them chase. The Queen Anne's revenge got off, but was lost a little while after upon that coast, and the Flying King, giving herself over for loss, ran ashore. There were 70 men on board, 12 of which were killed, and the rest had taken prisoners, of whom the Portuguese hanged 38, of which 32 were English, 3 Dutch, 2 French, and 1 of their own nation. England, in going down the coast, took the Peterborough galley of Bristol, Captain Owen, and the Victory, Captain Rideout. The former they detained, but plundered the latter and okay. let her go. We now have Corso Road, they saw two sails at anchor, but before they could reach them, they slipped the their cables flag. and got close under Cape Corso Castle. These were the Wida, Captain Prince, and the John, Captain Ritter. The pirates upon this made a fire ship of a vessel they had lately taken, and attempted to burn them, as though they had been go. a common enemy, which in effect, the they could not have been the one farthing the better for it. But the castle firing warmly upon them, they withdrew and sailed down to Wider Road, where they found another pirate, one Captain Labouche, who, getting thither before England arrived, had forestalled the market and greatly disappointed their brethren. Captain England, after this book, went into a harbor, cleaned his own ship, and fitted up the Peterborough, which he called the Victory. They lived there very wantonly for several weeks, making free with the Negro women, and committing such outrageous acts that they came to an open rupture with the natives, several of whom they killed, and one of their town they set on fire. When pirates came out to sea, they put it to a vote what voyage to take, and the majority carried it for the East Indies. They shaped their course accordingly and arrived at Madagascar at the beginning of the year 1720. They stayed not long there, but after taking in water and provisions, sailed for the coast of Malabar, which is a fine, fruitful country in the East Indies, in the empire of the Mogul, but immediately subject to its own princes. It reaches from the coast of Canara to Cape Cameroon, which is between 7 degrees 30 and 12 degrees north latitude, in about 75 degrees east longitude, counting from the meridian of London. The old natives are pagans, but there is a great number of Mohammedans inhabiting among them, who are merchants and generally rich. On the same coast, but in a province to the northwest, lies Goa, Surat, Bombay, where the English, Dutch, and Portuguese have settlements. Hither our pirates came, having made a tour of half the globe, as the psalmists say of the devils, going about like roaring lions and seeking whom they might devour. They took several country ships, that is, Indian vessels, and one European, a Dutch ship, which they exchanged for one of their own, and then came back to Madagascar.
They sent several of their hands on shore with tents, powder, and shot to kill hogs, venison, and such other fresh provisions as the island afforded. And women came into their heads to seek out for the remains of Avery's crew, who they knew to be settled somewhere in the island. Accordingly, some of them traveled several days' journey without hearing any intelligence of them, and so were forced to return with the loss of their labor. For these men were settled on the other side of the island, and has been taken notice of under the chapter of Avery. They stayed not long here, after they had cleaned their ships, but sailing to Duana, they met two English and one Austin Indian men, coming out of that harbor, one of which, after a desperate resistance, they took, the particulars of which action is at length related in the following letter, wrote by the captain from Bombay. A letter from Captain Matra, dated at Bombay, November 16, 1720. We arrived the 25th of last July in company of the Greenwich at Juana, an island not far from Madagascar, and putting in there to refresh our men, we found 14 pirates that came in their canoes from the Mayota, where the pirate ship to which they belong these, the Indian Queen, 250 tons, 28 guns, and 90 men, men that went Captain Oliver de la Bush, bound from the Guinea coast to the East Indies, had been boogled and lost. They said they left the captain and 40 of their men building a new vessel to proceed on their wicked design. Captain so there's something to that. So if you're a stranded service and to the East India Company, what do you do? Destroy well, such a let's build a ship. We're ready to sail for that purpose the 17th of August, about 8 o'clock in the morning, when we discovered two ship. ships ships okay. standing into the bay of Tawana, one of 34 and the other of 30 guns. I immediately went on board the Greenwich, where they seemed very diligent in preparations for an engagement, and I left Captain Kirby with mutual promise of standing by each other. I then unmoored and got under sail, and brought two boats ahead to row me close to the Greenwich. But he, being open to a valley and a breeze, made the best of his way from me, which an Ostender in our company of 22 guns seen did the same, though the captain had promised heartily to engage with us, and I believe would have been as good as his word if Captain Kirby had kept his. About a half an hour after 12, I called several times to the Greenwich to bear down to our assistance and fired shot at him, but to no purpose. For though we did not doubt but he would join us, because when he got about a league from us, he brought his ship to and looked on. Yet both he and the Ostender basely deserted us and left us engaged with barbarous and inhumane enemies with their black and bloody flags hanging the over us. The black and bloody flag. Oh, the bloody flag. I'm guessing that's the, uh, the red is the flag of no war. Determined otherwise. Right? For not that's just the, uh, the red flag. We engaged oh, here's the, the black flag and the bloody flag would be the red. During which the biggest received some shot between the wind and water, which made her keep the off right. to stop her leaks. The other endeavored all she could to board us, by rowing with her oars, being within half a ship's length of us above an hour. But by good fortune, we shot all her oars to pieces, which prevented them, and by consequence, saved our lives. About four o'clock, most of the officers and men posted on the quarter deck, being killed and wounded. The largest ship, making up to us with all diligence, being still within a cable's length of us, often giving us a broadside, and no hopes of Captain Kirby's coming to our assistance, we endeavored to run ashore. And though we drew four foot water more than the pirate, it pleased God that he struck fast on a higher ground than we happily fell in with, so was disappointed a second time from boarding us. Here we had a more violent engagement than before. All my officers and most of my men behaved with unexpected courage. And as we had a considerable advantage by having a broadside to his bow, we did him great damage. So that had Captain Kirby come in then, I believe we should have taken both, for we had one of them sure. But the other pirate, who was still firing at us, seeing the Greenwich did not offer to assist us, 
He supplied his consort with three boatfuls of fresh men. About five in the evening, the Greenwich slipped clear away to sea, leaving us struggling hard for life in the very jaws of death, which the other pirate that was afloat, seeing, got a warp out and was hauling under our stern. By which time, many of my men being killed and wounded, and no hopes left from being all murdered by enraged barbarous conquerors, I ordered all that could to get into the longboat under the cover of the smoke of our guns, so that with what some did in boats and others by swimming, most of us that were able got ashore by seven o'clock. When the pirates came aboard, they cut three of our wounded men to pieces. I, with a few of my people, made what haste I could to the Kingstown, 25 miles from us, where I arrived next day almost dead with fatigue and loss of blood, having been sorely wounded in the head by a musket ball. At this town, I heard that the pirates had offered $10,000 to the country people to bring me in, which many of them would have accepted. Only they knew the king and all his chief people were in my interest. Meantime, I caused a report to be spread that I was dead of my wounds, which much abated their fury. About ten days after, being pretty well recovered, and hoping the malice of our enemies was nigh over, I began to consider the dismal condition we were reduced to. Being in a place where we had no hopes of getting a passage home, all of us in a manner naked, not having had time to get another shirt or a pair of shoes. Desperation obtained leave seems to have been the way of being and a promise of safety. Several of the so chief of them knew me, it's ready. and some of them had sailed with me, the, which uh, I found of great one. advantage, because notwithstanding their promise, some of them would have cut me, and all that would not enter with them to pieces, had it not been for the chief captain, Edward England, and some others I knew. They talked of burning one of their ships, which we had so entirely disabled, as to be no further useful to them, and to lift the Cassandra in her room.
Oh, God, why is the volume the off? For by his the volume ought to have been on. If they would deliver him possession over the bar, well, we'll have to solve that. I'm not good at this yet. I hope I shall improve. I don't need that. Whiplash. Hmm. What is this nonsense? I don't understand any of that. The internet confuses me. Again. Well, uh, water ball point. I'm sorry I missed your chat. I think I had the volume on the microphone muted and I wasn't able to for you to hear my response. I responded and I think due to my incompetence or noobness, oh, you didn't hear what I said. Let's see here. That looks like a bot. Join my free content. Yep. And yep, definitely. So Herbert Lucas, let's see, 427, I don't know, hmm, interesting, let's find out. And following 427 followers. I don't know. I don't know. There's no way to tell. I am suspicious of that one, but I cannot say for certain. All right. What we need is more pirates. So let's carry on with piracy. Preface of the general history of the pirates. No. Oh my God, why are we going back to the beginning? This is a LibriVox recording. Where All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to what volunteer, please, if anything, we're wanting to... Why did it do that? So that had Captain Kirby come in then, I believe we should have taken both. For we had... Well, I missed part of the story. The other now, pirate, but it was still fire. That's the best us. we can do. Seeing the Greenwich did not offer to assist us, he supplied his consort with three boatfuls of fresh men. About five in the evening, the Greenwich stood clear away to sea, leaving us struggling hard for life in the very jaws of death, which the other pirate that was afloat, seeing, got a warp out and was hauling under our stern. All right. By which time many of my men well, being killed a bar flag, flag, and no hopes left from all being way on the last night enraged barbarous conquerors, I ordered all I could to, the to get the exact one boat under the cover of the smoke of our guns. Do that. So that with Pin one some dead in boats all and flags, others by swimming, and then stitch most of us that were able to stitch the shore until the time is now. It's three it's only three thirty now. We'll make a good time. They cut three of the wounded men to pieces. I, with a few of my I intend to finish these, so we to the have King's three, town, 25 miles from us, where I three vessels fitted with black dead with fatigue and loss of blood, having been sorely wounded in the head by a musket ball. At this town, I heard that the pirates had offered ten thousand dollars to the country people to bring me in, which many of them would have accepted. Only that's David, what you have. The king and all his chief people carry them all were in for my interest. Meantime, I caused a report to be spread that I was dead of my wounds, which much abated their fury. About ten days after, being pretty well recovered, and hoping the malice of our enemies so, yeah, to to I began to smash. consider the dismal condition. When they are just smashed, then we be in a place off. where we had no hopes of getting a passage home. All of us in a manner naked, not having had time to get another shirt or a pair of shoes. Having obtained leave to go on board the pirates and a promise of safety, several of the chief of them knew me, and
and some of them had sailed with me, which I found of great advantage, because notwithstanding their promise, some of them would have cut me, and all that would not enter with them to pieces, had it not been for the chief captain, Edward England, and some others I knew. They talked of burning one of their ships, which we had so entirely disabled, as to be no further useful to them, and to lift the Cassandra in her room. But in the end, I managed my tack so well that they made me a present of the said shattered ship, which was Dutch built, called the Fancy, about 300 tons, and also 129 bales of the company's cloth, though they would not give me a rag of my clothes. They sailed the 3rd of September, and with jury masts and such old sails as they left me, I made shift to do the like on the 8th, together with 43 of my ship's crew, including two passengers and 12 soldiers, having but five tons of water aboard, and after a passage of 48 days, I arrived here, October 26, almost naked and starving, having been reduced to a pint of water a day, and almost in despair of ever seeing land, by reason of the calms we met with between the coast of Arabia and Malabar. We had in all 13 men killed and 24 wounded, and were told that we had destroyed about 90 or 100 of the pirates. When they left us, they were about 300 whites and 80 blacks in both ships. I am persuaded, had our confort the Greenwich done his duty, we had destroyed both of them, and got 200,000 pounds for our owners and selves, whereas to his deserting us, the loss of the Cassandra may justly be imputed. I have delivered all the bales that were given to me into the company's warehouse, for which the governor and council have ordered me a reward. Our governor, Mr. Boone, who is extremely kind and civil to me, has ordered me home with his packet. But Captain Harvey, who had a prior promise being come in with the fleet, goes in my room. The governor has promised me a country voyage to help make me up my losses, and would have me stay to go home with him next year. Captain Macra certainly run a great hazard in going aboard the pirate, and began quickly to repent his credulity. For though they had promised that no injury should be done to his person, he found their words were not to be trusted, and it may be supposed that nothing but the desperate circumstances Captain Macra imagined himself to be in could have prevailed upon him to fling himself and company into their hands, perhaps not knowing how firmly the natives in the island were attached to the English nation. For about twenty years ago, Captain Cornwall, commodore of an English squadron, assisted them against another island called Mohila for which they have ever since communicated all the grateful offices in their power, insomuch that it became a proper Oof. that an Englishman and a Jewish right. man all Where are we? Well, yeah, we only have the favor the two concurrent man, viewers. But he was so free to let him know we need more viewers. That his interest was How do I get more viewers? Them, and that the pirates were so know. provoked at the resistance he had made against them that he was afraid he should hardly be able to protect him. He therefore advised him to suit up. I had nine views, so I've had nine people to show up. Taylor, a fellow of a most part two watching now. Who was become a great favorite amongst hmm. them. For no other reason get? than because he was a greater brute than the rest. Macra did what he could to soften this beast and plied him with warm punch, notwithstanding which they were in a time whether they should make an end to him or no. When an accident happened, which turned to the favor of the poor captain, a fellow with a terrible pair of whiskers and a wooden leg being struck around with pistols like the man in an almanac with darts comes swearing and vaporing about uh, the, the quarter deck. The almanac with darts, is that the, uh, banner, the flag with the darts? The a Bahamian's head, a Martin no head? Than that this fellow would that be Robert? his executioner. But when he came near him, he took him by the hand was this swearing, damn him, he was glad to see him. And show me the man, says he, that offers to hurt Captain Macra, for I'll stand by him. And so with many oaths, he told him, he was an honest fellow, and they had formerly sailed with him. 
This put an end to the dispute, and Captain Taylor was so mellowed with the punch that he consented that the old pirate ship and so many bales of cloth should be given to Captain Macra. And so he fell asleep. England advised Captain Macra water. to get Captain on the old expedition. Water. At least when the beast should awake, he might repent his generosity, which advice was followed by the captain. Captain England, having sided so much to Captain Macra's interest, was a means of making him many enemies among the crew. They think of such good usage inconsistent with their polity, because it looked like procuring favor at the aggravation of their crimes. Therefore, upon imagination or a report that Captain Macra was fitting out against them with the company's force, he was soon abdicated or pulled out of his government and marooned with three more on the island of Mauritius, an island indeed not to be complained of. Had they accumulated any wealth by their villainies that would have afforded some future comfortable prospect, for it abounds with fish, deer, hogs, and other flesh. Sir Thomas Herbert says, the shores with coral and ambergris, but I believe the Dutch had not deserted it had there been much of these commodities to have been found. It was in 1722, resettled by the French, who have a fort at another neighboring island called Don Mascarene, and are touched at for water, wood, and refreshments by French ships bound to or for India, as St. Helena and Cape Bon Esperance are by us and the Dutch. From this place, Captain England and his companions, having made a little boat of staves and old pieces of deal left there, went over to Madagascar, where they subsist at present on the charity of some of their brethren, who had made better provisions for themselves than they had done. The pirates detained some officers and men belonging to Captain Macra, and having repaired the damages received in their rigging, they sailed for India. The day before they made land, saw two ships to the eastward, who at first sight they took to be English, and ordered one of the prisoners who had been an officer with Captain Macra to tell them the private signals between the company's ships. The captain swearing he would cut him in pound pieces if he did not do it immediately, but unable was forced to bear their scrutiny till they came up with them and found they were two more ships from Muscat with horses. They brought the captain of them and the merchants on board, torturing them and rifling the ships in order to discover riches, as believing they came from Mocha. But be involved in their expectation, and next morning seeing land, and at the same time a fleet in shore plying to windward, they were puzzled how to dispose of them. To let them go was to discover and ruin the voyage. And it was cruel to sink the men and horses with the ships. As ah, I have heard this. To. So we are back. Or as a medium, they brought them yeah. to anchor. Close, but not quite as far along as I thought it was. Let's go here. Honey, rice, or in short, cotton, indigo, or any other there thing. There we go. They will take a little closer to, to where we were. And have understood the two watching. Welcome aboard. They have likewise ebony, a hardwood like Brazil, of which they make their lances, and gum of several sorts, beds of dragon blood, aloes, etc. What is most incommodious are the numerous swarms of locusts on the land, and crocodiles or alligators in their rivers. Hither, in St. Augustine's Bay, the ships sometimes touch for water when they take the inner passage for India, and do not design to stop at Joanna. And we may observe from the sixth general voyage set forth by the East India Company, in confirmation of what is hereafter said in relation to currents in general, that this inner passage or channel has its northern and southern currents strongest where the channel is narrowest and is less and varies on different points of the compass as the sea comes to spread again in the passage across the line. Since the discovery of this island by the Portuguese, A.D. 1506, the Europeans and particularly pirates have increased a dark mulatto race they are, though, still few in comparison with the natives, or Negroes with curled short hair, active and formerly represented malicious and revengeful, now tractable and communicable, 
perhaps owing to the favors and generosity and clothing and liquors they from time to time have received from these fellows who live in all possible friendship and can any single man of them command the guard of two or three hundred at a minute's warning. Okay. This is farther the native's One. interest to cultivate okay. with them, because the island being divided into petty governments and commands, the pirates settled here, who are now a considerable number and have little castles of their own, tend to preponderate wherever they think fit to a side. When Taylor came with the Portuguese prize here, they found the Ostender had played their men a trick. <sighs> For they took advantage of their drink, rise upon them, and, as they heard afterwards, carried the ship to Mozambique, whence the governor ordered her for Goa. Here the pirates came, cleaned the Cassandra, and divided their plunder, sharing forty-two small diamonds a man, or in less proportion according to their magnitude, an ignorant or a merry fellow who had only one in this division as being judged equal in value to forty-two small, muttered very much of the lot and went and broke it in a mortar, swearing afterwards he had a better share than any of them, for he had beat it, he said, into forty-three sparks. Those who were not for running the hazard of their necks with forty-two diamonds, besides other treasure in their pockets, knocked off and stayed with their old acquaintance in Madagascar, on mutual agreements, the longer livers to take all. The residue having, therefore, no occasion for two ships, the victory being leaky, she was burnt. The men, as many as would, coming into the Cassandra under the command of Taylor, whom we must leave for a time, projecting either for Cochin to dispose of their diamonds among their old friends, the Dutch, or else for the Red or China Seas, to avoid the men of war that continually clamored in their ears the noise of danger, and give the little account we are able of that squadron arrived in India early in the year 1721. At Cape Good Hope in June, the Commodore met with a letter which was left for him by the governor of Madras, to whom it was wrote by the governor of Pondicherry, a French factory on the Coromandel coast, signifying the pirates at the writing of it, were then strong in the Indian seas, having eleven sail and fifteen hundred men, but that many of them went away about that time for the coast of Brazil and Guinea. Others have settled and fortified themselves at Madagascar, Mauritius, Joanna, and Manila, and that others under Condon in a ship called the Dragon took a large Moors vessel coming from Iuda and Moko with 13 lackeys of rupees on board, i.e. a million three hundred thousand half crowns, who having divided the plunder burnt their ship in prize and sat down quietly with their other friends at Madagascar. The account contains several other things which we have before related. Commodore Matthews, upon receiving this intelligence and being fond of the service he came out for, hastened to those islands as the most hopeful places of success. At St. Mary's would have engaged England with promises of favor if he would communicate what he knew concerning the Cassandra and the rest of the pirates and assist in the pilotage. But Captain England was wary and thought this was to surrender at discretion. So they took up the Judah ship's guns that was burnt, and the men of war dispersed themselves on several voyages and cruises afterwards, as was thought likeliest to succeed, though to no purpose. Then the squadron went down to Bombay, were saluted by the fort, and came home. The pirates, I mean those of the Cassandra, and now Captain Taylor, fitted the Portuguese men of war and resolved upon another voyage to the Indies, notwithstanding the riches they had heaped up. But as they were preparing to sail, they heard of four men of war coming after them to those seas. Therefore they altered their minds, sailed for the main of Africa, and put in at a little place called Delagoa, near the river de Spiritu Santo, on the coast of Manamantapa, in 268 south latitude. They believed this to be a place of security, in regard that the squadron could not possibly get intelligence of them there being no correspondence over land nor in trade carried on by sea between that and the Cape, where the men of war were then supposed to be. The pirates came to in the evening and were surprised with a few shots on shore, not knowing of any fortification or European settlement in that part of the world. So they anchored at a distance that night and, receiving in the morning a small fort of six guns, they ran up to it and battered it down. This fort was built and settled by the Dutch East India Company a few months before, for what purpose I know not, and having left 150 men upon the place, they were then dwindled into a third part by sickness and casualties, and never after received any relief or necessaries, so that 16 of those that were left upon their humble petition were admitted on board the pirates, and all the rest would have had the same favor, they said, had they been any other than Dutch.
mentioned this as an instance of their ingratitude, who had been so much obliged to their countrymen for support. Here they stayed about four months, covering both their ships and took their diversions with security, till they had expended all their provisions and then went to sea, leaving considerable quantities of Muslim yes. ships and such goods behind to the half-starved Dutchmen, which enabled them to make a good any worths to the next that came, to whom they bartered for provisions at the rate of three farthings an English yard. They left Delagoa the latter end of December 1722, but not a great where or how to proceed they concluded to part. So those who were continuing that sort of life went on board the Portuguese prize. Hail fellow well met, we're making pirate flags. With a year they are now settled. And the rest took the Cassandra and sailed for the Spanish West Indies. The mermaid master <coughs> happening then to be down on the main of the convoy about thirty leagues from these pirates, would have gone and attacked them, but on a consultation of the masters, whose safety he was particular in due regard, they agreed their own protection was of more service than destroying the pirate, and so the commander was unwillingly withheld. He dispatched a sloop to Jamaica with the news which brought down the Lanceston only a day or two too late. They having just before he came surrendered with all their riches to the governor of Fort Bella. Here they sat down to spend the fruits of their dishonest industry, dividing the spoil and plunder of the fruits of their dishonest industry. Without the least remorse or compunction, satisfying their conscience with this salvo, that other people would have done as much had they the like opportunities. I can't say, but that if they had known what was doing in England at the same time by the South Sea directors, and their directors, they would certainly have had this reflection for their consolation, is that whatever robberies they had committed, they might be pretty sure they were not the greatest villains that lived in the world. Have to let this, uh, heat up it's a time. difficult matter to make a computation of the mischief that was done by this in about five years' time, which is much more than the plunder they Welcome gave. aboard. For they often sunk or make sure the sound is on. Time. It is As good. It their Glad you're here. Circumstances. Sometimes make it a pirate flag. We're about to finish these three. Because they did not leave men to I have. And at other times, one of the phrase. Or because they were I'm doing the final crossed bones, and soon we all shall have was but to give the, word and the pirate with flags. The ships and cargoes to the bottom of the sea. So I'm doing, of course, them on both I sides, so I have to uh, have have left iron left them around the template. Now matching them together. And and soon I'll pin them the and sit them across the, uh, the flags. And passed for shipwrecked men came to Jamaica. And How'd you find the streams? And I know one of them who came to me in the spring from that island. Tis said that Captain Taylor has taken a commission in the Spanish service and commanded the man of war that lately attacked the English logwood cutters in the Bay of Honduras. End of chapter 5, part 2. Chapter 5. What I'm after is Chapter 8. Captain Anstis, I think. Let's see if we can find it. Chapter 6 of the General History of the Pirates, Volume 1. Well, I like her voice. We'll stick with this, this one for now. LibriVox recording. All LibriVox this LibriVox program is a great idea. Information. Volunteers, volunteer, read please visit LibriVox. texts out of copyright that are ancient and recorded by Suzanne Hout. I don't know what else. They've done what other books, but the general history this is of the one of the greatest books in English ever Johnson. printed. Chapter six of Captain Charles Vane. Maybe the only friend. one, one of the only ones worth reading. Charles Vane was one of those who stole uh, Charles the Vane, silver, which was of course, Spaniards we have to know him. Of the galleons in the Gulf of Florida, and was a providence, as has been before hinted, when Governor Rogers arrived there with two men of war. All the pirates who were found in this colony of rogues submitted and received certificates of their pardon, except Captain Vane and his crew, who, as soon as they saw the men of war enter, slipped their cable, set fire to a prize they had in the harbor, and sailed out with their piratical colors flying, firing at one of the men of war as they went off. Two days after they went out, they met with a sloop belonging to Barbados, which they made prize of, and kept the vessel for their own use putting aboard five and twenty hands, with one Yates to command them. A day or two afterwards, they fell in with a small interloping trader with a quantity of Spanish pieces of eight aboard, bound into Providence, called the John and Elizabeth, 
which they also took along with them. With these two sloops, they went to a small island and cleaned, where they shared their booty. That spent some time in a riotous manner of living, as is the custom of pirates. The custom the latter of pirates. May 1718, they sailed, and being <clears throat> wanted provisions, they beat up Dost the have the ability to the Spanish type into chat and say hello? Havana, which they burnt and stowed the Spaniards in a boat and left them to get to the island by a light of vessel. But steering between St. Christopher's and Anguilla, they fell in with a brigantine and a sloop with the cargo they wanted, from whom they got provisions for sea store. Sometime after this, standing to the northward in the track of the old England ships taken their voyage to the American colonies, they took several ships and vessels which they plundered of what they thought fit and let them pass. The latter end of August, Vane, with his consort Yates, came off South Carolina and took a ship belonging to Ipswich, one Cockershaw commander, laden with logwood, which was thought convenient logwood to is a, uh, and therefore very expensive commodity in the 18th the century. Board. It was used, the, the bark can be used for dyeing, the wood itself the is good, but, and then they would not but the her. bark uh, provided so a beautiful purple dye. Again, he was suffered to pursue his voyage Purples, home. blacks, like really, uh, cruise, really good dye for, uh, for fabric and vessels, and cloth. At the time, I think uh, cloth is wool and fabric is linen and cotton and stuff like that. So it was very valuable. They would send men down to uh, Honduras and wherever else it grew, and they would, uh, they would cut wood and ship it back to, uh, back to Europe. Good pirates and great rogues. First opportunity to leave the company and accept of his majesty's pardon or set up for themselves, either of which they thought more honorable than to be servants to the former. And the putting aboard so many Negroes where they found so few hands to take care of them still aggravated the matter, though they thought fit to conceal or stifle their resentments at that time. A day or two afterwards, the pirates lying off at flags Yates on their way to slipped his cable his vessel under sail, standing into the shore, which when Vane saw, he was highly provoked, and got his sloop under sail to chase his consort, who he plainly perceived had a mind to have no further affairs with him. Now oh, he's trying to run off. Vane's brigantine sailing best, he gained ground of Yates, and would certainly have come up with him had now, he what's a brigantine? Is, that, is a brigantine a brig? But just as he got over the bar, when Vane came I with a shell of him, he fired a broadside at his old friend, which did him no damage. Well, that's not friendly. And so took his leave. Yates came to the Northwest River about ten leagues south road to Charlestown and sent an express to the government. So Charleston, South Carolina seems to be a hotbed of pirates all through the seventeen twenties. To his mercy with the sloops and negroes, which being granted, they all came up and received so much trouble off of Charleston. And Thompson, from whom the negroes were taken, had them restored to him for the use of his owners. They cruised some time off the bar in hopes to catch Yates at his coming. Charlestown Bar. Maybe. However, he unfortunately for them took two ships from Charlestown bound home to England. Yep. It huh. happened that just at this time, two sloops well manned and armed were equipped to go after a pirate, which the governor of South Carolina was informed ah, that brave he enterprise. came for a cleaning. But Colonel Red, who commanded the sloops, meeting with one of the ships that Vane had plundered going back over the bar for such necessaries as had been taken from her, All right. and so. she gave now is the final operation of matching up the bones. So I'm going to uh, about a minute and a half match the pairs of bones. So I have the sets to do both of these. I have three flags. They're going to get the cross bones, and these are the final cross bones. And then the flags are complete. It's a momentous day. Colonel Red speaking with this ship was the most unlucky thing that could have happened. Because it turned him out of Don't the room, do it. which in all probability Don't speak with them. brought him into the company of Vane. Oh no, As stay away from Vane. Went after. He's a bad so man. He been both Let's go. Whereas by the Colonel's cool. going a different way, he not only lost Lies. the opportunity of meeting with one, but if the other had not been infected, 
infatuated to lie six weeks we together in Cape Fear, he would have missed of him likewise. However, the colonel having searched the rivers and inlets as directed for several days without success, at length failed in prosecution of his first design, and met with the pirate accordingly, who he fought and took, as has been the before spoken of in the history of Major Bonnet. Captain Vane went into the inlet to the northward, where he met with Captain Thatcher, the chief engineer, who was called Blackbeard, whom he saluted when he found who he was, with his great guns loaded with shot, as is the custom among pirates when they meet, which are fired wide or up into the air. Blackbeard answered the salute in the same manner, and mutual civilities passed for some days. When about the beginning of October, Vane took the heat and sailed further to the northward. On the 23rd of October, off of Long Island, he took a small brigantine bound from Jamaica to Salem in New England, John oh, Shattuck, that. master, and a little sloop. There they there. rifled the brigantine and sent her away. From hence, they resolved on a cruise between Cape Mace and Cape Nicholas, where they spent some time without seeing or speaking with any vessel, till the latter end of November. Then they fell upon the ship, which t'was expected would have struck as soon as their black colors were hoisted. But the black colors, that's what I'm thinking. Voice and colors which showed her to be a French man of war. Let's make some black and colors. Let's go a pirate. further to say to her, but trimmed his sails and stood away from the French man. But Monsieur, having a mind to be better informed who he was, set all his sails and crowded after him. During this chase, the pirates were divided in their resolutions what to do. Vane, the captain, was for making off as fast as he could, alleging the well, man who was too strong to go with. Give me something but one John Bracco was an officer that had a kind of a check upon the captain, rose up in defense of a contrary opinion, Ow. saying that though she had more guns is hot. and a greater weight of metal, they might board her, and then the best boys would carry the day. Rackham was well seconded, and the majority was for boarding, but they hot, urged hot, that hot. it was too rash and desperate an enterprise, the men of war appearing to be twice their force, oh, that. and that their brigantine might be sunk by her before they could reach on board. The mate, one Robert Deal, was of Vane's opinion, no. as were about fifteen more, and all the rest joined with Rackham, the quartermaster. No. No. At length, the captain I made use of his power to determine this dispute, which in this case is absolute and uncontrollable, by their own laws, being be fighting, chasing, or being chased. In all okay. other matters whatsoever, Next. he is governed by a majority. So the brigantine having the heels, as they term it, of the French man, she came clear off. But the next day the captain's behavior was obliged to stand the test of a vote. And a resolution passed against his honor and dignity, branding him with the name of coward, deposing him from the command, that is not and turning him out of the company with marks of infamy. And with him went all those who had not voted for boarding the French man of war. They had with them a small sloop that had been taken by them some time before, which they gave to Vane and the discarded members and that they might be in a condition to provide for themselves by their own honest endeavors, they let them have a sufficient quantity of provisions and ammunition along with them. John Rackham was voted captain of the brigantine in vain. John Rackham! Rackham. And proceeded towards the Caribbean Islands, where we must leave him till we have finished our story of Charles Vane. The sloop sailed for the Bay of Honduras, and Vane and his crew put her into as good a condition as they could by the way to follow the old trade. They cruised two or three days off the northwest part of Jamaica, and took a sloop and two petty augas, and all the men entered with them. The sloop they kept, and Robert Deal went captain of her. On the 16th of December, the two sloops came into the bay, where they found only one at an anchor called the Pearl of Jamaica, Captain Charles Rowling, master, who got under sail at the sight of them, but the pirate sloops coming near rolling and showing no colors, he gave them a gun or two. Whereupon they hoisted the black flag and fired three guns each at the Pearl. She struck, and the pirates took possession and carried her away to a small island called Barnaco. And there they cleaned, meeting in the way with a sloop from Jamaica, Captain Walden Commander, going down to the bay, which they also made prize of. In February, Vane sailed from Barnaco in order for a cruise, but some days after he was out, a violent tornado overtook him, which separated him from his consort. And after two days' distress, threw his sloop upon a small, uninhabited island near the Bay of Honduras, where she was staved to pieces, and most of her men drowned. Vane himself was saved, but reduced to great straits for want of necessaries, having no opportunity to get anything from the wreck. He lived here some weeks, and was subsisted chiefly by fishermen who frequented the island with small craft from the main to catch turtles, etc. While Vane was upon this okay. island, a ship put in from Jamaica for That's water, it. the captain of which, one Holford, an old buccaneer, happened to be Vane's acquaintance. He thought 
this a good opportunity to get off, and accordingly applied to his old friend, but he absolutely refused him, saying to him, Charles, I shall not trust you aboard my ship unless I carry you a prisoner. For I shall have you cabaling with my men, knock me on the head, and run away with my ship a pirating. Vane made all the protestations of honor in the world to him, but it seems Captain Holford was too intimately acquainted with him to repose any confidence at all in his words or oaths. He told him he might easily find a way to get off if he had a mind to it. I am now going down the bay, says he, and shall return hither in about a month. And if I find you upon the island when I come back, I'll carry you to Jamaica and hang you. No, Which way can I get away, answers Vane. Are there not fishermen stories upon the beach? Can't you take one of them? replies Holford. What? says Fay. Would you have me steal a dory then? Do you make it a matter of conscience, said Holford, to steal a dory? When you have been a common robber and pirate stealing ships and cargoes and plundering all mankind that fell in your way? Stay there and be damned if you were so squeamish. And so left him. After Captain Holford's departure, another ship put into the same island in her way home for water, none of whose company knowing thing, he easily passed upon them for another man, and so was shipped for the voyage. One would be apt to think that Vane was now pretty safe, and likely to escape the fate which his crimes had merited, but here a cross accident happened that ruined all. Holford, returning from the bay, was met with by this ship, the captains being very well acquainted together. Holford was invited to dine aboard of him, which he did, and as he passed along to the cabin, he chanced to cast his eye down the hold, and there saw Charles Vane. Oh, I'd say something. He immediately spoke to the captain, saying, Speak up, captain. Do you know who you've got aboard here? Why, says he, I have shipped a man at such an island who has cast no away in a trading sloop. He seems well, to be brisk hand. I tell well, you, says Captain Holford, he is Vane, the notorious pirate. If it be him, replies the other, I won't keep it. Take the vessels. Why then, says Holford. There we go. I'll send and take him aboard and surrender him at Jamaica. Very sloppy. Which being Very agreed to, sloppy. Captain Holford, as soon as he returned to his ship, sent his boat with his mate armed, right. but coming to Vane, showed him a pistol and told him he was his prisoner. Which, not opposing, he was brought aboard and put in irons. And when Captain Holford arrived at Jamaica, he delivered his old acquaintance into the hands of justice. At which place he was tried, convicted, and executed. As was some time before, Vane's consort, Robert Deal, brought thither by one of the men of war. End of chapter six. I'm really excited about chapter eight, Captain Anstis, I think. Chapter seven, part one. I may be mistaken the about the history name, of the chapter pirates. eight, I think is the one. one I'm really looking forward to. This is a LibriVox recording. They steal a canoe. Box recordings are in the public domain. Tap for a sloop and go for more information or to volunteer. That's Please a good visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Suzanne Hoat. All right, let's. The general history of the pirates. So this by Charles Johnson. Do I want this? Chapter seven, part this one. Hot. Keep the cat away from it. There's a little. Chapter box. seven. Stay over there. Of Captain John Rackham and his crew. Now, this John Rackham, as Oof. has been mentioned in the last chapter, was quartermaster to Vane's company till they were divided, and Vane turned out for refusing to board and fight the French men of war. Then Rackham was voted captain of that division that remained in the brigantine. The 24th of November, 1718, was the first day of his command, and his first cruise was among the Caribbean Islands, where he took and plundered several vessels. The tape. We have already taken notice that when Captain Woods Rogers went to the island of Providence with the king's pardon to such as should surrender, this brigantine, which Rackham now commanded, made its escape through another passage, bidding defiance to mercy. To windward of Jamaica, a Madeira man fell into the pirate's way, which they detained two or three days till they had made their market out of her, and then gave her back to the master and permitted one Hosea Tisdall, a tavern keeper in Jamaica, who had been picked up in one of their prizes, to depart in her, she being then bound for that island. After this cruise, they went into a small island and cleaned, and spent their Christmas ashore, drinking and carousing as long as they had any liquor left, and then went to sea again for more, where they succeeded but too well. Though they took no extraordinary prize for above two months, except a ship laden with thieves from Newgate, bound from plantations which in a few days was retaken with all her cargo by an Englishman of war. Here we go. Rackham stood off toward the island of Bermuda, 
Edison and took a ship bound to England from Carolina, and a small pink from New England, and brought them to the Bahama Islands, where with the pitch tar and stores they cleaned again, and refitted their own vessel. But staying too long in that neighborhood, Captain Rogers, who was governor of Providence, hearing of these ships being taken, sent out a sloop well manned and armed, which retook both the prizes, and in the meanwhile the pirate had the good fortune to escape. From hence they sailed to the back of Cuba, where Rack kept a little kind of a family, at which place they stayed a considerable time, living ashore with their Delilahs till their money and provision were expended, and then they concluded a time to look out. They repaired to their vessel, and was making ready to put sea, when Aguarda del Costa came in, with a small English sloop, which she had taken as an interloper on the coast. The Spanish guard ship attacked the pirate, but Rack being close in behind a little island, she could do but little execution where she lay. Therefore the Spaniard warps into the channel that evening in order to make sure of her the next morning. Rackham, finding his case desperate, and hardly any possibility of escaping, resolved to attempt the following enterprise. The Spanish prize lying for better security close into the land, between the little island and the main. Rackham takes his crew into a boat with their pistols and cutlasses, rallies the little island falls aboard their prize silently in the dead of the night without being discovered, telling the Spaniards that were aboard of her that if they spoke a word or made the least noise, they were dead men, and so became master of her. When this was done, he slipped her cable and drove out to sea. The Spanish men of war were so intent upon their expected prize that they minded nothing else, and as soon as day broke, made a furious fire upon the empty sloop, but it was not long before they were rightly apprised of the matter and cursed themselves for fools to be bit out of good rich prize, as she proved to be, and to have nothing but an old crazy hull in the room. Well, we're going to do this by eye as the Rackham and his crew had no occasion to be displeased at the exchange that enabled them to continue some time longer in a way of life that suited their depraved tempers. In August 1720, we find him at sea again, scouring the harbors and inlands of the north and west parts of Jamaica, where he took several small craft, which proved no great booty to the rovers, but they had but few men, and therefore they were obliged to run at low game till they could increase their company. In the beginning of September, they took seven or eight fishing boats in Harbor Island, stole their nets and other tackle, and then went off the French part of Hispaniola, and landed and took cattle away with two or three Frenchmen they found near the waterside, hunting of wild hogs in the evening. The Frenchmen came on board, whether by consent or compulsion, I can't say. They afterwards plundered two sloops and returned to Jamaica, on the north coast of which island, near Puerto Maria Bay, they took a schooner, Thomas Spenlow Master. It was then the 19th of October. The next day, Rackham, seeing a sloop in Dry Harbor Bay, he stood in and fired a gun. The men all ran ashore and he took the sloop and lady, but when those ashore found them to be pirates, they hailed the sloop and let them know they were all willing to come aboard of them. Rackham's coasting the island in this manner proved fatal to him, for intelligence came to the governor of his expedition by a canoe which he had surprised ashore in Ocho Bay, upon which the sloop was immediately fitted out Here's the question. and sent round the island in now, that one goes commanded by Captain Barnett, with a good number of hands. Rackham, rounding the island and drawing near right? the westernmost point, yeah, called I think point that one goes that direction. saw a small penny over, over so. which inside the sloop run ashore and landed her men. When one of them hailed her, answer was made, they were Englishmen, and desired the Petty Augers men to come on board and drink a bowl of punch, which they were prevailed upon to do. Accordingly, the company came all aboard, the pirate, consisting of nine persons, in an ill hour. They were armed with muskets and cutlasses, but what was their real design by so doing I shall not take upon me to say. But they had no sooner laid down their arms and taken up their right. pipes, Is but Garnet's right? sloop, which was in pursuit of Rackham's, came in sight. I think that's right. The pirates, finding she stood directly towards her, feared the event, and weighed their anchor, which they but lately let go, and stood off. Captain Barnett gave them chase, and having the advantage of little breezes of wind, which blew off the land, came up with her, and after a very small dispute, took her, and brought her into Port Royal in Jamaica. In about a fortnight after the prisoners were brought ashore, viz. November 16, 1720, a court of admiralty was held at St. Yago de la Vega, before which the following persons were convicted. 
and sentence of death passed upon them by the President, Sir Nicholas Laws, via John Rackham, Captain, George Featherston, the Master, Richard Corner. At the moment, I'm just setting John the, uh, the crossbones on. Patrick Carney, and Thomas Earl, James Dolan, and Noah Harwood. The five first were executed the next day in Gallows Point at the town of Port Royal, and the rest the day after at Kingston. Rackham, Feverston, and Corner were afterwards taken down and hanged up in chains. One at Plum Point, one at Bush Key, and the other at Gun Key. But what was very surprising was the conviction of the nine men that came aboard the sloop the same day she was taken. They were tried at an adjournment to the court on the 24th of January. Waiting all that time, it is supposed, for evidence to prove the piratical intention of going aboard the said sloop. For it seems there was no act of piracy committed by them after their coming on board, as appeared by the witnesses against them, who were two Frenchmen taken by Rackham, all from the island of Hispaniola, and deposed in the following manner. That the prisoners at the bar, these John Eden, Edward Warner, Thomas Baker, Thomas Quick, John Cole, Benjamin Palmer, Walter Rouse, John Hansen, and John Howard, came aboard the pirate sloop at Negro Point, Rackham sending his canoe ashore for that purpose, that they brought guns and cutlasses on board with them, that when Captain Barnett chased them, some were drinking and others walking the deck, that there was a great gun and a small arm fired by the pirate sloop at Captain Barnett's sloop when he chased her, and that when Captain Barnett's sloop fired at Rackham's sloop, the prisoners at the bar went down under deck, that during the time Captain Barnett chased them, some of the prisoners at the bar, but which of them he could not tell, helped to row the sloop in order to escape from Barnet, but they all seemed to be consorted together. This was the substance of all that was evidenced against them. The prisoners answered in their defense that they had no witnesses, that they had bought a petty auger in order to go a turtling, and being at Negro Point and just got ashore, they saw a sloop with a white pennant coming towards them, upon which they took their arms and hid themselves in the bushes. That one of them hailed the sloop, who answered they were Englishmen, and desired them to come on board and drink a bowl of punch, which they at first refused, but afterwards, with much persuasion, they went on board in the sloop's canoe, and left their own petty auger at anchor. That they had been but a short time on board when Captain Barnett's sloop heaved in sight. That Rackham ordered them to help to weigh the sloop's anchor immediately, which they all refused that Rackham used violent means to oblige them, and that when Captain Barnett came up with them, they all readily and willingly submitted. When the prisoners were taken from the bar and the persons present being withdrawn, the court considered the prisoners' cases, and the majority of the commissioners being of opinion that they were all guilty of the piracy and felony they were charged with, which was the going over with a piratical and felonious intent to John Rackham, etc., then notorious pirates, and by them known to be so, they all received sentence of death, which, everybody must allow, proved somewhat unlucky to the poor fellows. On the 17th of February, John Eden, Thomas Quick, and Thomas Baker were executed at Gallows Point at Port Royal. And the next day, John Cole, John Howard, and Benjamin Palmer were executed at Kingston. Whether the other three were executed afterwards or not, I never heard. Two other pirates were tried that belonged to Rackham's crew, and being convicted were brought up and asked if either of them had anything to say why sentence of death should not pass upon them, in like manner as had been done to all the rest. Okay. And both of them cleaned their bellies, okay. being quick with child, and prayed that execution might be stayed, whereupon the court passed sentence as in cases of piracy, but ordered them back till a proper jury should be appointed to inquire into the matter. End of chapter 7, part 1. Chapter 7, part 2 of The General History of the Pirates, volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Suzanne Houghton. Hello, Suzanne Houghton. Thank you for your service. The General History of the Pirates, Volume 1 by Charles Johnson. Chapter 7, Part 2. The Life of Mary Reed. Ah, Mary Reed. Now we are to begin a history full of surprises.
surprising turns and adventures. I mean that of Mary Reed and Anne Bonny, alias Bond, which were the true names of these two pirates. The odd incidents of their rambling lives are such that some may be tempted to think the whole story no better than a novel or romance. But since it is supported by many thousand witnesses, I mean the people of Jamaica, who are present at their trials and heard the story of their lives upon the first discovery of their sex, the truth of it can be no more contested than that there were such men in the world as Roberts and Blackbeard who were pirates. Mary Reed was born in England. Her mother was married young to a man who used the sea, who, going a voyage soon after their marriage, left her with child, which child proved to be a boy. As to the husband, whether he was cast away or died in the voyage, Mary Reed could not tell, but, however, he never returned more. Nevertheless, the mother, who was young and airy, met with an accident, which has often happened to women who are young and do not take a great deal of care, which was she soon proved with child again, without a husband to father it. But how or by whom, none but herself would tell, for she carried a pretty good reputation among her neighbors. So here's one her to grow, In order to conceal her shame, she takes a formal leave of her husband's relations, giving out that she this went to where we're going. friends of her own in the country. Accordingly, she went away and carried with her her young son, at this time not a year old. Soon after her departure, her son died. But Providence in return was pleased to give her a girl in his room, of which she was safely delivered in her retreat. And this, this was not. our Mary Reed. And that Let's take this. Here the mother lived three or four years till what money she had was almost gone. Then she thought of returning to London, and considering that her husband's mother was in some circumstances, she did not doubt but to prevail upon her to provide for the child, if she could but pass it upon her for the same. But the changing a girl into a boy seemed a difficult piece of work, and how to deceive an experienced old woman at such a point was altogether as impossible. However, she ventured to dress it up as a boy, brought it to town, and presented it to her mother-in-law okay. as her husband's son. The old woman would have taken it to have bred it up, but the mother pretended it would break her heart to part with it. So it was agreed betwixt them that the child should live with the mother, and the Where supposed grandmother should allow a crown a week for its maintenance. Thus the mother gained her point. She bred up her daughter as a boy, and when she grew up to some sense, she thought proper to let her into the secret of her birth, to induce her to conceal her sex. It happened that the grandmother died, by which means the subsistence that came from that quarter ceased, and they were more and more reduced in their circumstances. Wherefore, she was obliged to put her daughter out to wait on a French lady as a footboy, being now thirteen years of age. Here she did not live long, for growing bold and strong, and having also a roving mind, she entered herself on board a man of war, where she served some time, then quitted it and went over into Flanders and carried arms in a regiment of foot as a cadet. And though upon all actions she behaved herself with a great deal of bravery, yet she could not get a commission, they being generally bought and sold. Therefore she quitted the service and took on a regiment of horse. That way. She behaved so well in several engagements that she got the esteem of all her officers. But her comrade, who was a Fleming, happening to be a handsome young fellow, she falls in love with him, and from that time grew a little more negligent in her duty, so that it seems Mars and Venus could not be served at the same time. Oh, her arms and instruments, which were always kept in the best order, were quite neglected. Tis true when her comrade was oh, ordered out upon a party, she used to go without being commanded, and frequently run herself into danger where she had no business, only to be near him. The rest of the troopers, little suspecting the secret cause which moved her to this behavior, fancied her to be mad. Yeah, right. And her comrade himself could not account for this strange alteration in her. But love is ingenious, and as they lay in the same tent and were constantly together, she found a way of letting him discover her sex without appearing that it was done with design. He was much surprised at what he found out and not a little pleased, taking it for granted that he should have a mistress solely to himself which is an unusual thing in a camp, since there is scarce one of those campaign ladies that is ever true to a troop or company. So that he thought of nothing but gratifying his passions with very little ceremony. But he found himself strangely mistaken, for she proved very reserved and modest, and resisted all his temptations, and at the same time was so obliging and insinuating in her carriage that she quite changed his purpose, so far from thinking of making her his 
his mistress, he now courted her for a wife. This was the utmost wish of her heart. In short, they exchanged promises, and when the campaign was over and the regiment marched into winter quarters, they bought woman's apparel for her with such money as they could make up betwixt them, and were probably married. The story of two troopers marrying each other made a great noise, so that several officers were drawn by curiosity to assist at the ceremony, and they agreed among themselves that every one of them should make a small present to the bride towards housekeeping, in consideration of her having been their fellow soldier. Thus being set up, they seemed to have a desire of quitting the service and settling in the world. The adventure of their love and marriage gained them so much favor that they easily obtained their discharge, and they immediately set up an eating house or ordinary, which was the sign of the three horseshoes near the castle of Breda, where they soon went into a good trade, a great many officers eating with them constantly. But this happiness lasted not long, for the husband soon died. And the peace of Reswick being concluded, there was no resort of officers to Breda, as usual. So that the widow, having little or no trade, was forced to give up housekeeping. And her substance being by degrees quite spent, she again assumes her man's apparel. And going into Holland, there takes on in a regiment of foot, quartered in one of the frontier towns. Here she did not remain long. There was no likelihood of preferment in time of peace. Therefore she took a resolution of seeking her fortune another way and withdrawing from the regiment, ships herself on board of a vessel bound for the West Indies. It happened this ship was taken by English pirates, and Mary Reed was the only English person on board. They kept her amongst them, and having plundered the ship, let it go again. After following this trade for some time, the king's proclamation came out, and was published in all parts of the West Indies, for pardoning such pirates who should voluntarily surrender themselves by a certain day therein mentioned. The crew of Mary Reed took the benefit of this proclamation, and having surrendered, lived quietly on shore. But money beginning to grow short, and hearing that Captain Woods Rogers, governor of the island of Providence, was fitting out some privateers to cruise against the Spaniards, she with several others embarked for that island in order to go upon the privateering account, being resolved to make her fortune one way or other. These privateers were no sooner sailed out, but the crews of some of them, who had been burned, rose against their commanders and turned themselves to their old trade. First piece in this number was her and just finding the edges and matching It is true, she stars. often declared that the life of a pirate was what she always had fascinated by the story of the only one compulsion, Bond. both this time and before, intending to quit it whenever a fair opportunity should offer itself. Yet some of the evidence against her, upon her trial, who were forced men and had sailed with her, deposed upon oath that in times of action no person amongst them were more resolute or ready to board or undertake anything that was hazardous as she and Anne Bonny, and particularly at the time they were attacked and taken when they came to close quarters, none kept the deck except Mary Reed and Anne Bonny, and one more upon which she Mary Reed called to those under deck to come up and fight like men and finding they did not stir, fired her arms down the hold amongst them, killing one and wounding others. This was part of the evidence against her, which she denied, which, whether true or no, thus much is certain, that she did not want bravery, nor indeed was she less remarkable for her modesty, according to her notions of virtue. Her sex was not so much as suspected by any person on board, till Anne Bonny, who was not altogether so reserved in point of chastity, took a particular liking to her. In short, Anne Bonny took her for a handsome young fellow and for some reasons best known to herself, first discovered her sex to Mary Reed. Mary Reed knowing what she would be at and being very sensible of her own incapacity that way, was forced to come to a right understanding with her. And so to the great disappointment of Anne Bonny, she let her know she was a woman also. But this intimacy so disturbed Captain Rackham, who was the lover and gallant of Anne Bonny, that he grew furiously jealous, so that he told Anne Bonny he would cut her new lover's throat. Therefore, to quiet him, she let him into the secret also. Captain Rackham, as he was enjoined, kept the thing a secret from all the ship's company. Yet notwithstanding all her cunning and reserve, love found her out in this disguise and hindered her from forgetting her sex. In their cruise, they took a great number of ships belonging to Jamaica and other parts of the West Indies bound to and from England. 
And whenever they met any good artist or other person that might be of any great use to their company, if he was not willing to enter, it was their custom to keep him by force. Among these was a young fellow of most engaging behavior, or at least he was so in the eyes of Mary Reed, who became so smitten with his person and address that she could neither rest night or day. But as there is nothing more ingenious than love, it was no hard matter for her, who had before been practiced in these wiles, to find a way to let him discover her sex. She first insinuated herself into his liking by talking against the life of a pirate, which he was altogether averse to. So they became messmates and strict companions. When she found he had a friendship for her as a man, she suffered the discovery to be made by carelessly showing her breasts, which were very white. The young fellow who was made of flesh and blood had his curiosity and desire so raised by this sight that he never ceased importuning her until she confessed what she was. Now begins the scene of love. As he had a liking and esteem for her and her supposed character, it was now turned into fondness and desire. Her passion was no less violent than his, but perhaps she expressed it by one of the most generous actions that ever love inspired. It happened this young fellow had a quarrel with one of the pirates, and their ship then lying at an anchor near one of the islands, they had appointed to go ashore and fight, according to the custom of the pirates. Mary Reed was to the last degree uneasy and anxious for the fate of her lover. She would not have had him refuse the challenge because she could not bear the thoughts of his being branded with cowardice. On the other side, she dreaded the event and apprehended the fellow might be too hard for him. When love once enters into the breast of one who has any sparks of generosity, it stirs the heart up to the most noble actions. In this dilemma, she showed that she feared more to be his life than she did her own. For she took a resolution of quarreling with this fellow herself, and having challenged him ashore, she appointed the time two hours sooner than that when he was to meet her lover, where she fought him with sword and pistol and killed him upon the spot. It is true she had fought before, when she had been insulted by some of those fellows, but now it was altogether in her lover's cause, she stood as it were betwixt him and death, as if she could not live without him. If he had no regard for her before, this action would have bound him to her forever. But there was no occasion for ties or obligations. His inclination towards her was sufficient. In fine, they applied their troth to each other, which Mary Reed said she looked upon to be as good a marriage in conscience as if it had been done by a minister in church. And to this was owing her great belly, which she pleaded to save her life. She declared she had never committed adultery or fornication with any man. She commended the justice of the court before which she was tried for distinguishing the nature of their crimes. Her husband, as she called him, with several others being acquitted, and being asked who he was, she would not tell, but said he was an honest man and had no inclination to such practices, and that they had both resolved to leave the pirates the first opportunity and apply themselves to some honest livelihood. It is no doubt, but many so had compassion for her. Yet the court could not avoid finding her guilty, for among other things, one of the evidences against her deposed that being taken by Rackham and detained some time on board, no, 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 he no. fell accidentally into discourse with Mary Reed, whom he, taking for a young man, asked her what pleasure she could have in being concerned in such enterprises where her life was continually in danger by fire or sword. And not only so, but she must be sure of dying an ignominious death if she should be taken alive. She answered that as to hanging, she thought it no great hardship. For were it not for that, every cowardly fellow would turn pirate, and so infest the seas that men of courage must starve. That if it was put to the choice of the pirates, they would not have the punishment less than death, the fear of which kept some dastardly rogues honest. That many of those who are now cheating the widows and orphans and oppressing their poor neighbors, who have no money to obtain justice, would then rob at sea, and the ocean would be crowded with rogues like the land. And no merchant would venture out, so that the trade, in a little time, would not be worth following. Being found quick with child, as has been observed, her execution was respited, and it is possible she would have found favor. But she was seized with a violent fever soon after her trial, of which she died in prison. End of chapter 7, part 2. Chapter 7 Part 3. The General History of the 
Pirates, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Miriam Esther Goldman. The General History of the Pirates, Volume 1, by Charles Johnson. Chapter 7, Part 3. The Life of Anne Bonny. As we have been more particular in the lives of these two women than those of other pirates, it is incumbent on us as a faithful historian to begin with their birth. Anne Bonny was born in a town near Cork, in the Kingdom of Ireland, her father being the attorney at law. But Anne was not one of his legitimate issue, which seems to cross an old proverb, which says that bastards have the best luck. Her father was a married man, and his wife having been in bed, contracted an illness in her lying in. And in order to recover her health, she was advised to remove her change of air. The place she chose was a few miles distant from her dwelling, where her husband's mother lived. Here she sojourned some time, her husband staying at home to follow his affairs. The servant maid whom she left to look after the house and attend the family, being a handsome young woman, was supported by a young man of the same town, who was a tanner. This tanner used to take his opportunities when the family was out of the way of coming to pursue his courtship, and being with the maid one day as she was employed in the household business, not having the fear of God before his eyes, he takes his opportunity when her back was turned, of whipping three silver spoons into his pocket. The maid soon missed the spoons, and knowing that nobody had been in the room but herself with the young man since she saw the last, she charged him with taking very stiffly denied it, upon which she grew outrageous and threatened to go to a constable in order to carry him before a justice of peace. These menaces frightened him out of his wits, well knowing that he could not stand search, wherefore he endeavored to pacify her by desiring to examine the drawers and other places, and perhaps she might find them. In this time he slips into another room where the maid usually lay, and puts the spoons betwixt the sheets and then makes his escape by a back door, concluding she must find them when she went to bed, and so next day he might pretend he did it only to frighten her, and the thing might be laughed off for a jest. As soon as she'd missed it, she gave over her search, concluding he had carried them off, and went directly to the constable in order to have him apprehended. The young man was informed that a constable this one's kind of hard to hear, but he regarded it little, not doubting that stone. all would be well next day. Three or four days passed, and still he was told the constable was upon the hunt for him. This made him lie concealed. He could not comprehend the meaning of it. He imagined no less than that the maid had a mind to convert the spoons to her own use, and put the robbery upon him. She seems to be having a It happened at this time that mistress, being perfectly recovered of her late indisposition, was returned home in company with her mother-in-law. The first news she heard was of the loss of the spoons, the matter how the maid telling her at the same time that the young man was run away. The young fellow had intelligence of the mistress's arrival, and considering with himself that he could never appear again in his business unless the matter was got over, and she being a good-natured woman, he took a resolution of going directly to her, and of telling her the whole story, only with this difference that he did it for a jest. The mistress could scarce believe it, However, she went directly to the maid's room, and turning down the bed curtains, there, to her great surprise, found the three spoons. Upon this, she desired the young man to go home and mind his business, for he should have no trouble about it. The mistress could not imagine the meaning of this. She never had found the maid guilty of any pilfering, and therefore it could not enter her head that she designed to steal the spoons herself. Upon the whole, she concluded the maid had not been in her bed, from the time the spoons were missed. She grew immediately jealous upon it and suspected that the maid supplied her place with her husband during her absence, and this was the reason why the spoons were no sooner found. She called to mind several actions of kindness her husband had showed the maid, things that passed unheeded by when they happened. But now she had got that tormentor of jealousy in her head amounted to proofs of their intimacy. Another circumstance would strengthen the whole was that though her husband knew she was to come home that day and had had no communication with her in four months, which was before her last lying in, yet he took an opportunity of going out of town that morning upon some slight pretense. 
All these things put together confirmed her in her jealousy. As women seldom forgive injuries of this kind, she thought of discharging her revenge upon the maid. In order to this, she leaves the spoons where she found them, and orders the maid to put clean sheets upon the bed, telling her she intended to lie there herself that night, because her mother-in-law was to lie in her bed, and that she, the maid, must lie in another part of the house. The maid, in making the bed, was surprised at the sight of the spoons, but there were very good reasons why it was not proper for her to tell where she found them, and therefore she takes them up, puts them in her trunk, intending to leave them in some place where they might be found by chance. The mistress, that everything might look to be done without design, lies that night in the maid's bed, little dreaming of what an adventure it would produce. After she had been abed some time, thinking on what had passed, for jealousy kept her awake, she heard somebody enter the room. At first she apprehended it to be thieves, and was so frightened she had not courage enough to call out. But when she heard these words, Mary, are you awake? She knew it to be her husband's voice. Then her fright was over, yet she made no answer lest he should find her out, if she spoke. Therefore, she resolved to counterfeit sleep and take what followed. The husband came to bed, and that night played the vigorous lover. But one thing spoiled the diversion on the wife's side, which was the reflection that it was not designed for her. However, she was very passive and bore it like a Christian. Early before day, she stole out of bed, leaving him asleep, and went to her mother-in-law, telling her what had passed not forgetting how he had used her as taking her for the maid. The husband also stole out, not thinking it convenient to be catched in that room. In the meantime, the revenge of the mistress was strongly against the maid, and without considering that to her she owed the diversion of the night before, and that one good turn should deserve another, she sent for a constable and charged her with stealing the spoons. The maid's trunk was broke open, and the Terrible spoons were found, upon which she was carried before a justice of peace and by him committed to jail. The husband loitered about till 12 o'clock at noon, then comes home and pretended he was just come to town. As soon as he heard what had passed in relation to the maid, he fell into a great passion with his wife. This set the thing into a greater flame. The mother takes the wife's part against her own son, in so much that the quarrel increasing, the mother and wife took horse immediately and went back to the mother's house. The husband and wife never bedded together after. The husband loitered about till 12 o'clock at noon, then comes home, pretended he was just to come to town. As soon as he heard what had passed in relation to the maid, he fell into a great passion with his wife. This set the thing into a greater flame, the mother taking the wife's part against her own son, insomuch that the quarrel increased and the mother and wife took horse immediately and went back to the mother's house, and the husband and wife never bedded together after. The maid lay a long time in the prison, it being near half a year to the assizes. But before it happened, it was discovered that she was with a child. When she was arraigned at the bar, she was discharged for want of evidence. The wife's conscience touched her, and as she did not believe the maid guilty of any theft except that of love, she did not appear against her. Soon Sir, after her acquittal, she was delivered of a girl. Cross. What alarmed the husband most was that it was discovered that the wife was with the child also. He taking it for granted it had no interest. All right, here we go. Since her last lying in, I'm going to wait till I appear in the doorway, and there we are. This so this is the large long one. This is the main, the most important one. Now, we are ready to proof. go. But then here was proof. She was delivered so here to we are. Her. I now have all the three ready to sell. to her son to reconcile him to his wife. We have anybody watching. We have one watching. Well, I appreciate you all showing up. I have how many views? I have 10 views and only two likes. Well, I need to get those numbers up, which means I have to do something that is more entertaining and informative than I have been doing. What is that? Suggest it to me. I'll try it. I wish to make this interesting. How do I do that? We're ready to go, though. I have three flags all pinned up. The last crossbones are ready to go. The wife heard he had a little boy at home he was very fond of. But as she did not know any relation of his that had such a child, she employed a friend to inquire further into it. This person, by talking with the child, found it to be a girl.
All right, here we go. I want uh, water. Five yet. It's close. She became acquainted with Rack of the Pirate, mm. who, making courtship to her, soon found means of withdrawing her affections from her husband, so that she consented to elope with him and go to sea with Rackham in men's clothes. Man, these are good. They're going to be cool. So, let's, uh, let me unplug the arm. She was as good as her word, and after she had been a sea up for a child, and beginning to grow big, Rackham landed her on the there island of Cuba. And recommending her to and Let's recommending her there to some friends of his, they took care of her till she was brought to bed. When she was up and well again, he sent, he sent for her to bear his company. Okay. So I have a uh, the king's proclamation being out trio of flags. Adam, They're all pinned up. They're ready to go. Afterwards, being <coughs> as soon as those are stitched on, we're good. good.
When they arrived, they related to these merchants the unfortunate death of Skinner and the proposal which had been made to them by Davis, upon which Davis was seized and committed to prison. That is a Davis short career. However, as he had been Damn it. no act right. of piracy, he was discharged without being brought to any trial, yet he could not expect any employment there. Wherefore, knowing that the island of Providence was a kind of rendezvous of pirates, he was resolved to make one amongst them, if possible, and to that purpose found means of shipping himself for that island. But he was again disappointed, for when he arrived there, the pirates had newly surrendered to Captain Woods Rogers and accepted of the act of grace which he had just brought from England. However, Davis was not long out of business, for Captain Rogers, having fitted out two sloops for trade, one called the Buck, the other the Munville Trader, Davis found an employment on board of one of them. The lading of these sloops was of considerable value, consisting of European goods in order to be exchanged with the French and Spaniards, and many of the hands on board of them were the pirates lately come in upon the late okay, act of grace. So, here we the go. first place they touched at was the island of Martinico, belonging to the French, where Davis, having conspired with some others, rise in the night, secured the master, and seized the sloop. I'm beginning to think this Hal Davis fellow is untrustworthy. Sloop, which lay a little way from them, among whom they there were a great many hands ripe for rebellion and ordered them to come on board of them. Hey, welcome. They did so, and the greatest part of them agreed to join with Davis. Those who were otherwise inclined were sent back on board the Manville sloop to go where they pleased, Davis having first taken out of her everything which he thought might be of use. After this, a council of war was called over a large bowl of punch at which it was proposed to choose a commander. The election was soon over, for it fell upon Davis by a great majority of legal polos. There was no scrutiny demanded, for all acquiesced in the choice. As soon as he was possessed of his command, he drew up articles, which were signed and sworn to by himself and the rest. Then he made a short speech, the sum of which was a declaration of war against the whole world. Hostage he managed to generate. about the proper place where they might clean their sloop. A light pair of heels being of great use. So, so far, here's our start. Escape being taken. For this purpose, a good they bunch of stitching there, a good bunch of stitching on the back. The end of the island of Cuba, a place where they might secure themselves. Just rolling from it right surprise, around. The entrance being so narrow that one ship might keep out a hundred. Here they cleaned with much difficulty, for they had no carpenter in their company, a person of great use upon such exigencies. From hence they put to sea. Nope. Making to the north side yeah, of the island of Hispaniola. The first sail out. which fell in their way was a French ship of twelve guns. It must be observed that Davis had but thirty-five hands, yet provisions began to grow short with him. Wherefore he attacked this ship. She soon struck, and he sent twelve of his hands on board of her in order to plunder. This was no sooner done, but a sail was spied a great way to windward of them. They inquired of the Frenchman what she might be. He answered that he had spoke with his ship the day before of 24 guns and 60 men, and he took this to be the same. Davis then proposed to his men to attack her, telling them she would be a rare ship for their use, but they looked upon it to be an extravagant attempt, and discovered no fondness for it. But he assured them he had a stratagem in his head would make all safe, wherefore he gave chase and ordered his prize to do the same. The prize being a slow sailor, Davis first came up with the enemy, and standing alongside of them, showed his piratical colors. They much piratical colors. To Davis, That's what we're selling they, today. They wondered at his impudence in venturing to come so near them, and ordered him to strike. But he answered that he intended to keep them in play, till his concert came up, who was able to deal with them, and that if they did not strike to him, they should have but bad quarters. Hmm. Whereupon he gave them a broadside, which they returned. In the meantime, the prize drew near, who obliged all the prisoners to come upon deck in white shirts to make a show of force, as they had been directed by Davis. They also hoisted a dirty tarpaulin by way of black flag, they having no other. A and dirty tarpaulin by way of Frenchmen black were flag, they having no other. Of force no, there's something. That they struck. Davis called out to the captain to come on board of him with twenty of his hands. He did so, and they were all for the greater security clapped into irons, the captain accepted. Then he sent four of his own men on board the first prize, and in order still to carry on the cheat, spoke aloud that they should give his service to the captain, and desire him to send her some hands on board the prize to see what they had got. 
but at the same time gave them a written paper with instructions what to do. Here he ordered them to nail up the so guns the prize, to take out all the small arms and powder, and to go every man of them on board the second prize. When this was done, he ordered that more of the prisoners should be removed out of the great prize, into the little one, by which he secured himself from any attempt which might be feared from their numbers. For those on board of him were fast in irons, and those in the little prize had neither arms nor ammunition. Thus the three ships kept company for two days, when finding the great prize to be a very dull sailor, he thought she would not be fit for his purpose. Wherefore, he resolved to restore her to the captain with all his hands. But first, he took care to take out all her ammunition, and everything else which he might possibly want. The French captain was in such a rage at being so outwitted, that when he got on board his own ship, he was going to throw himself overboard, but was prevented by oh, his that's men. a little hasty. Having let go both his prizes, he steered northward, in which course he took a small Spanish sloop. After this, he made towards the western islands, but met with no booty thereabouts. Then he steered for the Cape de Verde Islands. They cast anchor at St. Nicholas, hoisting English colors. The Portuguese, inhabiting there, took him for an English privateer. And Davis going ashore, they both treated him very civilly, and also traded with him. Here he remained five weeks, in which time he and half his crew, for their pleasure, took a journey to the chief town of the island, which was ninety miles up the country. Davis, making a good appearance, was caressed by the governor and the inhabitants, and no diversion was wanting which the Portuguese could show or money could purchase. After about a week's stay, he came back to the ship, and the rest of the crew went to take their pleasure up to the town in their turn. At their return, they cleaned their ship and put to sea, but not with their whole company, for five of them, like Hannibal's men, were so charmed with the luxuries of the place and the free conversation of some women that they stayed behind. And one of them, whose name was Charles Franklin, a Monmouthshire man, married and settled himself and lives there to this day. Hmm. From hence they sailed to Bonavista and looked into that harbor, but finding nothing, they steered for the Isle of May. When they arrived here, they met with a great many ships and vessels in the road, all which they plundered, taking out of them whatever they wanted, and also strengthened themselves with a great many fresh hands, who most of them entered voluntarily. One of the ships they took to their own use, mounted her with twenty-six guns, and called her the King James. There being no fresh water hereabouts, they made towards St. Jago, belonging to the Portuguese, in Santiago. order to in a store. Davis, with few hands, going ashore to find the most commodious place to water at, right. the governor and some attendants came himself and examined who they were and whence they came. And not liking Davis' account of himself, the governor was so plain to tell them he suspected them to be pirates. Davis seemed mightily affronted, standing hmm. much upon his honor, replying to the governor. He scorned his words. However, as soon as his back was turned, for fear of accidents, he got on board again as fast as he could. Yeah, Davis related what had happened, and his men seemed to resent the affront which had been offered him. Davis, upon the affront this, is told true, though. You're pirates. He could surprise the fort in the night. They agreed with him to attempt it, and accordingly, when it grew late, they went ashore well armed, and the guard which was kept was so negligent that they got within the fort before any alarm was given. When it was too late, there was some little resistance made, and three men killed on Davis's side. Those in the fort, in their hurry, run into the governor's house to save themselves, which they barricaded so strongly that Davis's party could not enter it. However, they threw in grenado shells, which not only ruined all the furniture, but killed several men within. Terrible. When it was day, the whole country was alarmed and became to attack the pirates. Wherefore, it not being their business to stand the siege, they made the best of their way on board their ship again, after having dismounted the guns of the fort. By this enterprise, they did a great deal of mischief to the Portuguese, and but very little good to themselves. Having put to sea, they mustered their hands, and found themselves near seventy strong. Then it was proposed what course they should steer, and differing in their opinions, they divided, and by majority it was carried for Gambia on the coast of Guinea. Of this opinion was Gold Davis. dust and elephant's teeth. He having been employed in that trade, was acquainted with the coast. He told them that there was a great deal of money always kept in Gambia Castle, and that it would be worth their while to make Oh, this is money. a good one. They asked him how it was possible, since it was garrisoned. He desired they would leave the management of it to him, 
and he would undertake to make them masters of it. They began now to conceive so high an opinion of his conduct, as well as courage, that they thought nothing impossible to him. Therefore, they agreed to obey him, without inquiring further into his design. Having come within sight of the place, he ordered all his men under deck, except as many as were absolutely necessary for working the ship, that those from the fort seeing a ship with so few hands might have no suspicion of her being any other than a trading vessel. Then he ran close under the fort, and there cast anchor, and having ordered out the boat, he commanded six men in her, in old ordinary jackets, while he himself, with the master and doctor, dressed themselves like gentlemen, his design being that the men should look like common sailors, and they like merchants. Of course. In rowing the shore, he gave his men instructions what to say in case any questions should be asked them. Being come to the landing place, he was received by a file of musketeers and conducted into the fort, where the governor, accosting them civilly, asked them who they were and whence they came. They answered they were of Liverpool, bound for the river of Senegal, to trade for guns and elephants' teeth, but that they were chased on that coast by two Frenchmen of war and narrowly escaped being taken, having a little the heels of them. But now they were resolved to make the best of a bad market, and would trade here for slaves. Then the governor asked them what was the chief of their cargo. They answered iron and plate, which were good things there. Hmm. The governor told them he would slave them to the full value of their cargo, and asked them if they had any European liquor on board. They answered a little for their own use. However, a hamper should be at his service. The governor then very civilly invited them all to stay and dine with him. Davis told him that being commander of the ship, he must go on board. This, is, a, this board is one of the great of stories in his book. But those two gentlemen might castle. stay, and that he himself would also return before dinner and bring the hamper of liquor with him. While he was in the fort, his eyes were very busy in observing how things lay. He took notice there was a sentry at the entrance, and a guardhouse just by it, where the soldiers upon duty commonly waited, their arms standing in a corner, in a heap. He saw also a great many small arms in the governor's hall. Now when he came on board, he assured his men of success, desiring them not to get drunk, and that as soon as they saw the flag upon the castle struck, they might conclude he was master, and send twenty hands immediately ashore. In the meantime, there being a sloop at anchor near them, he sent some hands in a boat to secure the master and all the men, and bring them on board of him, lest they observing any bustle or arming in his ship might send ashore and give intelligence. Hmm. These precautions being taken, he ordered his men, who were to go in the boat with him, to put two pair of pistols each under their clothes, he doing the like himself, and gave them directions to go into the guard room and to enter into conversation with the soldiers, and observe when he should fire a pistol through the governor's window to start up at once and secure the arms in the guard room. When Davis arrived, dinner not being ready, the governor proposed that they should pass their time in making a bowl of punch till dinner time. It must be observed that Great Davis opposition. waited upon them, who had an opportunity of going about all parts of the house to see what strength they had. He whispered Davis, there being no person then in the room, but he, Davis, the master, the doctor, the coxswain, and governor. Davis, on a sudden, drew out a pistol, clapped it to the governor's breast, telling him he must surrender the fort and all the riches in it, or he was a dead man. The governor, being no ways prepared for such an attack, promised to be very passive, and do all they desired. Therefore they shut the door, took down all the arms that hung in the hall, and loaded them. Davis fires his pistol through the window, upon which his men, without, executed their part of the scheme, like heroes, in an instant, getting betwixt the soldiers and their arms, all with their pistols cocked in their hands, while one of them carried the arms out. When this was done, they locked the soldiers into the guard room and kept guard without. In the meantime, one of them struck the Union flag on the top of the castle, at which signal those on board sent on shore a reinforcement of hands, and they got possession of the fort without the least hurry or confusion, or so much as a man lost of either side. Davis harangued the soldiers, upon which a great many of them took on with him. Those who refused, he sent on board the little sloop, and because he would not be at the trouble of a guard for them, he ordered all the sails and cables out of her, which might hinder them from attempting to get away. This day was spent in a of rejoicing, the castle firing her guns to salute the ship, and the ship the castle. But the next day, they minded their business, that is, they fell to plundering. 
but they found things fall vastly short of their expectation, for they discovered that a great deal of money had been lately sent away. However, they met with the value of about two thousand pounds sterling in bar gold, and a great many other rich effects. Everything they liked, which was portable, they brought aboard their ship. Hi there. Some things which they had no use for, they were so generous to make a present of to the master and crew of the little sloop, to whom they also returned his vessel again. And then they fell to work in dismounting the guns and demolishing the fortifications. After they had done as much mischief as they could, and were weighing anchor to be gone, they spied a ship bearing down upon them in full sail. They soon got their anchors up, and were in readiness to receive her. This ship proved to be a French pirate of 14 guns mm. and 64 hands, half French, yeah. half Negroes. The Not captain's you. name was La Pousse. He expected no less than a rich prize, which made him so eager at the chase. But when he came near enough to see their guns, and the number no, of their pirates too. Deck, he began to think he should catch a Tartar, and suppose her to be a small English man of war. However, since there was no escaping, he resolved to do a bold and desperate action, which was to board Davis. As he was making towards her for this purpose, he fired a gun and hoisted his black collars. Davis returned the salute and hoisted his black collars also. The Frenchman was not a little pleased at this happy mistake. They both hoisted out their boats, and the captains went to meet and congratulate one another with a flag of yeah. truce in their skirts. A great many civilities passed between them, and La Bousse desired Davis that they might sail down the coast together, that he, La Bousse, might get a better ship. Davis agreed to it, and very courteously promised him the first ship he took, fit for his use. He would give him, as being willing to encourage a willing brother. The first place they touched at was Sierra Leone, where at first going in, they spied a tall ship at anchor. Davis no. being the best sailor, no, no, first no, came honey, her, there's a and needle, you that cannot do this. To make off, suspected her to be a ship of force. As soon as he came alongside of her, she brought a spring upon her cable and fired a whole broadside upon Davis. At the same time, hoisted the black flag. Davis hoisted his black flag and like <laughs> and fired one gun to leeward. In fine, she proved to be a pirate ship of 24 guns, commanded by one Cochrane, who, expecting these two would prove prizes, let them come in. Lease is getting under sail, might frighten them away. This satisfaction was great on all sides at this junction of confederates and brethren in iniquity. Two days they spent in improving Fuck. their acquaintance and friendship. The third day, Davis and Cochrane agreed to go in La Bousse's brigantine well, and attack the fort. They it's torn it, but I've done the hardest part. So, in the fort, suspected them to be what they really pull were, this loose, and, and I'll tie it off and carry defense. on. When the brigantine came within musket shot, the fort fired all their guns upon her. The brigantine did the like upon the fort, and so held each other in play for several hours when the two confederate ships were come up to the assistance of the brigantine. Those who defended the fort, seeing such a number of hands on board these ships, had not the courage to stand it any longer, but, abandoning the fort, left it to the mercy of the pirates. They took possession of it, and continued there near seven weeks, in which time they all cleaned their ships. We should have observed that a galley came into the road while they were there which Davis insisted should be yielded to La Pousse, according to his word of honor, before given. Cochrane did not oppose it, so La Pousse went into her with his crew, and cutting away her half-deck, mounted her with twenty-four guns. Having called a council of war, they agreed to sail down the coast together, and for the greater grandeur, appointed a commodore, which was Davis. But they had not kept company long, when drinking together on board of Davis, they had liked to have fallen together by the ears the strong liquor stirring up a spirit of discord among them. And they ah. called, but Davis put an end to it okay. by this short speech. Hark ye, you Cochrane and La Bousse, I have fine by strengthening you. I have put a rod into your hands to whip myself, but I'm still able to deal with you both. Hmm. But since we met in love, let us part in love, for I find that three of a trade can never agree. Upon which the other two went on board their respective ships and immediately parted, each steering a different course. Davis held on his way down the coast, and making Cape Apollonia, he met with two Scotch and one English vessel, which he plundered, and then let go. About five days after, he fell in with a Dutch interloper of thirty guns and ninety men, half being English, off Cape Three Points Bay. Davis coming up alongside of her, the Dutchman gave the first fire, and pouring in a broadside upon Davis, killed nine of his men. Hmm. 
Davis returned it, and a very hot engagement followed, which lasted from one o'clock at noon till nine next morning, when the Dutchman struck and yielded herself their prize. What a fight! Davis fitted up the Dutch ship for his own use, and called her the Rover, aboard of which he mounted thirty-two guns and twenty-seven swivels, and proceeded with her and the King James to Anamabo. He entered the bay between the hours of twelve and one at noon, and found there three ships lying at anchor, who were trading for negroes, gold, and teeth. The names of these ships were the Hink Pink, Captain Hall Commander, the Princess, Captain Plum, of which Roberts, who will make a considerable figure in the sequel of this history, was second mate, and the Morris Sloop, Captain Finn. He takes these ships without any resistance, and having plundered them, he makes a present of one of them, that is, the Morris Sloop, to the Dutchman, on board of which alone were found a hundred and forty negroes, besides dry goods and a considerable quantity of gold dust. It happened there were several canoes alongside of this last, when Davis came in, who saved themselves and got ashore. These gave notice at the fort that these ships were pirates, upon which the fort fired upon them, but without any execution, for their metal was not of weight enough to reach them. Davis, therefore, by way of defiance, hoisted his black flag and returned their compliment. The same day, he sailed with his three ships, making his way down the coast towards Princess, a Portuguese colony. But before we proceed any farther in Davis's story, we shall give our reader an account of the Portuguese settlements on this coast, which other curious remarks, as they were communicated to me by an ingenious gentleman, lately arrived from those parts. End of chapter 8, part 1
and that the Pope had confirmed the perpetual donation of all they should discover between Cape Bayadoro and India, inclusively, he resolved not to neglect the proper assistance and farm the profits that did or might ensue to one Bernard Gomez, a citizen of Lisbon, who was every voyage obliged to discover 100 leagues still farther on, and about the year 1470 made these islands the only places of all the considerable and large colonies they had in Africa that do now remain to that crown. St. Thome is the principal of the three, whose governor is still captain general of the islands, and from whom the other princess receives his commission, though nominated by the court of Portugal. It is a bishopric with a great many secular clergy who appear to have neither learning nor devotion, as may be judged by several of them being negroes. One of the chief of them invited us to hear mass as a diversion to pass time away, where he and his inferior brethren acted such affected gestures and strains of voice as showed to their dishonor they had no other aim than pleasing us, and what I think was still worse, it was not without a view of interest, for as these clergy are the chief traders, they stooped to pitiful and scandalous methods for ingratiating themselves. They and the government, on this trading account, maintain as great harmony, being ever jealous of each other, and practicing little deceitful arts to monopolize what strangers have to offer for sale, whether toys or clothes, which of all sorts are ever commodious with the Portuguese in all parts of the world. An ordinary suit of black will sell for seven or eight pound, a turnstile wig of four shillings for a moido, a watch of forty shillings for six pound, etc. Hmm. The town is mean building. Highly inflated prices. The residents of the greater part of the natives, who, through the whole island, are computed at ten thousand, the militia at three thousand, and are in general a rascally, thievish generation, as an old grave friend of mine can witness. For he, having carried a bag of second-hand clothes on shore to truck for provisions, seated himself on the sand for that purpose, presently gathered a crowd round him to view them, one of which desired to know the price of a black suit that unluckily lay uppermost and was the best of them, agreeing to the demand with little hesitation, provided it would but fit him. He put them on immediately, in as much hurry as possible, without any connaissance seigneur, and then my friend was about to commend the goodness of the suit and exactness they sat with, not dreaming of the impudence of running away from a crowd, the rascal took to his heels, my friend followed and bowled very much, and though there was five hundred people about the place, it served to no other end but making him a clear stage that the best pair of heels might carry it. So he lost the suit of clothes, I love the way this and before is he could return to his bag, others of them hmm. had beat off his servant and shared the rest. Most of the ships from Giddy, of their own nation, and frequently those of ours, call at one or other of these islands to recruit with fresh provisions and take in water, which on the coast are not so good nor so conveniently to come by. Their own ships, likewise, when they touch here, are obliged to leave the king his custom for their slaves, which is always in gold and so much ahead, without any deduction at Brazil for the mortality that may happen afterwards. This, by being a constant bank to pay off civil and military charges of the government, prevents the inconveniency of remittances and keeps both it and Princess Isle rich enough there we go. to pay ready All right. for everything they so want. So we have a good needs. start on this one. Their beefs are small and lean. Oof. Weight All right. More. But the goods, have hogs and fowls very good. Some good piratical Asher, colors. And, dirty, and rub very uh, ordinary. As these refreshments are very they nice. Who are in want of other necessaries. And we shall continue this on the morrow. GG, thanks for dropping for in. A fat fowl for a span of Brazil tobacco. No other sort 